Okay, sorry guys, I'm so late. I'm sorry, I was texting. I was my grandma. <laughs> my mom's not home, so my grandma was like confused about Zeke's collar and his harness, and she takes it off, and then she's like, "How am I gonna get it? How am I?" <laughs> she comes up to me, so I'm trying to come off to start my life, and she's like trying to take it off. She gets it off, and then she comes up like crying, like. What am I going to do if he needs to go outside? I, I don't know. And I go, well, Grandma, why do you take that off? He needs his harness on because he doesn't have his collar on because we have to take his collar off because he chokes. She chokes him with it. So we have to take it off. That's why he wears a harness because if she pulls on the harness, he won't choke. So anyway, I'm like, you have to put the harness back on. So I start putting it back on. She's like, no, 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 you can't put it back on. I, I, what if I have to take him out? I'm like, Grandma, that's why I'm putting him on. So you could take it back. So you're able to hook him to something to take him out and she's like um she goes but he can't sleep he can't sleep with it on i'm like yeah he can <laughs> oh my god uh like yeah he could sleep with it on but i mean we could also take it off when he's ready for bed anyway i am so sorry guys um and then i was like and then I was, she's like are you sure i could sleep with it on i'm like yeah and i shut the door and then she's like screaming like wait i'm not sure what you said can he sleep with it on? I'm like, yes, grandma. Like, yeah. Are you sure? I'm like, why? Like, why couldn't he sleep with the harness on? He doesn't have like this huge harness. It's like one of those like real soft. It's just like not like this big uncomfortable harness. Um. Anyway. All right. So I made this video. Hey, cool gamer. Hey, Peyton. Nightbot. Oh, Nightbot. I just said hi to Nightbot. <laughs> um. Oh, shoot. I forgot to do my. Um. Oh, Lordy. I started it and I was like, so the reason I'm not, I'm not going to get on video camera because I actually edited a video. It's like a little over two hours long. It's about, it's going through um, all of like, hold on one second. Let me fix my live thing real quick. I keep starting and not putting it on like the customization stuff. Uh, hold on one second. No, I don't want slow mode on. I don't, <laughs> I haven't had to use slow mode in <laughs> forever. I barely get 30 people. Um, remember those days when I actually had to use slow mode? Slow mode. <laughs> uh, not even close to that. Okay. And the crazy thing is, what really hurt my views the most is when they had demonetized me. I mean, the whole ordeal hurt it too, but the demonetization is what hurt me the most with views which sucks. They just have the worst freaking timing. You know what I'm saying? I was already trying to build my channel back up and then I get that, which totally shot it back down, like way down. It's crazy how much control that YouTube has on recommending videos. Like how th that could control, even if people are sub to you, that controls if they see them or if they don't, if you get anybody that, you know what I'm saying? That controls so much. They have so much power for any, you know what I'm saying? How they they uh, refer the videos and stuff. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm getting my stuff all ready. Um. Anyway, um, I don't know, Peyton. I I know I will. It's just gonna be hard. Hey, Teresa. It's just gonna take time. You know. I don't doubt that I will. But like, this is my job, so I am really hurting for a while. You know what I'm saying? So it just sucks that I got two big hits like that. And like, I'm still spending just as much time on my videos, if not more. I've been putting out more to try to build my channel back up. But it's like, I spend like sometimes 20 hours editing a video that gets like 300 views. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, where is the, is it worth your time? You know, because you have to manage your time good because time is important and you have to survive. You got bills, you know, everybody has bills. Everybody has to survive. Okay. So I edited this video. So what I did is I went through, um, um, and I'm going to do one tomorrow too. I'm going to get more into like the Odin nights. And um, I asked uh, uh, Anthony if he wants to come up and, and get more on the side of like law enforcement um, corruption stuff. But this one, I just went through the this, the people that I could find like Elvis Fields. Um, but let me just put out a disclaimer, please. Nobody harass these people. Okay. Let law enforcement do their job. And I know it's hard to say that now that all this came out and they didn't do their job. But now that the defense has put that out there, they have to look at it. They're going to have to look at it. So please don't go over and harass them because you will see when I go on Elvis, Elvis is responding on his social media 
and there are he's like remember in those documents he's slow he's like um he's got a really low iq they even said it so he has people over there attacking him which i read through so when you see this video of me talking it's like my it's pre-recorded so it's not me talking right now i just pre-recorded like everything because you know how sometimes I'm all over the place. So this is nice and organized. It's just like <laughs> everything pre-recorded, edited out, like all the real, well, there's a little bit of rambling in it. Um, and I just go through all that. But yeah, so Elvis responded with a couple things and that's in the video. Um, but people are like, it's one thing that I, I'm, I'm fine with people asking him questions like, hey, did you spit on her to explain the spit, which he hasn't explained that. But what makes me mad is when people are going over there telling, calling him stupid. Like those comments, it's like, no, like don't don't go there because he is slow i mean he can't help it so i don't like that i don't like that at all but if they there's some people are just decently asking him hey can you explain this can you explain that why did you and he explains a couple things but not the important stuff so um hey uh, boomer mimi Teresa. uh oh thanks tim gray all right i'm gonna start playing this video and then i might stop it here and there so really the um the main people, like I said, is going to be Elvis, Brad, Patrick, and then I go, get in a little into um, Brian James, which is the leader of the Villanders, and he's now um, a leader of a couple. Um, he's into a couple of other of those uh, groups. Um, so I get a little bit into his background because Patrick is seen in pictures with this guy. So the fact that all this stuff's talking about how Brad is saying, you know, Brad told his wife that Patrick is powerful he is dude as far as he is he knows like he's in pictures with the leader of the villainers the guy that that's uh, he's in proud boys he's in you'll see like he's like a big deal so like he does have some freaking uh he has some friends in powerful places so it, that's not a lie when th that you know when um brad told his wife that so i believe that brad told his wife that stuff so i believe a lot that's in that document there are some things that were kind of hidden that I don't know if you noticed um, some of the things where I don't know if I should get into that now. Actually, here, let me just show. No, maybe I'll play it after. There are a few things that were hypotheticals that when you read it and you don't read the footnotes, you think that that's what happened and that's not true. Like, let me just bring out one of the examples so we could just put this whole rumor to the rest. There's a part. Um, actually, here, I'll bring it up real quick and then I'll start the video. I'll let people come in. Um, let me see. What word should I search to show you this one part? Um, uh, hold on. I'm trying to think what word to show you the one part where uh, where they talk about Richard. So I could show you what. Oh, I think it's number 12. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on. Which was very, it was very like misleading because if you don't read the footnotes, you know, and you just read it, you're going to be like, wait. So... Uh, and there's a few things that like I I, I saw like because I must not have read everything on the video. So I started reading more and I was like, oh, OK, like, you know, not all of it was like misleading. There's some stuff that were, was it that was like, oh, wow, um, I, don't, I can't find I don't know where to put in. But it was talking about. Um, uh, when he's in prison, when he's uh, talking to his defense and he's talking about. um Actually, it's in a Facebook group. I don't know where to find it in the document. I had the document up, but it actually, I could show you in the Facebook group where it was at. Hold on. Um. So yeah. So it's talking about how uh, he uh, that Richard Allen says to his defense, if I say anything, they're going to, or the, no, no, the part where he they said something about him being forced to talk about, uh, being forced to say that he killed them. That didn't, he didn't say that. That was a hypothetical. And even I thought that's what they were saying because I was reading it so quick. You know, I was reading it with you guys. And um, so, yeah, that was not. Oh, here it is. Somebody has it in a Facebook group. I'll show you the part, which was misleading because I thought that the first time reading it too. So, uh, hold on. Let me share my screen real quick. And then we'll get into the video. Sorry, guys. I wanted to get, give people enough time to come in since it takes people a while since my video. Since I don't think it's being recommended like very well. So sometimes it takes a while for anybody to get in today. You got, there was some few people already in here, but I think it because I was so late. Okay. So, um, the Facebook group here. So this part right here, I don't know if you could read it. Oh, I could see what page it isn't from this group. Uh, hold on. 
Is it this one? Yeah, it's in this group. Okay, so this is page 22. So hold on, I'll just pull it up because mine will be clear. Page 22. All right. I'll show you what I mean, which is very, it is very misleading. Okay, so 22. Okay, so where it says the guards, okay, where it says, uh, where, let me, the positioning of Richard Allen's body will allow the corrections officers to videotape Richard Allen's mouth as he talked to his attorneys. Richard would therefore not be able to privately discuss anything with his attorneys, such as, the guards are telling me that my wife and family will be killed unless I call my wife and tell her that I killed those girls. And then note 15. To, cl to be clear, up to this point, Richard Allen has never spoken these words to his attorneys. The point is that the Westboro guards have made the privacy needed for Richard to have the type of private conversation with his attorneys very difficult and perhaps, perhaps not worth the risk if you are Richard Allen. So he never actually said that. So it is kind of misleading. And I was wrong. I had talked about that in my live afterwards. I'm like, oh my God, if he said that, like, what the heck? So he actually never did say that. But instead, he did say this, this part, he did say, it says, instead, a mentally defeated Richard Allen would continually mutter to his defense team at every visit these type of general questions. Is my wife alive? Is my family alive? Is my wife safe? Is my family safe? So he did say those things, but he didn't say that he was forced to uh, say that he killed them or that um, they would kill him, that they would kill his wife and his girls if he didn't say that he killed the girls. That was not true. They were just doing hypotheticals. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to start my video and then I'll be in chat, guys. Hold on, let me bring it up. Yay, I like to be able to be in chat, like, and talk to you guys. I never barely am. Hey, Jonathan, your super chat is broken. Really? That's okay, though. We still like you. <laughs> and I'm saying I'm I, we do. But I'm, of course we do. Um, I'm just like making a joke. But yeah, that sucks. So you should get that fixed, though, because you'll want to be able to use that, you know, wherever if it's broke. So is it just broken mine or is it broke um, like for everybody or what? Okay, so I'm going to bring where is it? I just edited it. Final. Final, final. Okay. Hopefully it came out okay. I'll put together everything that I've gathered from these four guys that they mentioned in Richard Allen's defense. So I'm talking about Bradley Holder, Patrick Westfall, Johnny Messer, Elvis Fields, and Rod Abram. So those are the five people that were mentioned in the documents. I don't have a picture of Johnny Messer yet. I'm working on it. There's not a ton that I was able to find, but I, I found a good amount, I guess. Um, I'm just going to put it all together on here. It's not going to necessarily be in any particular order. Make of it what you will. Like I said, I do understand it's the defense attempt. It could be a desperate attempt. I don't know. The thing that's just got me is the way they laid out the crime scene. And obviously that has to be true, right? So if the crime scene really looked like that, then, I mean, how do you link Richard Allen if he doesn't have any ties to anything like that? And number, that's number one. Number two, let's say it is Richard Allen, then there has to be somebody that helped him too. So it just, the thing is, is even if they got, like, they listed the wrong guys or there has to be more to this because of that, the way that the crime scene was staged. It's just, it can't just be some guy that did it with no motive. I mean, what's the motive? Because we were told, or I should say we weren't told if there was any like, like essay motive that was never mentioned. So I don't think that was. And if it was Richard, it would have been the time frame that he would have done it. It would have been so freaking quick if you believe their narrative. I mean, how would he have had time to do that? I don't see how he would have time to do that alone. So, like, another theory going around is what if Richard was BG and he was the one that got the girls down there and then they were, the other people were the ones that did the rest and then Richard was able to leave. I don't know. I mean, there could be other, a lot of scenarios, but what they want us to believe, the prosecution is just one man goes down, doesn't seem to have any motive, and then is done within an hour and was able to not leave any DNA and to escape the police for seven years 
it just, it doesn't seem probable. So like I said, I'm not saying that I'm like 100% like, oh, yep, the defense, they got it right, 100%, it's, it's these guys. It's just creating a lot of doubt because now that we know how the crime scene was staged, it just makes us, it just makes it harder to believe that it was just Richard Allen and that it wasn't some type of other motive that had to do with like a ritual type motive. You know what I'm saying? Some type of like, I don't want to say religion because I don't know if you call that a religion. I guess you call it a religion, but some something that has that kind of a motive, you know, like it was some kind of ritual. But yeah, so this is what I found of the guys. Like I said, there's not a ton. And like I said, I wish we knew for sure if, you know, the defense, what they're saying is all that true, hopefully, because they put it in the document. So it does seem like that everything that they said that were in the, the police reports that that should be be in the police report says I don't think they would lie about that. So my concerns is Elvis talk telling his girlfriend, Elvis saying about the spit, like if you find the spit on one of the girls, oh, um, and I could explain it away, why get in trouble? That's kind of concerning. Uh, yeah, him telling his sister that he did it and talking about the antlers. If those are in the police records, like the defense is saying, then th that's really concerning. I don't know, let's go through it and then maybe as I put up some of the stuff, we'll be able to talk about more stuff. Okay, so you see March 18th, so a little, a month and a couple days after the murders, Brad's son, Levi, is joining the Freemasons. There's a lot of, you know, rumors about Freemasonry and how they're involved in a lot of stuff. Now, I do believe that there's a lot of Freemasons that aren't involved in anything shady, but I also believe that there's a lot of power within the Freemasons that you can be involved in some stuff and possibly get away with it because of some of the people that are Freemasons and the power that they have. And now you're a part of that brotherhood. And I feel like if you would need to get away with stuff and you had those connections that you possibly could. So yeah, I feel like there are some Freemasons that are just normal people. that are nothing to worry about. They don't do anything that's, you know, concerning as far as what we're talking about here but then i feel like there are some that do and i know that's just like any other thing in life but what i'm saying is you have that connection then i feel like it would make it easier to get away with stuff so is that one of the reasons why brad was able to be cleared so quick and not looked into because he has some connections with the freemasons and then now it's looking like odin odinism is pretty popular in that town at least for with some of the law enforcement so wonder if a lot of Odinites are Freemasons too. And so he has connections with all of that. So he was able to not get questioned heavily and be able to, you know, be cleared quick and not really looked into. Yes, I think it's a possibility. If you go look at some of the stuff going on with the world today and how a lot of it does go back to the Masons, you'd be surprised. But like I said, I don't want to say that all Masons are are like that, but it's just, I feel like it's, oh, there's an opportunity for him to have some connections in some high places and to be able to get away with things. But you see his son Levi joined and you could tell that Brad is one by the way he's dressed and stuff, obviously, and his son's becoming one now too. Okay, so in this picture you see it says, Hail, Hail Thor, Hail the Brotherhood, Hail Patrick Westfall. So you're thinking that, okay, that's probably Patrick Westfall in that picture, right? And in that document, it does say there are pictures of him and Patrick Westfall. So this is from January 22nd, 2017. So this would be a little less than a month before the murders. Okay. Now I did a, a background search on Patrick Westfall and it brought up this picture where you have to like join this app, which is seemingly that you can't join. It seems like anymore. I never even heard of the app, but it gives you like a blurry picture of Patrick. And as you could see, you could tell it is this guy. But then I was able to find his mugshot anyway. But at first I was using that for a comparison. And it's like, oh, that, that does look like the same guy. But then I found his mugshot. So it's definitely him. So I went and found some other pictures with Brad and Patrick. And there are a few other ones. I didn't even go through all of his Facebook. I just went through, you know, a little bit before the murder, a little bit after. But there's pictures of him more before the murder. I'm trying to think if I have any after. I don't think I found any after with Patrick in there, which is kind of weird, right? Okay, so some of the stuff that was said about Patrick. I'm not, I'm not going to read it all, but I'll read some of this stuff. So he was the one that was living close to Delphi. 
Well, he was living in Delphi, close to the murder scene, a few miles away from the murder scene. At least on February 13th, he was. So you could see, let's see what else they say. And he was also the one that they were talking about how their friendship abruptly ended February 2017. Because supposedly Brad told his then wife that they got an argument over something, over a ritual in February at a, uh, how, what, how did they, uh, the river, at a river that was near Patrick's house. So I'll read that part, which makes sense. Why don't we see Patrick in Brad's Facebook after the murder? Because right here, it says Patrick Westfall and Brad Holder were close friends as late as January 21st, 2017. However, that friendship ended abruptly in February 2017. The schism in their friendship resulted from a fight that occurred between Holder and Westfall in February 2017, where he, Holder, and Westfall were in the woods near a river conducting a ritual. One of them said or did something the other did not agree with, and they no longer talked to each other. The river was near Patrick's house. An intoxicated Brad shared this disturbing information with his ex-wife, Amber Holder. Amber then relayed this disturbing information to the law enforcement. So, and then it also says how Brad pointed the finger away from himself and directly at Patrick as being the person actually responsible for the murders of Abby and Libby. According to the police reports, Brad Holder told his ex-wife that Westfall and his people killed Abby and Libby because one of their mothers was mixing with other people outside the mother's race. And then it says that, Brad told Amber that I can only protect you so much if you keep asking questions. Brad further told his ex-wife, Amber, that Patrick Westfall had many people backing him and that Westfall also had powerful friends. Then it talks about how uh, Johnny Messer and Patrick were like brothers. So this is another one they think is involved. Johnny, Johnny Messer says she also told that she allowed Johnny to borrow her car on, on or around Valentine's Day 2017 and that Johnny drove her car up there to hang with his friend with his Vinlander friends. When he returned her vehicle, it had dried blood over one side of it. Johnny Messer refused to discuss the details of how the blood got there. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend further stated that, that it took her several car washes to finally remove the blood. So it says, in that, in that document, it is learned Brad Holder details that he was usually in Delphi every weekend visiting his friend Patrick Westfall and attending Asa True religious ceremonies at Patrick Westfall's house, usually on Sundays. Asa True is interchangeable with Odinism. Patrick and Brad had been friends prior to the murders of Abby and Libby. And it talks about them being in a photo together as late as January 21st, 2017. It says that he appears 10 times in pictures that Holder posts on Facebook prior to February 13th, 2017. Like I said, I only went back so far in 2016, but I found a few. So I believe there's probably 10 if you go all the way back. So they're trying to insinuate that this ritual that broke them up was the murder of Abby and Libby, is what I think they're trying to say. Which, doing something like that with somebody, of course that could cause some stress and some crazy, you know, if, if he's saying that basically, you know, one of them didn't agree with what the other was doing, which murder, that could be something that some people are okay with. Well, most people aren't, but let's say one of them was not okay with it and it could break up a friendship because you know, they're doing something that that is something that's like, if you're not okay with it, yeah, you could be like, no, I'm not being friends with you anymore. I mean, if you basically make them take part in a murder, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think that's what they're insinuating here. So whether that's true or not, or whether that is the ritual they're talking about, it is kind of weird though, that after that, they're not friends anymore. Like after that time of the murder. And here is who looks like Brad Westfall cutting a tree branch with a saw which they make a point to say that at least one of the sticks on one of the girls looked like it was cut with a saw insinuating that it was like premeditated because they actually brought their own material so here's the part in the document that talks about this it says a patrick westfall's facebook post from just two months before the girls are murdered shows westfall cutting tree limbs into runes by slicing the tree limb with an electric saw creating smooth edges to the tree limb and here's the part where it says, Sticks and tree branches were deliberately, carefully, and proficiently placed on each girl in a certain arrangement, mimicking certain runes. At least one of the branches appeared to have its end cut off cleanly by some type of tool, like an electric saw, providing proof of a preconceived plan. I mean, yeah, they could have found a piece of wood in the forest that 
was possibly cut. That, I mean, that is a possibility. But it's just kind of weird that you have this picture of him cutting with the saw, and then they bring that up in the this document a few times, how it looks like they brought at least that stick in. They might have brought all the sticks with them, or some of them, you know? Now, I'm just, I'm just talking about whoever did do these murders. I don't know who it was, but it does seem like it was maybe a group of people that it was some sort of ritual. At least they wanted it to make it look like it was a ritual. Maybe they were trying to, like, frame it to look like one, and it really wasn't. I don't know, but from the details that we learned, it does seem like that there was more than one person. So, either Richard had help, or Richard was just set up, and he's not even involved, and it was a group of people. Who was the group of people? I don't know. I'm not going to say, you know, we don't know for sure who it was, but it does seem like it. there's a good possibility it was more than one person. So right here is who, in the document, they believe to be Patrick Westfall, which it does look like Patrick, I agree, painting on the tree. You can't tell what he's painting, so you can't really assume it's an F, but at least it does show that they their ritual does include painting on the tree and pouring things on the tree. So I'm guessing when they pour the water or whatever on the tree, it's probably supposed to symbolize blood, I'm guessing, if it's a ritual, right? So you're telling me that Libby's blood was splattered on the tree, not only with the F, but they made it seem like it was like splattered and then splattered over her. How doesn't that sh like say to these investigators, whoa, this looks like it's a ritual and it does look like it kind of lines up with this Odinism. Now, like I said, there's a lot of Odinites in Delphi, it looks like, or in Indiana, so they would have to, you know, make sure that they got the right people, but at least look into it. Dang. Okay, so here's all the pictures that I found with Brad and Patrick. So this is from July 27th, 2016. It says, Patrick Westfall and myself have been talking bind runes. What do you guys think? So many possibilities. Okay, so it, this is from August 27th, 2016. It says, Tribe of Gungnir's Path. Had an awesome meeting last night. Thank you all for coming. And the ones who couldn't make it, I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great weekend, everyone. So we have this one from December 18th. It says, hold on a second. I want to go back to that, those runes. I didn't get, I didn't actually look at those clothes. Which ones that he did? Hold on. I just want to see what they are. So we have, uh... I can't believe I didn't, I was so busy, like, just going through and editing that I didn't get a chance to actually look at this. So, powerful binding. Let's see, we have, I just want to see if any other ones. Healing, good health. So, I want to get into, like, the specifics of that. Okay. Huh. Pictures that I found with Brad and Patrick. So this is from July 27th, 2016. It says, Patrick Westfall and myself have been talking bind runes. What do you guys think? So many possibilities. Okay, so it, this is from August 27th, 2016. It says, Tribe of Gungnir's Path. Had an awesome meeting last night. Thank you all for coming. And the ones who couldn't make it, I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great weekend, everyone. So we have this one from December 18th. It says Tribe of Gungnir's Party, Tribal Life, Tribe Matters. Then we have them. It says Damn Good Show for the Tribe of Gungnir's Path. That's December 18th also, so the same day. And then we have January 21st. It says Affirm 22 Damn Straight. And you can see this one has a location on that says Delphi, Indiana. And then there's one more. Or it says, Hail Thor, Hail the Brotherhood, Hail Patrick Westfall. And that's from January 22nd. So Brad and Patrick are in this one too. So there's Brad. And there's Patrick. So I looked up the tribe of Gungnirs that he mentions in his Facebook post. Like he's insinuating that. That's their tribe. That's what they're involved in, right? So when you Google that, so Gungnir. In Norse mythology, Gungnir is the spear of the god Odin. It is known for also always hitting the target of the attacker, regardless of the attacker's skill. What could Gungnir do? In addition to being deadly sharp, Gungnir was designed to be perfectly balanced, and it was said that anyone who wielded it 
would always hit their target regardless of their skill or strength. So it's like a weapon, right? The Spear of God, Gungnir, the Spear of Odin, Viking style. Let's see, Norse mythology. So we have Gungnir, Old Norse, pronounced Gungnir. Oh, cool, I was pronouncing it right. Is the name of the mighty spear that belongs to the god Odin. So Gungnir is the weapon most consistently and powerfully associated with Odin. Both poetry and visual art demonstrate that this connection is deep and long-standing. It goes back at least as far as the 9th century. As you would expect, for the weapon of God, Gungnir is no ordinary spear. It was created by the dwarfs, the most skilled smiths in the cosmos, as is related in the tale of how the god's greatest treasures were made. Gungnir is said to have runes carved on its point, which presumably increased its aim and deadliness through magic. We're going to talk about Vinlanders now. So, so here's what they say about that in the document. It says, Patrick Westfall and Brad Holder were both affiliated with Vinlanders club or gang, along with Johnny Messer. And then it says, as has previously been discussed, Johnny Messer was close with Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall, and also knew Elvis Fields, Ned Smith, and Rod Abrams. Furthermore, as previously discussed, Johnny Messer was a recruiter for Vinlander. Also, as previously stated, Ned Smith, Rod Abrams, and Elvis Fields all hoped to join the Vinlander Club, according to Johnny Messer. So it says around Valentine's 2017, Messer went up there to Delphi to hang out with his Vinlander buddies. As stated earlier, Patrick Westfall claimed to be at home in Delphi on February 13th, 2017, and Brad Holder claimed to be in Logansport on February 13th, 2017. Therefore, if Johnny Messer was going up there to visit his Vinlander buddies, he, Johnny Messer, was going to Delphi to spend time with Westfall, who was like Messer's brother or possibly to Logansport to visit Holder. And then one of the, the notes here, it says, Vinlander is a word interchangeable with those that practice Odinism. As State Trooper Roland Purdy stated in his deposition, all members of Vinlanders are also Odinists. Basically, the Vinlanders are a white supremacist group consisting of Odinists. Brad Holder, Patrick Westfall, and Johnny Messer were all affiliated with the Vinlander group. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend Taylor Hornaday also confirmed that all Vinlanders were also all Odinists, and that Johnny Messer, Brad Holder, and Patrick Westfall were all members of Vinlander. And then it says that Johnny's ex-girlfriend Taylor told police that Johnny and Patrick were like brothers. She also told police that she had allowed Johnny to borrow her car on or around Valentine's Day 2017 and that Johnny drove her car up there to hang out with his Vinlander friends. When he returned her vehicle, it had dried blood over one side of it. Johnny Messer refused to discuss the details of how the blood got there. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend further stated that it took her several car washes to finally remove the blood. And then Amber, Brad's ex-wife, said that Brad told her that Westfall belonged to a group called the Vinlanders. In 22, Brad told her that Westfall had many people backing him up and powerful friends, she said. And Brad was very nervous while telling her these things and was whispering like he was fearful someone else would hear him. She said throughout the conversation, Brad was constantly telling her to stay away from Westfall. He also told her that Patrick had killed a lot of people and it didn't matter if they were innocent or not. Amber truly believes Brad is scared of Westfall. So, we know Johnny Messer was a recruiter for Vinlander. Says Rushville's Johnny Messer recruited for his Vinlander gang all the time. Investigators learned that in the summer of 2016, Johnny Messer was recruiting men that lived in Rushville apartment complex to attend Vinlander meetings. So it's well known that Brad was a Vinlander. Right here, Holder's Vinlander crew. Okay, so now I'll show you what it is to be a member of Vinlander, like what they're all about. Here we go. It's a social club was formed in 2003 by a handful of former members and associates of a rogue racist skinhead group, the Outlaw Hammerskins. Publicly, the Vinlanders appeared to be a coalition of independent state skinhead crews, but in reality, the group functioned as a single entity. The Vinlanders relished a reputation for drinking, brawling, and following a racist version of Odinism a form of ancient paganism once practiced by Vikings. So this answers the, because so you know how they, they said that Odinism, there is like a racial sect and then like a racist sect, like that there's some that are racist and then, but in general for Odinism, it's not. 
necessarily racist at all, but there are some that do take like the more racist views, which up until just now, I was like, well, we don't know. Maybe, maybe Brad wasn't the type of Odinite that was the racist type, but he preaches and posts about Vin letters on his Facebook. At least he did around that time. And that is the group that are racist, is at least from what this says, right? A racist version of Odinism. In its own words, our beliefs stem from being deprived of our individual freedoms and from our witnessing of the decline of Western civilization. One of the most obvious and sometimes relevant symptoms of this decline is forced integration and the decline of our towns and neighborhoods based on racial makeup. So co-founder Brain James on the group's website in 2007. We will die fighting together for self-determination and self-respect in a world that has turned its back on natural law and common sense. Let's see, so background. So we have Brian James, Eric the Butcher Fairburn, and Brian Wilner, Nate Slater, and Donald Weirich were no strangers to the racist head scene when they formed the Vinlander Social Club in 2003. James Winner and Slater had been members of a head faction called the Outlaw Hammerskins, and Fairburn and Weirich were hangarounds or associates of the group. Before starting in 2002, the Hoosier State Skinheads, a group that operated out of Indiana and Illinois, they recruited members in Ohio to start a neighboring faction, the Ohio State Skinheads. Though outwardly, it appeared the two groups were separate. In reality, they functioned as a single organization. As more crews were created, they all became part of what became to be known as the Vinlander Social Club saying they were created because they were disappointed with the movement that we dedicated our young lives to. James wrote that the Vinlanders was to be something that was going to replace and surpass the old guard in the skin scene, even by force if ne necessary. The Vinlanders were formed in large part as a direct challenge to Hammerskin Nation, a coalition of Hammerskin crews that had dominated the racist skinhead scene for more than a decade. So this is by 2007, the Vinlanders had eight chapters in six states. So it sounds like they had some kind of like fight where they, one of them got arrested. Yeah, so if he was a part of Vinlanders, it does seem like they are the more racist Odinites. So that's very uh, alarming there for, you know, what we're trying to figure out. Because you know what I'm saying? There is like an innocent version of Odinites where it seems like, you know, it's not about race. It's about, you know, mythology and whatever. But it looks like... He's over there talking about he's a Vinlander. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Here's Patrick Westfall sporting the Vinlanders t-shirt. Uh, social hate call a group. Look, Indianapolis heads appear in court. So their Vinlander social club, the trial date, trial date set for assault of a homeless man. Wow. I don't even know. There's so much to click on. Social club... So it says in 2006, during a National Socialist Movement event, member Stephen Boswell gave a speech stating the white supremacist movement could not thrive by belonging to a social club where all we do is drink and shoot the shit every Saturday night. Vinlander members in attendance took this as a personal attack on their group and beat and kicked Boswell repeatedly as he left the stage. The incident solidified the Vinlander's reputation for taking no prisoners. Ooh, three members of the Vinlanders, including founder Eric Fairburn, were arrested in 2007 for severely beating and kicking a black man in front of a large group in Indianapolis. Witnesses claimed the three men threatened bystanders with violence if anyone tried to intervene or call the authorities. Wow. Fairburn was released from prison in 2009 for the assault. In September of the following year, he turned himself into police for the 2004 murder of a Springfield, Missouri man named William McDaniel. McDaniel was allegedly responsible for the drunk driving death of one of Fairburn's friends. Fairburn is now serving life in prison on a second degree murder charge. Vinlander Social Club is still considered a prominent, violent white supremacist group in the United States. In the summer of 2011, the group held their first ever white power concert plunder and pillage in Ohio. Yeah, so it doesn't look like uh, being a villain or you shouldn't be that proud of that. So I found this Brian James guy and he is actually into a lot of stuff. So he has what was the Vinlanders evolved into the American Guard is called his group. Here's a little video clip of Brian James talking about everything that he's involved with. As with my history in the white nationalist movement. I'm now very active in some leadership positions in the American constitutional nationalist movement. 
I'm a founder of a right-leaning libertarian political think tank called the Sons and Daughters of Liberty. I'm a vice president of the Indiana chapter of the American Guard, and I am the Indiana State Representative for the Proud Boys and the Fraternal Order of Alt Knights. And then somebody points out, it's a hammer of Thor, an ace true symbol commonly appropriated by Nazis, and he's wearing it on his necklace. So, background, here's Brian James. Even in the violent world of the racist head subculture, Brian James, one of the co-founders of the Vinlander Social Club, stood out, albeit for all the wrong reasons. In the opinion of neo-Nazi activist and longtime James antagonist Bill White, the beefy tattoo shop owner from Indiana is nuts and violent, a joke you want to keep away from you because you know he's going to do something to bring the cops over. In 2000, he allegedly punched and stomped a man to the brink of death at a party in Indianapolis for refusing to see Heil. I have been tried for attempted murder and multiple batteries and hate crimes, James boasted years later. My joint prison task force file is a mile long. Says James became involved with the Klan before helping to found the outlaw Hammerskins in 1999 in the first direct challenge to the authority of Hammerskin Nation. So anyway, yeah, if you want to read this article i'll link it in the description i'm not going to read it all here so here is patrick westfall with brian james right here this is uh brian james bottom takes a selfie with fellow vinlanders social club members at reunion in october 2017. and then patrick's at scene in one of the pictures so this is behind the american guard hardcore white supremacists so if you scroll down Oh, it even talks, look, Odin, soldiers of Odin. So here it says, indeed, before the American Guard was the American Guard, it was actually the Indiana chapter of a group called the Soldiers of Odin USA, a branch of extreme anti-immigrant, anti-refugee group that originated in Finland in 2015 and has spread to many other countries. The Soldiers of Odin conduct vigilante patrols to protect citizens from the ostensible depredations of refugees. The Indiana soldiers of Odin conducted several such patrols in 2016. As a recent ADL report has shown, many soldiers of Odin USA members are white supremacists or anti-government extremists. Yeah, it says Brian James, a longtime Indiana white supremacist, who was one of the founders of the Vinlander Social Club. is a hardcore race gang. But anyway, my point is, you could see him and look, you could see uh, Patrick Westfall. So... He was pretty high up. Oh, wait, here, yeah, here's another one. So here's that one I showed you earlier, that picture, and here's another picture right here. You can see him in the background. So here's a video of this group, this uh, American Guard group. So this says, while anti-fascist engaged members of the white supremacist group American Guard they confiscated a hammer from one of the members while they tried to hit anti-fascist with it. I was going to edit in music for the downtimes, but I didn't. I forgot and didn't have time. I might upload it as a pre-record and I'll put in music. Fucking guts. Ugh. Second time getting pepper sprayed today. Ah. Mother effer. You got pepper sprayed a couple times. Do one thing. Pepper sprayed a second time. I just want to say something about a comment that you, who said that? Uh, supposedly working the government. Yeah, of course you're going to have them in, infiltrated. They're going to be in these groups because how to... How do they get power but become one of them? So that's not that weird that they would be a part of what they're against because they need that power within. So that's actually even more scary, is it not? 
You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't have anything against like the whole anti-government. I mean, we're not going to get into all that stuff, but it's the whole point of like the racist angle and the violence that I think is really wrong. Um, and there's a, I mean, there's a way you could have these beliefs, but when you act out and like in a violent way, in a racist way, I don't know. Yeah, that's just not good. Cause I know, I know that my um, audience is going to be a very good variety and, and, and they're going to be, have different views and everything. And that's fine. Um, but I think we could all agree that we wouldn't want somebody just hurting somebody based on their race. Right. And I feel like these extremists, of course they do that. Not all, you know what I'm saying? Not all the Odinisms, but the the ones that are in these kind of groups. Yeah, they do. Um, you know, it like, I don't know. but um, also real quick, somebody kept, you guys keep saying, well, why would they kill two white girls if they're, you know, racist? Uh, if they're white, I don't want to say that word because I don't, I don't think that's a word we're allowed to say on YouTube. That's why I blocked it out. But if they're that, why would they kill two white girls? So, I mean, they even pointed out in the documents, don't know if it's true, I'm going to try to look into it, that Libby's mom was dating outside her race. Which would be enough. If they want to, like, make a sign and send a message, a group like that would do something like that to be like, hey. And maybe they have some personal interaction with Libby's mom that they don't like or whatever, and they really wanted to send her a message. It might even go back to Libby's dad. I mean, Libby's dad was in, like, the drug war. I mean, I, who knows? They, they, they might have... Um, targeted that family for some reason we don't know um so you know was it because of that i don't know i'm gonna see if i could find anything about that if she, you know if it is true that she did which is fine i'm not saying i think it, it, there's something wrong with the, the, you know aside your race of course not i think it's fine but i'm saying they wouldn't think it's fine you know what i'm saying so that's what the if that's kind of the motive they laid out in the, in the documents that maybe it could be because of that. But hey, maybe we'll learn that there's some another, other kind of motive. I don't know. All right, I'm going to press play. Okay, so let's go back to Brad Holder. So we connected how probably powerful and dangerous the Patrick Westfall is because he is friends with some of the high ups in these gangs or whatever. I mean, he's in pictures with the founder or co-founder of the Vinlanders, which now turned into the American Guard, and you saw everything else that he's high up in, the Proud Boys, all of that stuff, some powerful groups. So he probably does have that power that Brad was telling his ex-wife that, hey, he's dangerous. Anyway, so on April 7th, 2017, so that would be like two months, a little less than two months after the murder, he posts this with that symbol on his hand, which is the same symbol that was on Abby with the sticks. But anyway, so he says, So the past two days I've drawn the Gibo rune. Last Saturday I hit a deer on the way to work. Earlier this week I sold my Dodge. With that money I ordered a new bumper. This morning I hit a raccoon on the way to work. Not that I don't appreciate the gifts the gods are giving me, both positive and negative, I don't think my nerves can handle much more gift giving. Let's try to slow this down with an Iza rune. Iza gibo, Iza gibo, Iza gibo, Izabo, 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 whatever the heck that means. So less than two months after the murder, nobody knows anything about the murder scene. And he happens to write with pen, it looks like, because I don't think it's a tattoo. In the documents, it said it was with pen. Not sure, but it does look like pen. The same symbol that was left on Abby's body with sticks. Now, if that was the only coincidence, maybe it was just a coincidence. But there's way more that it just almost seems unfathomable that all of these could be just coincidences. So here's one of the charges. I was wondering, of, you know, oh, rumors shoot. about... I accidentally... Okay, hold on. I gotta find where we were. Um, hold on when I'm doing this. Hold on one second. Let me find where I left off. Okay, so here we are. Sorry. 
I want to make a, a remark about what you said though. But there's okay. Um, Paul. So I was wondering that I was trying to figure out because I was like, that kind of looks like the Mason symbol. So I was trying to like see if that could have any meaning. So you're saying an inverted? Would that be an inverted? Hold on. Um let me bring up the Mason symbol. Um, but I wanted to also uh but either way, Freemasons, he was a Freemason too. Tarantulas. He was, a, I mean, Brad was a Freemason too. So, um, okay. So, gift, Isa. Hold on, wait, wait. Jeremiah says the symbol is called Gibel, meaning gift. Isa is the letter I, meaning ice. Um, but I just wanted to make a remark on the, um, who's, who's sending me all the stuff about like the people that are dying that were investigating it. That makes me nervous because. That would now would not surprise me if for somehow they lost the freaking um video of the uh, polygraph. You know what I'm saying? Now watch them say, "Oh, we don't have that video of Elvis's sister saying that." You're okay. Are you the same person that said that Elvis's sister died in a fire? Okay. I was hoping with this this angle that maybe Anthony could help me out on this angle with like the law enforcement and what happened with them. So you said, "Check out Meehan, who killed a cop investigating Odin." He, too, was a correctional officer. So uh, Anthony did sen send me a couple pictures of Sergeant Robinson, the correctional or the uh, um, guard that's watching um, that they talk about. That's uh, basically watching um, Richard in prison, in jail and like the one that they're they're saying that he's they're like abusing, whatever they're he's threatening him and stuff like that. Um, so up until. Just like what? I don't even know if it was just till these documents came out. He has, he, he he definitely was an Odinist. Anthony sent me a couple pictures that he had posted on his Facebook page of, here, let me just share, share them real quick. One second. They're, of course, they're taken down now, but he, uh, hold on, let me share my screen really quick. So I'm hoping tomorrow Anthony will pop on and help me out with that angle because I don't, I haven't even been down that angle yet. I mean, I know some of the stuff just from, first of all, hearing it in the documents. And then I remember when Matt did like the stuff on all the corruption, how corrupt that town is. So here's Sergeant Robinson. He's the one that's in the um, jail harassing Richard Allen. Supposedly they say it was what Jones and Robinson um, and then, so on his Facebook, he had this, he posted this past June. It's, it's the same, like the little horn antler thingy or whatever that is in a lot of Brad's uh, posts and rituals. They use antlers. Um, and then, oh, see, that's why Brad, when I was doing this video, I, I, did, I didn't even think, see, I was, I stayed up all night and I wasn't thinking straight. That's why Brad always had a, a big sledgehammer. And when he posted all of those Every day when he was posting like the runes, a lot of the times he would have a sledgehammer. I didn't even think like Odin. It's Odin, right? Isn't that Odin who carries the big like whatever you call that? So Brad probably didn't have, you know, the closest thing he had was that big sledgehammer. Ah, that makes sense now. Okay. Um, I was like, what does the sledgehammer have to do with? Why does he always have that? And then here's another one that he has this symbol here. And that's uh, Robinson, the sergeant. I think that's the last, oh, that's him. And Oh, look, he has got the runes on his legs. And then I don't know what that is. So, yeah, he's definitely an old knight. So they didn't lie about that. Um, all right, so let's go back to my video. More that it just almost seems unfathomable that all of these could be just coincidences. So here's one of the charges that Bradley has. It's a uh, felony six filed August 3rd, 2015 status it's decided. So two charges, one domestic battery, and then there's another account, domestic battery spouse. They both have the date of August 2nd, 2015 cash bond, a thousand dollars. That's that. But this potentially is a violent crime. So he does have a tendency to be violent as long as these charges are, you know, I know there are, sometimes there are charges of people getting charged with things that really they didn't do, but they aren't believed. So I can't say for sure, but he is charged with a violent 
charge. I mean, domestic battery is, and it was a felony, so he would have hit, physically hit his wife. At least that's what he was charged with. Okay, so I'm going to read you some text messages with Brad and a few other people. So Brad says, the first seven are all good bind runes. Well, we might want to talk to someone. We don't want things canceling each other out. And Mark says, I want to smith the sleep horn. Maybe it will do as it says. Torser says, this is more Icelandic stave magic than bind runes. Some of these bind runes aren't meant to be tattooed on your skin. They're supposed to be engraved on other material like wood, lead sheets, etc. Also, some of them are supposed to be put only on specific areas of the body. Remember Egil Scaligrism's prophetic words after healing a young woman who was ill and had the incorrect runes given to her? Egil scratched the incorrect runes off and carved. I don't know what the rest says because it was a screenshot. I've actually mentioned this in rune presentations before. And Brad Holder says, Thank you, Stefan. We're wanting to carve bind runes onto a drinking horn that was a gift to our kindred. And I'm definitely not a rune expert. That's why I wanted to get someone's advice as to which bind runes. Stefan says, unless you know for sure what these bind runes actually mean and their effects, I'd stick to only using runes and imagery that you're confident of. Brad says, thank you, sir. Stefan says, you're very, very welcome. Good luck. Damon says, three of these I have tattooed. Lorna says, try out whatever symbol you chose you choose as a temporary tattoo first, or carry it in your pocket, being for a while first. This makes sure you like the design before you commit, and also runic symbols are powerful if involved or created incorrectly. So, I mean, that just, it's not very important, I would say, but it's just kind of interesting to hear them talking about runes and how it is a big part of their belief system and stuff. And the fact that it seems like they were those sticks made runes that were found at the scene. Okay, so now I'm going to try to put in Okay, real quick. Um, yeah, you're right. So as far as what was found on... It was Libby, right? The inverted um, mace, mason symbol. So I'm thinking that maybe one of the sticks fell off then. Because wouldn't it need one more stick for that to be uh, the inverted mason sim symbol? Who, who said that? Because look, I feel like it would need one more stick. Which it could have fell off. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe they didn't have it. It didn't have time. Maybe they heard something. And they didn't have time to get the, the last stick. But am I looking at that right? Hold on. I'll bring up. I have it on the other computer. I'm going to bring up on this computer real quick. I'll show you what I mean. Maybe I'm not looking at it right. Um, uh, let's use. We'll use this one. Hold on one second, I'll bring it up. I wanted to get a, a screenshot of it. And then I want to get the one of, hold on a second, where uh, Court TV, I think it was Court TV, they did the, um, what did they do? Hold on a second. They did the, um, which I was going to do, and then I saw they did it. So I was like, I'll just use theirs. I was going to put, like, the, their description of how the room, how the sticks were laying on them. They ended up doing it. So. It's like, a, I'm sure they did it correct. Uh, okay, so, hold on. I'm bringing it up. Where is it? The one they did. Hold on, give me one second. Because I want you guys to explain if you're talking about that they they left a stick out or... um, You're saying that I'm, I must be missing something. Okay, so this right here is the... Right here, you're seeing it inverted, but wouldn't it need to have one more stick for it to be the inverted? And I'll show you what I mean here. Hold on. Let me bring up the mason one. Hold on. I'm thinking it would need to have one more. Let me see what you guys are saying in that. Yeah, let me try to get them both side by side. It sucks because I could like be playing the video and get it ready, but every time I leave my screen, it makes the the video glitch out. I do, I'm just gonna I'm gonna need to like just suck it up and freaking get a new computer already. It's just this computer isn't that old. I keep putting it off. Like I don't want. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about here. Okay, so wouldn't that need one more? 
So I could see how you're saying inverted. If it, if there was another one that was going like this was pushed out a little bit and it was going. Oh, wait a minute. This way. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. Th like you're looking at it a different way. Ah, okay. Well, I don't know. But what does the, does it, an inverted Mason symbol mean something? Because I mean, we could, we could do that with all, I mean, you could do that forever. Like, well, then this could be a backwards this. If you flip this, it could be this. Then it would just take away the meaning. Unless if they do, they use inverted Mason symbols and it means something. Because if not, then I mean, like I said, you could do that a lot. And then it would just start taking away like the meaning of stuff. But you're, are you talking about right here? Th these two? But then what does this other one mean? I almost think that maybe one of the sticks got moved and it was supposed to be the mason and that somehow the wind or something moved it. Maybe it was supposed to be a mason, like the actual mason symbol. Who knows? Um, yeah, so I don't know, but it does. That here's the thing though. It doesn't even, I was trying to look for a rune that looked close to this and I can't find anything that matches a rune. Th those of you that are familiar with this, uh, Odinism. Does this match or come close to any of the runes? So it could mean two things. Maybe. I don't know, actually, because like I said, maybe one of the, it got moved. Maybe somehow they were in a rush and they heard something and they weren't able to finish. Um, maybe it's something between them and we just can't. Maybe it's two, two symbols on top of each other. I don't know, but I can't find any that match. And I'm not like, I can't say, yeah, that's the inverted th this because that, I mean, it doesn't exactly even match that. I mean, it, I see what you guys are saying, but it's still like. Hold on a second. If you. Yeah, it still doesn't. No, I don't know. Look at Abby's rune. Oh, you're talking about Abby's. But this matches a rune, though. I thought you guys were talking about Livy's. This one already matches the other one, though. The one that he wrote on his hand. This matches that perfectly. I was thinking, yeah, what if it is F? Are you talking about Libby's? Are you okay? What are when you say the F? What are you? Which one are you talking about? Because now you guys are confusing me. Um, that's the thing. Like we could do this all day, and it's not. Does it has to? You know, oh wait, I mean you can make. Uh, Hold on. I was thinking the way that the bodies were placed that they were trying to make something too. You think that? Um, I mean, it's another V, but you said an F that has to do with the arm? Well, let me see. I mean, I guess, but... I don't know, Kelly. I don't know. That is what I am curious. I'm curious if he did say something to them and they don't, they are afraid of his life. So they don't want to rat him out. The defense doesn't want to come out yet and say until probably till the trial to say maybe, oh, no, Richard said this because then it would put him at risk if those guards really are in Odinism and they have been like, you know, doing crap to him. So they might maybe Richard did say something and they ha they don't want to say anything yet to protect him. It makes me wonder. So, but the point is, is if he did, it makes me wonder if Richard was a part of it. Like if Richard and the guys did it and Richard was like the fall guy, you know what I'm saying? It could even be something like that. Um, yeah. Can you send me the information on Meehan? Can you uh, give me his full name and email me, she share? Because I'm going to look into that angle tomorrow. So can you send me, like, you and who else? Teresa? And there's a couple people sending me stuff about um, Elvis's sister and stuff that died in the fire. Can you guys send me that, info, email me that stuff so tomorrow we could go over it? Yeah, that's true. 
So looks like the image. But the whole thing is, is let's say some, some somebody's saying like it doesn't match any of them. Well, it does. This one matches it and the antlers match. So Abby's matches the runes and then the antlers. Um, I'll, you'll see, I'll get into this video how those are important um, to this religion, the antlers thing. And plus what Elvis said. Um, and we'll get into Elvis's responses and stuff. I go, um, yeah, this this video that I made is kind of long. But, okay, so my point is maybe Libby's, maybe we're just not understanding it. Maybe they didn't finish Libby's. Maybe there's two of them. Maybe we don't understand something because it has something to do with the tree and the blood on her and all that stuff. But you guys can't deny the people that are kind of in denial. Which No, I guess you can deny it. But how do you explain, like... If this was Richard and it has no significance, why would you take the time when you're trying to freaking leave no DNA? You're committing a murder. You want to leave no DNA. You want to get out of there before somebody sees you, okay? If you're not into any anything, any rituals or anything, why would you take the time to do all this if it, it's not important to you in some way? To go get the sticks and lay them on there in a certain weird, you know, symbol, um... The blood that had no clothes, that no blood on it. I mean, that is weird. The Abbey's was dressed in Libby's clothes. Okay, those of you that maybe didn't read all the documents, they said Abby was dressed in Libby's clothes, didn't have any blood on the clothes. So they think they were both killed naked and then redressed Abby in Libby's clothes and made sure that none of Libby's clothes had any blood on it. How can one person do that? And why would one person do that? That's just com committing a random murder if it didn't have something to do with what they were trying to say, you know, something to do with the ritual. Okay. The splatter, the F with Libby's blood, explain that. If that's just Richard, that means some, no, nothing. It's just random. Why, why would he take the time risking that if it had no meaning in risking that time and effort, leaving more DNA and, um, you know what I'm saying? Having somebody possibly seeing him. Why, why would you do that? Um, so like I said, yeah, Richard could still be involved, but I, if he is, I think, there's more than Richard. I think he's a part of something. And maybe he wanted to join. And then, you know, he didn't end up joining. Or maybe they were going to pay him to get the girls out there. Or maybe he doesn't have anything to do with it. I don't know. That bullet just doesn't. It's just, a, oh, yeah, maybe. I like to see. I guess we'll find. Hi, Gailey. We'll find out when we see that. When we're able to see it ourselves. So maybe, maybe not. Um, the only thing that, you know, the one main huge thing, it was like a huge thing that is the bullet. But if that's true, that they don't have like a clear picture of that bullet, do you know how easy it is to, when they get that search warrant, to go actually then get the real bullet from his gun and never had it to begin with, and it was a different bullet? And for some reason, I don't know why they picked Richard, but they do that. I mean, this stuff happens sometimes where they plant evidence and whether it be because they they needed to get this solved and it could be a mixture of needing to get it solved and, and there's price could be some reason they pick Richard. They wanted to protect their own if they are like Odin. I mean, who knows? There could be so many possibilities. Um, yeah. Uses some bullets as found at the scene. Really, Paul? No one knows the defense got this crime scene photos from the yeah. All right, let me continue my uh video. For all the posts that he posted that, that are like the runes or like he posted on his table, like the ritual type stuff. So yeah, I put it in order. So this is April twenty seventh, twenty fourteen. I didn't go back that far, like thoroughly, but some of the ones that were like pre 2016 or more screenshots from groups because I personally only went back from like tw 2016, 2017, 2018. So that's why there's only a few that are like 2014 that, you know, some interesting ones that people posted in group. Okay, so this is from April 27th, 2014. He posts his guns with the magazines and the case to carry the gun. So March 9th, 2014 says, okay, I made a knife for my nephew, Marcus, sent it out today for his graduation. Hope he likes it. I guess it's not really that big of a deal, but it looks like it's 5'11'14. 
So he made it on 5914. So I wonder maybe Margus's birthday is the 11th, I'm guessing, or there's something special. Well, yeah, because it's his birthday. He said he made it for his birthday. So I'm guessing his birthday must be the 11th. So not sure why he posts it again the next day, May 10th, 2014. And then another knife, July 13th, 2015. It says Ryan E. Baker finished product. And then January 1st, 2016, it says, made myself a new set of runes today, deer antler. And I thought that was interesting because we know that whoever did this put antlers on Abby to make it look like, you know, coming out of her head. So this is from the document. It says, horns and antlers are common symbols used in pagan rituals. And Brad Holder himself displayed the Odinite fascination with horns on his Facebook post. I haven't been able to find that specific post they're talking about, but it says find attached exhibit 97 from um, Brad's Facebook page. As you can see, the middle photograph is an image of a person with small stick-like antlers on the top of their head. And it says upon a closer inspection, it is obvious that someone involved in the killings intentionally placed small stick from a tree on top of Abby's hair to resemble horns or antlers. The horns formed from sticks on Abby's head look similar to the image found on Holder's Facebook page. And remember, Elvis made a statement to his sister that he shaped sticks into horns on Abby. It says, above Abby's head were smaller sticks that had been placed over her hair, crudely mimicking horns or antlers. Elvis confessed to both of his sisters on two different occasions that he was involved in the murders. This confession included telling one sister that Abby Williams was a troublemaker, and that is why he, Elvis, used sticks to form horns on Abby's head and admitting to another sister that he was in big trouble and going away for a while because he was present when the girls were murdered and that he spit on the girls. Elvis described forming horns out of sticks and placing them on Abby's head, and crime scene photos confirm Elvis's statement. Perhaps the most damaging piece of evidence that links Elvis to the crime scene was found in an unusual place, the middle of a report that memorialized the results of Mary Jacobs' polygraph examination. In Mary's pre-examination interview, polygraph examiner Stephanie Thompson recorded that Mary Jacobs stated the following. Elvis told her, Mary, Abigail is a little troublemaker, that he placed leaves on her and used sticks to give her horns. And how would Elvis's sister back then know about the horns? There would be no way for her to know. Okay, so back to the posts by Brad Holder. And then January 24th, 2016, he's got the automatic and another smaller gun with the magazines and stuff. It says a little gun, P-O-R-N for ya, pew pew life. So February 22nd, 2016 would be a year before the murders. He posts a rune, letter F, made out of twigs. We know the person left twigs and runes at the scene and also painted a letter F on the tree with Libby's blood. Is there something special about the month February for the this uh, group of people? If this was them or another group of Odinists, did they cho choose that date for a reason? To make a sacrifice to their god? And then what? Th February? Maybe that's important an important month and for F or something? Maybe F and Fe- Well, February and F! I mean, February begins with an F, but anyway, my point is, is he's showing the rune F, letter F, whatever, however you want to look at it, with twigs in February, the year before. February 25th, 2016, it says, La Goose, Perthro, Isle Watts, Hail Odin. So those must be the runes, the names of the runes that he has out. And then he has, what, a hammer, a knife, a cup, a candle, a picture of probably his kids, a bag. That probably has the runes in it. But why is it you'll see it's always some kind of weapon when he has stuff with it. It's either like a knife, a hammer, a gun. If that isn't showing you that it's violence and, and what they're all about. Dang. February 26, 2016. More guns. Says my babies are all cleaned up. It's got a, what is that, like a rifle? I'm not that good with guns, like what, what guns are, but. That looks like like one of those automatic ones, right? And then another gun. Wait, it looks like there's three guns. And then I don't know, is that whatever's in that little thing there? I'm not sure what everything else is, to be honest. Then it looks like, is that a seasoning and then a spray? I don't know if that's purposely supposed to be in there. Let's zoom in and see what 
that is. It does kind of look like that, that there's like a symbol written on there, like a red circle with a line through it and then something behind it. Almost like that's a cigarette with smoke, like no smoking, but I have no idea. And then it almost looks like it says ID. So that maybe that's supposed to be a part of it. This looks like maybe some spices or something, another jar or something, maybe a candle, a glove possibly. So definitely three guns. The one looks like maybe like a pocket knife you clip onto your belt. Um, and I don't know what's in that round thing that zips open. Is that something that you keep something for your gun? Not sure, but okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so his truck. I included this because we know shortly after the murders, he ends up getting a new truck. So this is, you know, the year before, March 3rd, 2016. Posts his truck, says, looking pretty. And this is the Freemason pin. It's March, he posts it March 20th, 2016 in Logansport, Indiana. Okay, so April 24th, 2016, he posts this. It looks like he's probably seeing something in the tree branches, a rune of some sort. April 24th, 2016, another thing. Looks like he sees a rune with the twigs, whether or not he made that purposely with the twigs or it just happened to come across it and it looked like it. Real quick, Seekersman. No, um, but I think it's not... Aren't we allowed to take what they're saying that's in police reports and on videos. I mean, we're allowed to take those as facts, right? I mean, I'm never going to 100% believe it till I see it with my own eyes during the trial, but it's not silly for us to take it pretty strongly when the stuff that they talk about having videos and having police reports that say that. We have to believe that he's being honest. He's a lawyer. He's telling the judge that. I mean, and the judge has the freaking discovery. I mean, they're going to, he's going to know if, He's lying. That would look pretty bad. So I do believe the stuff he's talking about in police reports and videos. I mean, I don't think that makes us like stupid following assumptions to believe that stuff. Some of the stuff, you know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff that he says is backed up with reports. That's all. And I wanted to make a, a who said something about, oh, what was I going to say? I was going to make a remark on somebody else's, uh, oh, the, the, the day. Supposedly, I remember hearing back years ago that it was a snow day right that they, i know i know it wasn't snowing it was a beautiful day but wasn't it that they didn't use all their snow days so they gave them like that day off isn't that what that was guys correct me if i'm wrong well i guess that's gonna be up to interpretation um so when we see it it's probably gonna be up to interpretation if you know if it looks like an f i guess but even okay even if you take that away from Take, just get rid of that what about some of the other stuff that's supposedly in reports and supposedly like some is on video that in itself some of that stuff in itself is enough to be like what the heck so i understand that the f may not look like an f. i mean we, we don't know maybe it won't look like an f to some of us we'll see i guess another one april 24th 2016 another thing i'm guessing that is a rune looks like a rune that he saw whether or not he made it that way or saw it that way april 24th 2016 more twigs on the ground that is probably a rune of some sort so i just want to point out that's four posts he did on the same day all of different runes that he sees with either twigs or the tree branches must have been a good day he ran into four of them that day maybe walking around the park or and you know and just happened to see these uh twigs that were laid out like runes unless if like i said he purposely made them you know when he was there but i think some of them like the bigger ones and then the ones up high i'm sure those just happen to look like them that he happened to catch and then he took the picture now as far as the couple on the ground it wouldn't be that hard to take a few twigs and, and make them but i don't know what do you guys think do you think he just like goes around and if they look like him as he's walking, it must be like a sign. Look, they're, the god is talking to me. They're, you know, he made a rune on the ground for me. Or do you think they're like making them get some twigs and then they're just putting them on the ground and making them and then taking a picture? Okay, next one. April 25th, 2016. So the next day he sees another rune made out of twigs. And then August 1st, 2016 in Logansport, Indiana. He says, this is badass. It's a, it's a poster for something. The guy's like basically on a crucifix with the two ropes hanging from his two hands. And 
Looks like he's been like crucified. So I'm sure it's something to do with uh, rituals and, and their beliefs and stuff. Yeah, Jonathan, I know uh, I know lawyers are allowed to lie. Trust me. <laughs> That's what they're known for. Think about it like the stereotypical lawyer liar. You know what I'm saying? I know that. But I'm saying when they're quoting saying it's in this police report, we have a video of this. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they're allowed to lie about something being in a report and it's not. Um, they could, you know, interpret it a, a, a way that's favorable to them. I know that. But um, so regardless, like I said, I even say in this video, I'm not, you know, I can't say 100 percent. You know, I, I even said, you know, I always thought it was more than one person, though, when I heard like, oh, Richard. And even when they did that, pre they did the uh, press release. When they talked about arresting Richard Allen, they, the way they did it, they even left it open. Like they thought that there was more than one person too. We all were talking about that. Like, wow, they're making it seem like there's more than one person. So, um, anyway, my point is, is it's just, it's interesting to, to, to look into. So yeah. Do we know hundred percent? No. Um, I have heard rumors about it being staged. I'm trying to find the interview with uh, Carter where he talks about, how does he word it? He talks very vaguely, okay? It's like he doesn't want to say it, but yet if you read him between the lines of what he's saying, it's almost like he's insinuating that it was, like the scene was like something that was very unique and he was almost making it seem like it was like there was a staging to it. But then they never elaborated or went into it. So even from the beginning, there was like rumors and talks of it being staged. So it doesn't really surprise me to hear that. Now it surprises me that it being Richard, only Richard, and then that big staging, that doesn't make sense to me. So I feel like I think there definitely has to be someone else involved. Um, a lot of creators, you can save 10%. Wait, what, Jamie? Oh, wait, what do you mean, Jen? Uh, something about the down the hill comment something bothers me about it can you explain what do you mean it bothers you about the audio or what can you explain that yeah so i think there's definitely things in reports and stuff that at least that they interpret it to be the way they said there's there has got to be because they weren't going to say oh it's in the report and then there's no report that says it that would just would not i don't think they could do that but can they lie and and you know, about other stuff about their theories? Yeah, we know that. But all right, I'm gonna press play. So then we got August seventeenth, twenty sixteen, in Logansport, Indiana. It says enough said. There's three runes, and then there's a fifty cent piece heads up beside it. There's a piece of paper. Let's zoom in and see if we could read what it says back there. Okay, it says third third hurt. Says Rado Solo Elemaz, Great God Thor, Life Rune, something communication. I call upon thy something, cleanse this gathering of warriors, circle to the powers of the high gods, Thor. And then you can see that's probably the hammer skins that we talked about. One of the, the white supremacist groups that we were talking about. It started with like the hammer skins and then evolved to like the vinlanders at one point now it's the american guard there's oh and then the um not children of odin there are a group called odin's children but it was uh odin's warriors was it can't remember now but we were just talking about it the ones where the, um they were talking about like the evolution of what they call themselves okay next is august 17th 2016 it says tea time meow looks like a tea and um i don't know what you call that a little bowl then you have august 24th 2016 you have three it almost looks like it says die but i know those are just three runes with a big sledgehammer and then you have august 26 2016 looks like they're at some kind of ritual there's a candle a notebook the one guy is doing something holding his hand up he has his face blocked out for some reason with the devil horns and it looks like the guy with the hat is uh, Brad. Okay, so it looks like they have two horns or like antlers or whatever. He's holding up one and he's holding the other one. This other hand, he's got a gun on the side. 
um what else that bowl that we just saw in the other picture the hammer the sledgehammer the candle so those are the things they must use for the rituals and then you have august 27th 2016 him and patrick westfall and then some other guy i don't know who the other guy is oh the other guy is the guy from the other picture that we Hey, whoever said they sent me an email, I never got it. I just checked. Are you sending the Proton email or what? I don't know why I haven't. I feel like I get that a lot where people are like, I sent you an email and then I don't, I never get it. Can you try to send it again? Because I'm interested. Um, Can you guys, like I said, the people talking about the people dying, can you please send me information on that? I'm going to look into it after this, but that's interesting about if Elva's sister died after, you know after she said that stuff and then the the other officer that was in, investigating this she said got shot and yeah i just checked my spam i uh, saying it's not in there um nope dang can you try again whoever sent that please i definitely want to see it I'm trying to get as much information so I could understand this better. Just looked at because that was from the night before. Well, I think he just posted this the 27th, but I think it's from the meeting slash ritual the night before, as you'll see what he says in the post. But it says tribe of Gungnir's path had an awesome meeting last night. Thank you all for coming. And the ones who couldn't make it, I can't wait to see you soon. Have a great weekend, everyone. So that's August 27th. So the one we looked at before was August 26th. So that was the ritual they were talking about where he says that we had a great meeting last night. So that, you know, that was a meeting ritual, whatever you want to call it. But that's what that was. Oh, we'll get a better look at the table here later in this picture. So let's see. Well, I guess not really. Got the notebook. We have, you can see one of the horns. You can see the handle thing as the um, sledgehammer. You can see the top of the bowl. And that's in one of those uh, grills that you find in the parks. So actually, you can see more in the other one. So let's move on to the next one. This was posted August 30th, 2016 in Logansport, Indiana. It says, date a girl who says things like, drive safe, text me when you're home safe, choke me harder, I can't wait to see you. I'm proud of you. So I screenshot this one because of that part where it says choke me harder. So, you know, but some people do have just a certain sense of humor or certain things. So, I mean, it could be just an innocent thing, but just something that stood out. Okay, so this is from November 24th, 2016 in Logansport. It says chills, lightheaded, nauseated. F this. I can't miss work. I'm going to bed lol i'm thankful i feel like shit right now ha 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 feeling like sick and he got some comments and said oops sorry feel crappy it's going around Catherine said i have had that for a week it sucks tina says get well soon Kenna says i am sorry you fe feel unwell please rest and drink fluids i'm not sure why i posted that sorry there are some in here that it's like why did i screenshot this but all right let's move on so here's some more runes from November 30th, 2016. He says, Hail Odin. And Anne Michelle says, Hmm. And as you can see, there's a sledgehammer up there by the runes on the table. Okay, so this is from December 4th, 2016. It says he's in Delphi, Indiana. It says, Oh yeah, the tribe of Gungnir's path. All the kids hanging out. Gonna go to the park and gather stuff to make runes. Rachel Miller, Jagger Tyson. So, it does seem like they go to parks to gather the twigs and sticks to make the runes. So anyway, the comments, Richard says, Sorry, brother, I would have been there, but I just saw the post about coming out. I already made other plans, brother. I will have to try and make the next one. I'm off next Saturday. Maybe we can get something up then. Ron says, Badass. Vinland flag too. Okay, here is that post that they talk about in the documents. It's from December 4th, 2016. In Delphi, Indiana, it says cutting runes. That's Patrick Westfall. Trevor Bridgewater says, F yeah. Lindsay Morgan says, That's awesome. They claim that one of the branches was cut like clean with the saw. So therefore, they're saying that that means that they would have had to bring materials in. 
But I do want to point out, if you look at the dates, so when they are all with their family and they, he says they're in Delphi and it says, oh, we're going to go out and collect materials for runes. I think he's with Pastor Questfall in Delphi. So you see they're going to go out and collect some and then you see Patrick sawing to make runes. So we have December 7th, 2016, Hale Odin has a pocket knife up there. Another one, December 14th, 2016, a knife and a gun. And it, says, it almost looks like it says die, but I know that's not what it says. I think that's an R, D, I, R, or F, I, R. Anyway, December 18th, 2016, it says tribe of Gungnir's party, tribal life, tribe matters, come join the tribe, tribal brotherhood. And I know we already looked at the ones that have Patrick in it, but I'm going to put him in these screenshots because I'm putting them in order so you can kind of see him, you know, in a timeline. And here's another one from December 18th. It says, damn good show for the tribe of Gungnir's path. So it's them sitting around a table. You can see Patrick right there and then Brad. And then that picture outside that we just looked at was from the 18th too. So this is the same day. Looks like Brad's hanging out in Delphi with Patrick. So for some reason, he posts this again, December 20th, 2016 in Delphi. It's got Brad is in it. And then uh, Patrick Westfall is right there. And then there's Brad. Okay, so December 21st, 2016. Uh, the famous table with runes on it and it says hail odin hail the wild hunt it looks like there might be is that like a whip up there you can only see like the handle with a little like rope thing on the bottom but i mean i don't know what do you guys think so at first i thought it was just like a little you know like rubber type like thing where you could like hold hold it or you know what i'm saying put like a loop put it on your belt or whatever but now the more i look at it doesn't it kind of look like it could be like hard plastic like a magnifying glass or something i don't know the more i'm looking at it the more i think it's just like a hard solid like plastic or whatever it's made oh. out of and maybe that's like a handle oh, even still oh, that you it. hold it it's like got some it. kind of weapon maybe probably um, something that's a lot of people know and you're gonna be like no that's it's this and i'm gonna feel like an idiot <laughs> Okay, let's continue. So January 4th, 2017, we have three more runes. So just real quick, the reason I just kind of put these in order, anything that had to do with, um, you know, this religion, I kind of put them in order. Like, so I just pick like, you know, a few months before the murder and, and a little bit out, like maybe like a couple weeks after. And that's what I'm going through in order right now. These, if you guys are wondering, um, but I want to cut in sometime. I don't know if I should, when I should do it. I found um, in the group, they posted a couple documents that are kind of interesting. And it's about the prison system and how, let me see what the one's titled. Uh, hold on, what's the title? Um, correctional, offi correctional officials around the country struggle with a court ruling accommodating Odinism, a some, sometimes racist religion. So I want to read some of that. Let's see. I'm trying to think when I should cut in and read it before. here. I'll play this a couple more minutes and then I'm going to cut in and read that. And I just got it. So I haven't even read it yet. I just saw it now. Can't tell what is on the table. Looks like maybe there's like a pan and then it almost looks like there could be something sprinkled on that pan. But that could just be like, you know, how you see things like that's totally different than what it is. So who knows? But we're getting close to, uh, right before the murders so this is a month before the murders but yeah it does look like something like some kind of powder that's sprinkled right not sprinkled but there's like a, a pile of powder like a brownish color powder anybody know maybe a certain type they use in rituals or something that somebody may be familiar with actually it could be drugs too kind of looks like uh heroin but i just don't think he would probably be posting that so i'm guessing it's probably something else January 11th, 2017, three more runes. It looks like the like handle to a hammer. And then, I don't know, it looks like a leather pouch. Maybe that's that pouch he keeps the runes in. Then we got January 11th, 2017, Odin's Children. It's a private group, Odin's Children, Indiana. Actually, now that we're bringing that up, by following his Facebook page, it took me to this other Facebook page where this guy's like the leader of Odin's Children or something. Let me show you. 
Actually, I don't know if he's the leader, but this Xenon that was somehow linked to Brad's at Facebook has Odin's children, Skullman family. What would that say? April 2nd, 2019. And then we have Odin's children, June 7th. That's this past year. How adorable somebody writes. This is March 31st, 2019. It says, this flag was given to us by Matt Harris. Has hundreds of signatures signifying where OC has went. We will continue. We are apolitical and love free speech. Well, hey, I could get down with that. <laughs> but anyway, so, I mean, probably not all of these, the Odinists are bad. There's probably a lot of decent people. But then, you know, you I just want to cry. I just mean like the whole free speech. And <laughs> so don't take that the wrong way. I know that's going to get twisted. Um, okay, so let me finish this this screenshot and then i might cut in and read a, a, at least a little bit of that art this uh, document which is, seems pretty interesting for what's going on you have your more extreme groups that i do believe patrick westfall was a part of brad holder was a part of or is i don't know if they still are but i you know from what they were promoting they're a part of the more extreme racist you know white supremacist groups that part of the odinites now the xenon i have no idea it was just linked somehow he was in brad's commenting which doesn't mean that they necessarily have to be you know the same but i clicked on him and i saw he had a bunch of like the odin's children so who knows okay so here is a few of the screenshots where i got them from the group so i don't have the part where it says the date so i have a few of those so i just wanted to share those because they're interesting but they are from what brad posted okay so the first one is the brass knuckles and let me just tell you i realize now i was thinking <laughs> it's probably because of my um history with uh <laughs> math they had they used to make all kinds of different kinds of torches but now i realized that i didn't edit it in so at the time when I first edited this, I thought that was a torch, but I realized after and I forgot to cut it out. So don't make fun of me. I thought it was like a torch, but I realized, isn't that for a gun? I don't know a lot of this stuff, what like gun stuff looks like, but I'm thinking it's like a thing for a gun, right? Like, a, what do you call it? That goes in the bottom of the gun. So I just wanted to let you know that I do say that I thought it was a torch. A gun. A knife, a torch, and, and I'm not sure what's in that other little pouch. Then you have this looks like a ritual here. You got papers, a circle with rocks, a book, wood in some kind of formation. And then you have, okay, it looks like the book Riley. Looks like there's a dog with a person like, you know, hugging a dog. And then it looks like, uh, I thought that was like a weird stick with a weird head kind of thing on it. But I think it's just the shape of the wood that it made or whatever. But anyway, the pages, I don't know if those are pages out of that book or that pages from another book that are all scattered. Of course, you know me, had to look up Riley. So this appears like this is the same book. It looks like the same cover. The Summer of Riley. Oh, it's a cute dog. Who Riley is. All right, let's see what this is about. Enjoy best-selling author E. Button's moving story about the bond between a boy and his dog. Maybe that's one of the reasons people get dogs, to kind of close up the empty places inside them. 11-year-old William never needed a friend more than now. After his parents' separation, his father's new engagement, and his grandfather's dying without any warning, Adopting big, beautiful Riley is the first thing in a long time that has made him feel better. So it says, this, this summer I read The Summer of Riley by Eve Bunting. It's a story about a boy's dog who is sentenced to death for chasing a horse in his owner's effort to save his life. The book is both heartbreaking and somewhat happy. The most heartbreaking part to me is probably when Riley, the dog, is forcefully taken from William Riley's owner, main character, Bunting writes, I grabbed him, Riley, around the neck and tried not to let dad clip the leash onto his collar. No, no, I kept pushing his hand away. I heard Riley whine, the doors of the truck slam, and the wheels crunch down the driveway. Tugs on your heartstrings, doesn't it? Well, I won't tell you the good part, because what would ruin the surprise? But there is a good part, trust me. This is the book that you will not be able to put down because you will need to know what becomes of Riley, William, and the other characters. 
I would recommend this book to people who like a story with suspense and surprises, which is definitely me. So I don't know. I mean, why are they, why do they have that in their little burn pit? Is it just random? Somebody just brought a random book so they could burn or so they had paper to start a fire? Or was there some kind of meaning? Who knows? Okay, so next we have another thing. Now you can see that that's Brad's hand because you see how in one of those uh, recent screenshots, he cut his hand right there. You can see the blood on it. Okay, so this should kind of put it into perspective of when this photo was taken because you see he cut his hand October 4th, 2017. So it has to be somewhere, you know, close to that time. That's that horn looking thing or whatever that they had at that other uh, ritual with uh, Patrick that we were looking at. Real quick, so in the future I know what to call that. Those of you guys that are familiar with this religion and, and some of the, the stuff. What, it, what do they call that? Because that's in a lot of the, his posts and stuff. Did they drink out of it? I could see him like drinking blood or like what um, symbolizes blood or... I mean, did they put liquid in it or what? And what is that called? Let me know if anybody knows. Looking at, you always have the hammer, sledgehammer type thing. You have candles, bag of Skittles, is that a shot glass maybe? Some little thing with like, I don't know if that's like wood chips or whatever in there. Like some kind of something you burn and then you have a couple of those wooden figures, a little pan. There's a couple antlers back there or horns or whatever it makes me think of what they said you know the abbey what they did with abbey or whoever did that to abbey how they put the antlers or horns on her okay so we have january 18th 2017 and whoever said incense you're probably right that probably is incense because you could see a little bit on the uh the uh pl the oh the pan there so yeah probably is because I don't think he was into drugs. From what I've heard, that he didn't do any drugs. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah, I don't think he'd be posting it on Facebook regardless. But yeah, it does look like incense. Hail Odin. It's got the, you know, the handle of this hammer. The three ruins. You can see his feet. He's got a tray where you could, looks like matchsticks, burnt matchsticks. Looks like a box of matches also. So January 21st, 2017, in Delphi, Indiana, says Firm 22, damn straight. You got Brad and Patrick together in Delphi. Because remember, at the time, Patrick is the one that linked him to Delphi. He's the one that lived in Delphi. So when they go visit Patrick, they go to Delphi, which wasn't far from where Abby and Libby were murdered. Only a couple miles. So now the day after... The picture we just looked at because that was from the 21st this is january 22nd it says hail thor hail the brotherhood hail patrick westfall roger said love you brothers and january so that is the last picture at least that i've seen of patrick and brad together so that's kind of interesting and then that story that that supposedly amber said um and I'm pretty sure that that one's on the record, right? It wasn't that. Didn't they say that was in the police records? What Amber said about um, him uh, talking about. I'm pretty sure that was on the record when I have to go back to the um, documents where she said about him saying that him and Patrick had a falling out because it's at some ritual in February. Um, that they had some falling out because they didn't agree with something. And yeah, they're not seen in any pictures after that. So. January 25th, 2017, Hail Odin. He's got the three runes, box of matches, a pan with used matches on it. You can see his feet again. We have January 30th, 2017, in Buffalo, Indiana. It says, rolled my ankle Saturday. She's looking pretty. So everybody was saying how he hurt his ankle after the murder, but this shows that it was from January 30th, so it would be a couple weeks before the murder. He rolled his ankle. So Angela says, ouch. Tim says, damn. Raymond says, your ankle has turned into a vibrate cankle. Bravo, sir. Ian says, wow. 
Anne says, wow, that's my favorite color, lol. Jesse says, Mark, you're mean but funny. And Carol says, do you know what happened to Abby and Libby? So I find it kind of interesting. Eight days before the murder, he Brad Holder posts this. He's in Logansport, Indiana. He says, today is a milestone in my life. I feel excited and upset at the same time. I will be stepping down as Gothi in Tribe of Gungnir's Path. The gods are pushing me to be a traveling Gothi to help people set up kindreds in Indiana. I feel this is lacking. Patrick Westfall will take over my responsibility as Gothi for Tribe of Gungnir's Path. I'm going to be having lots of meet and greets. It's time, Indiana, for you to quit being a virtual heathen and start meeting people and starting kindreds and study groups. And then February 6th, if you got my back in the darkest hours, I got yours for the rest of your life. And he has Odin's children, February 7th. Says, all right, folks, we have set up a specific goal for shirt sales this month. Our goal is 33 t-shirts. Since Saturday, we've sold five. The more we sell, the more we raise for OC, which also means we can stop doing pre-sales and you'll be able to get shirts within days and not weeks. It'll be more money for the Yule Fund. More money to set up events, etc. Let's make this happen. I'm going to purchase a bunch of these and have them at our meet and greets. I'm going to sell them at cost for those who don't like purchasing things online. So a lot of these right before these rune secrets and he's you know every day uh, leading up to the murder these are uh, uri's rune means meaning rune secrets so february 8th okay so let's look at the couple days leading up to february 13th the day of the murder so february 11th it's fire purification insight today's message today is a day to clean up and clear away what is unnecessary unhelpful and undesired in your life this can be literally getting rid of clutter, but also examining outdated and misaligned thought patterns and habits. Let energy of Kanaz burn away the old to make room for the new. So the interpretation is Kanaz refers to the ability to, to create your own reality. You do not need to live in the reality manufactured by others or society. You are your own something engineer. You can't something engineer. The rune is something in creativity. Somebody says purge the clutter equals freedom. And then he makes a comment or a post at February 11th to 12, 17 p.m. I want to talk about absolutes for a minute. And you see that nowadays a lot. Just because I'm not in love with you or I don't call you my family or part of my tribe does not mean I want to go out and burn your house down and kill you. Just because someone feels they want to live a separate life from you does not mean they hate you. It seems nowadays the media and everyone else wants us to go to extremes and start killing one another. Just because you are not part of my tribe doesn't mean I want you to die. Hate is a strong word. Preservation is a better word. So that's kind of uh, interesting considering, you know, it was a couple days before the murder. And then February 11th, he posts inspirational quote for the day. Don't be a effing biatch. <laughs> we are not descended from fearful men. That was what? 5.01 p.m. And then he's at the gym at 7.18 p.m. Talk about GNC commercial, but it speaks volume. Step out of that comfortable box, out of that cocoon, become what you are meant to be. 10.21 a.m. Woo, getting sweaty. So this is February 12th, 6.01 p.m. Awesome place to work out. Come check it out. 7.52 p.m. It's 24-7 gym. Just the F word. So February 13th, this is the day of the murder. At 3.22 a.m., he just writes F-U-C-K. And then 3.29 a.m., February 13th, 2017. Need, constraint, motivation. Today's message. Today, think about how necessity has shaped your life. Was there a time when you did something because you absolutely had to? Also, think of times you came to endings in your life because you were blocked or restricted. What have you learned about limitations and necessity from these experiences? How can you use that wisdom now? Interpretation. Naughty's is about self-reliance. Facing your fears, achievement through something. It, this always blocks it out here. So, and then thanks, Scott, for the muffins. They are delicious. Blueberry, too. Ha ha ha. Glad you like the blueberry muffs, Scott says. So, this one's 6 57 a.m. He says, Goals for 2017 move out of mom and dad's basement, get a decent running 4x4 truck because old red is falling apart, start working out a lot, start taking martial arts. Whether that's boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, etc. Do fun stuff with kids. Oh yeah, I can't leave out support single mothers and their breast implants at least once this year. Ha ha ha. 
February 13th, 7.01 a.m. LOL truth. So wait, is he 6.57? I want to see, did he even sleep that day? Did he? 3.29. 3.22. And unless if he just went to bed early and woke up early. Yay, happy effing Mondays, a-holes. So that's 7.15 a.m. This too shall pass. It may pass like a kidney stone, but it will pass. 10.58 a.m. Me, right before I get the shit slapped out of me. Ha ha ha. What are you doing? Are you licking me? Shh, just let it happen. Okay, so February 13th, so still the same day at 4.41 p.m. So supposedly his time card shows that he clocked in at 4.55 a.m. and clocked out at 2.45 p.m. So like I said, um, they don't know. There's a possibility he had somebody clock him out. They never bothered looking at the camera to see if his truck was seen coming and leaving. Or checking with his employees or the people that he works with. But anyway, so if he gets off at 2.45, yeah. So he doesn't go to the gym till 4, what, 4.41? So, yeah, 4.41 p.m. So that gives him two hours before he's at the gym. That is, of course, if he was there at work till 2.45. So if he, you know, his alibi, if he did indeed go to work, then he would have came here after work. And woohoo, hitting it hard at the 24 7. And the theory of uh, Richard Allen's defense is true, then he would have came here after the murders. Now, that's just allegedly, we're just talking about the theory that the defense put out there. Um, and then, okay, can I ask a question? For these Facebook accounts, um, or for these Facebook locations, can you like uh what is the word for it? basically can you alter that like let's say it says he's in logan's port at what 451 or whatever or whatever time that said for something can he make it say that and it's not true is that easy to alter does anybody know and another thing i wanted to point out because a lot of people are talking about how um that he can't be bridge guy because he had a big beard okay at the time, because if you look at the post, he he does a post, which we'll see around that time where he has like a bigger beard, right? Um, but just because he posts something a certain day doesn't mean that that's a picture from that day. So I know that's for sure true. I mean, you could post a picture from last year and, and it doesn't mean and then post it a day and it doesn't mean that that's a picture from that day. You know what I'm saying? So. Does that 100% mean that that's what he looked like at the time? I No, I don't think we could say that for sure because he, that could have been from any day. Um, but let's say it is. Let's say he did have a big beard at that time. Well, in the defense's theory, they're talking about multiple people. So that doesn't mean that he is bridge guy. He could, you know what I'm saying? One of the other guys could be bridge guy. He He could be not bridge guy, if that makes sense. So... Yeah, it doesn't mean he's bridge guys because actually, but like I said, this goes back to the same reasoning. So if you see some videos of him around that time, he's a lot more, he's a lot thicker. He doesn't even have the body type of bridge guy. But like I said, once again, it doesn't mean because it's posted that day that that is him that day. But because there are times where he, you know, looks thinner. But, uh, but regardless, like I said, he doesn't have to be bridge guy. Somebody else could be, Richard could still be bridge guy. and. He could be, you know, if he helped. I mean, you just don't know. But um, does anybody know, though? Can you alter the dates? Like wh how I'm showing you the dates and it shows the date and the location. Can you alter that? Does anybody know? Is it easy? Because I'm guessing he's probably not like this huge computer guy that could get in and hack things and be able to do it in that way. So is it something like a lot of people could do? Does anybody know? Because, you yeah, you can tag wherever you want. Really? So, dude, he could just tag and say, and, and and basically pick a location where, oh, shoot, then that doesn't mean crap. Then we don't know if he, like, yeah, then we wouldn't know if he's even in Logansport at that time. Dang. I get it. I get it. That makes sense. So you could actually just 
say like, okay, I'm, I'm here right now, but I want to say I'm in um, uh, Pittsburgh right now. I could point, I could pick like a, a place in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and tag it and say, Oh, I'm here. Yay. And then it <laughs> basically says I'm in Pittsburgh. It looks like it. Dang. Then that doesn't mean this whole stuff doesn't mean crap. Okay. I'm just curious. Yes. That's what makes me mad too, Paul. That angers me so much as far as also like Liggett trying to change the witnesses accounts and the witnesses descriptions and that kind of stuff. And, Oh, that stuff, that's huge too, in my opinion. I, I, um, and that's the thing. Think about this. Don't you guys remember when this all came out where they're like, you know, recently when they arrested Richard and then it came out that somebody, that she, uh, one of the witnesses saw a man bloody. Didn't, didn't you guys think, wait a minute. Cause that was my reaction was thinking, wow, I don't remember reading any witness seeing a, a bloody guy. I remember somebody saying they saw a muddy guy. And that always confused me because I'm like, what? It's like, I never heard anybody seeing somebody bloody. And then I was like, mind blown. Like, wow, somebody saw somebody bloody. Like, why didn't I hear about this before? I always heard muddy. So that, uh, yeah, I mean, I do. I think that they changed some of the stuff and the color of the car, the make of the car, the whole thing. We, we looked up with the, the uh, Ford Comet looks way different than a freaking Ford Focus. Very different because a Ford Comet is where really a unique car. Also saying that the car wasn't black. Like all of that stuff is just so messed up. Oh, anyway. 3.13 a.m. He goes back that late that night to work out. Oh, yeah. So when he went at 4.41 p.m., he said, woohoo, hitting it hard. And then at 3, what did I say? 3.13 a.m. Oh, yeah. Got a good morning workout in. Awesome. 4.07 a.m. He does the February 14th little thing he posts daily, which February 14th is justice, duty, will. Today's message. Today is a day to focus your energy towards what you know is right. Pull on your inner warrior to guide and, and encourage you. This room can help you succeed in a personal endeavor, but only if your intention is aligned with your highest truth. If there is something you have been feeling guilty about, today is the day to do the honorable thing. Interpretation is this is the warrior rune. It represents both the physical and spiritual warrior archetypes. Also associated with nationality and analysis, it can signify something achievement. And then, um, let me be the first one to say F Valentine's Day. So this is 4.10 a.m. So it doesn't look like he slept yet. Now remember, this is basically the night after the murder leading into, you know, the next day when they I wasn't thinking he was at work at that. Well, supposedly at work at that time. Um, well, wait, 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 hold on. February. Yeah. February 14th. No, no, that would have been the day before. Does anybody know if he was working the day after? Because is this the type where he's like that job where he, you're working every day or, you know, like, you know, so many days in, the, in a row and then you get a couple of days off. Maybe I don't know. But the rumor or people are saying how he lost his job shortly after that. I don't know. And I, I never was able to get a date of when he lost his job. And then he, you know, moved out of his parents' house, I guess, shortly after that. And then he got that new truck shortly after that. And then he got a new girlfriend, which we'll go over to. Um, I don't know when that's coming. I think in, in May or something, um, he gets a girlfriend. So a lot of life changes that they always say look for big life changes um, after a murder. Usually it's like bad ones. End up finding Abby and Libby in the afternoon. But yeah, he has heart feeling heartbroken. And then uh, 5.50 a.m. So hold on a second. I want to see because this one. Yeah, he goes to the gym at 3.13 a.m. And then goes back at 5.50 so two and a half hours later, he goes back to the gym. And this is like in the middle of the night. Wow. He says, well, I probably won't get anybody to work out with me at 2 a.m., but I am hooked. My energy and testosterone is through the roof right now. So this is the post that the defense was talking about. Why was he so high energy? And why did he say and feel like his testosterone was through the roof? And the fact about him going to the gym like 
twice within a few hours. And then at 5.54 a.m., he says, I hear you're supposed to send people hearts and kittens on Valentine's Day. You're welcome. So he has real freaking hearts with the kittens. And then he says, okay, here's my word of inspiration for today. Today is Thursday, Tuesday. I also drew the rune Taiwas in galaxy runes. All this past weekend and the beginning of this week, I've been drawing runes that have to do with giving up the baggage in my life or cutting away the old. What I believe the gods are trying to tell me is sometimes in our lives, we have to make sacrifices and it hurts. But like the gods made sacrifices to become who they were, so must we. Like a butterfly has to shed its cocoon to become that butterfly, so must we soldier through our hardships to become better. Now, if you read, like, I know if you just, like, read that for what it is, you would think making sacrifices is, like, sacrificing things that you want for something. You know what I'm saying? Like what the typical use of that word is in that type of context. But think about his beliefs, you know, with the whole Odinism and the rituals and stuff. And then kind of look at it and it, you could give it a whole different meaning uh, as far as sacrifices. So he says, what I believe the gods are trying to tell me is sometimes in our lives we have to make sacrifices. And the kind of gods he is worshiping, it's... You sacrifice usually living things to these gods. So could he possibly be talking in some kind of code? It wouldn't even be code, but like you'd have to kind of like read in between the lines. And he's, he's actually talking about like making real sacrifices. I mean, I know it might be way off, but um, this is the day after the murder. The gods are trying to tell me sometimes in our lives we have to make sacrifices is what he says right there and he's talking about making sacrifices and how it hurts but god's made sacrifices to become who they were and remember the kind of gods he's worshiping and the sacrifices that is important and that those gods in that religion or those beliefs they make sacrifices to their gods that's a part of it like human sacrifices so i don't know i mean it's kind of it's just kind of weird timing and and also the fact that he says all weekend he was making runes okay and then he uses the word cutting away the old that choice of words is kind of interesting and then of course it being february 14th the day after the murder was committed at 609 a.m they still had not found the girls and then relating it to how he's talking about you have to make sacrifices and stuff like that it's just interesting i mean what do you guys make out of that and then, um, I know I read this on my last slide, but we'll read it again. So he says, uh, you know, February 14th. So this would be, let me see what time. This is 6.27 p.m. So yeah, this is after they would already have found them. So he says, Logan, which Logan is, was dating Abby at the time. He says, I know you're upset. Keep your head up. Your dad is here. He has a picture of the bridge. Well, it's probably an article. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he links this. Foul play suspected after bodies found along Deer Creek and Delphi. Vigil held. So they're located at 12.15 p.m. Tuesday, about a half a mile upstream from Monon High Bridge area. Back here. So Brad says, Brad says one of them was his girlfriend. Catherine says, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Such a tragic thing. Michael says, sorry for the loss. Seema says, sad condolences to you and your kin. Amanda says, that's awful. Tim says, find the scum. Chris says, Brad, I am so sorry. Please send your son my condolences, sending him strength. Chucky says, I am very sorry to hear this. I'll be speaking with the, I'll be speaking with the All Father this evening for the girls' conductance to a better place and honor and for your son and your family. Might have to do a healing for the community as well. Kim says, I'm so sorry to hear this. Condolences to your son and you, to the girls' families. I am heartbroken by this. Shannon says, oh no, I'm so sorry. Michael says, who do you think did this? And then, wow, and then back at 7 p.m. again. So basically three workouts in one day. Because one was at 3, one or like 3 something, one was at 5 something a.m. in the morning. And then 7 p.m. I know that's out way later, but still, wow. So wait, this was 6 p.m.? Okay, hold on, I want to see if there's... I guess he could have slept anywhere from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. But did he go to work?
work that day? I don't know if you had to work. What do you got time to sleep? Yeah, and then the gym again at 3. So the next day at 3.18 p.m. Bill Daly and I are getting effing pumped. And then here's the post that the it was in the documents released by Richard Allen's defense. It talks about how February 17th, which would be four. Well, it'd be four days after the murder, three days after they found him. He posts, your real ones don't judge or ask you a bunch of questions. They help you move the body and never speak of it again. That is kind of messed up to post that a few days after your son's girlfriend was murdered. So Richard Allen's lawyers bring up how if their theory is correct, then, well, regardless, somebody, they moved, whoever took part in this moved Abby and Libby's body because where their bodies were wasn't where they were killed because they could tell with the blood and stuff. There wasn't that much blood in that area and there was blood in another area. So the bodies were moved after they were killed. So if, uh, you know, their theory is true and it was a group of them, then there would be, you know, the friends would be helping move the bodies. It's just so crazy that he posted that. And then he says, so February 17th. And then later on that day, this one was posted at 7.11 a.m. This is moving the bodies. And then at 4.39 p.m., he says, I had to take Logan to Delphi. This should be fun. Shannon says, hope he's doing okay is in my thoughts. Brenda says, after all that's happened there, why do you take him? Did he know the girls? I sure hope Logan is okay. And Brad says, had to. His girlfriend was one of the girls. I sure didn't do it because I wanted to. Brenda says, I bet. I feel bad for him too and pray he gets the help he needs to get through this. And then February 18th at 5 42 p.m. He's in Delphi. Says here at the viewing, the line is long. Logan is all upset. So he's at the viewing for the girls. Catherine says, I can't imagine what he's going through. Keep watch over him. He will need his dad. And Melanie says, sending hugs and prayers. Chris says, sending thoughts and condenses to your son. Probably condolences. Tim says, God bless. Roger says, I'm sorry. Logan is going through all this. And then February 19th, 6 a.m. Which Nordic God are you? Okay, so. So, February 29th, 2017. Logansport, Indiana. Says, feeling kind of blah today. Stayed home and fixed some corned beef, hash, and eggs. Yum. And he takes a picture of his gun. It looks like, is that a knife or a torch? And then the corned beef, hash, and eggs. But he had to have the gun in there with whatever. Like I said, I think that's a torch. But anyway, Brenda says, maybe you've been over. I know that's making me mad. That's in there that I'm such an idiot. <laughs> It does look like one because they used to make torches. I mean, I've seen all kinds of different looking torches. And I don't know why I thought that was one. But anyway, okay. How's everybody doing? I'm gonna um so I'm gonna finish the Brad and maybe I I'll I'll go to where I read Elvis's first response. I think the second response is at the end of my, me going through Elvis. Um, and then I'll read that article because I have to read parts of the, that that um document I was talking about. It's it looks like it's gonna be interesting doing it at the gym or just dehydrated and not eating healthy did you just take this pic to show off your gun lol brad says well i do have a fetish for my gun lol and brenda says i bet you do and brad says i think sleep is my big issue and brenda says it could be we all need sleep to nourish our bodies too and trevor says well at least you're getting your daily supplement of lead in the morning and brad says yes my maggie is sweet Tim says, that's a well-balanced breakfast. D. Samir says, ew, striker fire. And Catherine says, did you feel a need to shoot your breakfast? Yinga says, that is exactly what I was wondering. And Angela shows like a squirt gun or play gun or toy gun or whatever. Okay, so March 1st, 2017 says, playing hooky again. Today, just not feeling it. And then that same day, he posts a picture of his new truck and says, badass little truck. But remember, this is only a couple weeks after the murder. He's not feeling good, playing hooky, well, not f feeling like going into work. And then he gets a new car, a new truck. March 18th, 2017, Brad is with Levi W. Holder, which is his son, in Logansport, Indiana. Says, had a good day. Levi is now a Freemason. I am totally exhausted as well as Levi. 
Brad Holder is with Levi Holder at Tipton Lodge, number 33, Free and Accepted Masons, Logansport, Indiana. Good times. Levi is about to embark on his journey. So I kind of have mixed feelings about how I feel about the Freemasons. Because I know there's a lot of good, good people, good men in there. But I also know there's a lot of evil people in there that use the, their power for evil things. So it just makes me kind of leery when I hear somebody is a Freemason. Okay, so March 21st, 2017, big heathen study group right here with Brad Sears and four others. Eric says, what's the restaurant called? Anna says, hmm. So there's Brad and then there's Logan right there. So that would have been, what, a month after the murders? So he was, remember, he was Abby's boyfriend. April 2nd, 2017, it says, been catching up on my reading today. A few other books as well. Not really a lazy day because I'm doing something that's needed, but not very physical. It's called Rice it? oh, Rites of Odin, and then Edda, and then Norse Magic. April 4th, 2017, although I'm doing well lately, I'm getting burned out on a lot of shit. I think I'm fixing to make some changes. I need to set up some personal goals, short-term and long-term. One thing I figured out about myself is my goals are always centered around helping people. And although I love doing this, I do believe that I need to do some things for me. I'm going to take a few days and think about things. Zeke says, that's always good to do, brother. Take some needed rest and time for yourself, and it will get better, man. And Tosir says, always good advice. If you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to help others. And Angela has, like, the fist bumping. And Yinga Auden's daughter says, so cool. I am in a similar place, actually. At first, it felt kind of, well, naked. Vulnerable, if you can believe it. Helping others was, I felt, a worthy purpose. You know what I did? I acted as if I were a company of one and I wrote for myself a mission statement. Look up mission statement and find a definition you resonate with and try and write one. It's usually no longer than a very short paragraph and sometimes as short as one sentence. The shorter and the simpler, the better I found. Within it, state who you see perhaps, what you value, then a kind of, therefore I'm going to do this thing, whatever it is, because it is my purpose. That was so freaking hard for me. I invented cuss words. F tardaliciously insane was, I don't know where the rest of it is. I didn't get it, so I'm just going to skip that. April 8th, 2017, Brad Holders with Ryan Smith at Club Noctificant. Woo, partying, having fun. April 17th, 2017, Indiana. Every once in a while, we have to draw a line in the sand. Here's my line. I have taken an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I am an American heathen. I believe in the old gods. Shoot, I think I forgot to, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, bleep out that P word, which I know that's on the list of uh, unsuitable words. So I'm going to skip through, but you see what it says. So those are the things that he hates. Right? Is that what he said? Wait, hold on. Things I hate. Yeah. And it says, so if you can handle my beliefs and you're not one of the things I hate, we will get along just fine. Okay, so let me skip to, and I'm going to read, I'm going to think I'm going to read that article now. Well, let me just finish this post. Um, yeah, people just saying, you already know where I stand. Oh, that's what I want to say. Look, David Allen. Huh, Richard Allen. So. Is there some kind of connection? I don't know. I have yet to find it, but um, there is a guy that says, you are named David Allen, says, you already know I stand with you. You know, and I know Allen's a common last name, but, you know, I got to see where he's from. Because let's say it's somebody that's from the same area. We know, I mean, well, no, because he's not actually from Delphi, but um, talking about Brad, but I'm thinking... If it's still in the same type area, like there's probably, there's a possibility maybe they're related. I don't know. I just wonder if the defense is going to be able to find a connection. Oh, no, they're not going to want to find a connection because they're trying to say that, you know, Alan's not involved, Richard. So I don't know. I'm going to have to, I'm going to look into that to see if I can, because 
I'm still not like hundred percent. Then Richard has nothing to do with it. I don't know. This just creates a lot of doubt in my head. Um, but I still think there's a possibility that Richard can be a part of it, that he might still be a part of it. I don't know. Um, oh, okay, Patty. So you looked into like his family tree and stuff. It's very common. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it does. I think it, it, yeah, it does seem like it'd be a common one. Okay. So let me get to the part. Uh, I'll, oh, hold on. Let me do this one, one last post and I'm going to read part of that article. Er, I keep going too far. So 120, it's hard to, there we go. Let's do that. All the fun shit happens somewhere else. I want to beat the shit out of some antifa. All righty. Well, yeah, that's F A G S. So he's saying he wants to beat him up. So he's saying, "Well, how come all the fun stuff happens uh, somewhere else?" Not very nice. Lots of Berkeley Dang. riots. And then he links a YouTube video. It looks like it says "Uproars Berkeley Riots." Given all praises and honor and glory and thanks, much love to my power. And uh, I try to click on it, but the video has been removed. Okay, on April 18th, 2017, he posts doing my homework, Tanya Threat. And he's got some runes there. It looks like S, F, X. So S to the 16th, F to the 4th, X to the 7th, maybe. H. Uh, so it says S, Sun, S. I have to zoom in. Okay, so it says S, Sun, S, Life Force, Clarity understanding or understands f god a communication inspiration ancestors x gift or g maybe to give to receive to share organize h hail h disruption disrupt any unresolved matters past disruption unresolved matters past I think that's what it says. That N or Y. Like, it doesn't look like an N after disrupt, like at the last uh, letter in disruption. It looks like a Y, which doesn't make sense for it to be disruption then. So it should be an N, and then it would be disruption unresolved. And then this is from April, April 19th, 2017. Does anybody know what so those A symbols? month and like six days after the murder. A bunch of runes don't know what they mean if anybody could help me out on that i haven't looked into trying to understand what these runes mean especially together in a sentence no clue well i take that back i have looked at them singly and the ones that they supposedly said were at the scene i was trying to i've been trying to figure those out but as far as them being like all listed on a piece of paper like that i have no clue does anybody so know? april okay so he's really you know, which isn't a, that's a good thing. He's against the child predator. So that's, that's good. All right. I'm going to read a part of this article real quick or this uh, thing that was in the group. Hold on one second. Remove this. We'll finish watching that. Cause then this, the whole broad holder part's almost over. And then we, I get into all this. Okay. This. So, finish. oh, it's going to be not on. Dang it. I swear my computer suck, guys. <laughs> Why can't I just, Oh, I'm going to have to just share it a different way. I'm so sick of how it limits me, but I just keep putting it out. I'm the type that likes to, and I never used to be that way, but I think I'm turning more into my dad where I like, I have to make sure I get the use out of anything I have. Like, you know what I'm saying? I want to get like full use out of it. Okay. Oh, no. Angle. Wait one second. Or no. Oh, dang. Hopefully that'll work. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Okay, I think I got it to work. All right. Um. Okay, I want to read this real quick for you. Looks like it's going to be interesting. All right, here we go. Okay. So it's um the first one. I want to read this one actually first. I'm not praying. I don't know. Read the whole thing, but how many pages is it? So Supreme. Wait, this is file nine eighteen.
Wow, I didn't realize it was filed with the Carroll Carroll Circuit Court, Carroll County, Indiana. Okay. How many of you guys have seen it? So filed 9-18-2023 at 2.06 a.m. Dang. Okay, hold on. Let me try to make this a little bit bigger. And we'll read some of it. This could be interesting. Huh. Okay. So the title is... Oh, wait, wait. That's what... Oh, hold on. AK, you said that's what the rune paper spelled out. What did it spell out? Just protection? The whole thing is just protect protection? I don't know. All those letters in a row? Huh. How many of you have read these documents? Okay, haven't seen. Okay. So, correctional officials... Um, hold on. Correction. Correctional officials around the country struggle with a court ruling accommodating Odinism, sometimes uh, racist religion. Why is my phone? It should be on silent and it's making noise. Okay. Clarification. This story originally contained a description of the litigation brought by a group of plaintiffs, including several members of the Caucasian cartel prison gang. It never intended to suggest that the Asatru adherent who originally filed the case was a member of the Caucasian cartel or any other gang. Each month, Laura Owen leaves her home in Arkansas and drives to prisons as far away as Texas, Kentucky, Texas and Kentucky were. She is paid to teach inmates the rituals of a Norse pagan religion known as Odinism or Asatru. Owen, who heads a support group, called the Prison Affairs Bureau of the Odinic Rite. So that's the group that she uh, she heads. Says many inmates she meets have suffered for their beliefs. Most of the guys you encounter inside will have spent time in the hole and been labeled a security threat just for being Odinists, Odinist, she writes. They have fought to be who they are. As practiced by Owen, Owen and other uh, others outside prison, Odinism tends to be a benign form of paganism tolerant of others and close to nature. Behind the walls, however, it is likely to take on a more sinister cast. Many prisoner wardens have long regarded Odinism as the religious arm of white. I'm not going to say that works. I'm pretty sure that's a oh, uh, prison gangs. The U.S. Supreme Court has nonetheless ruled that Odinist inmates have certain rights that prison must recognize. So while a decade ago, Pagan volunteer like Owen would have been dismissed as a cook or, at worst, a gang liaison. Odinist inmates today can wear the Thor's hammer pendants under their jumpsuits and request visits from outside leaders. The Supreme Court ruling in 2005 involved a case brought by a band of Satanist, Odinist, and white Church of Jesus Christ Christian inmates, including some who are serving time for racially motivated killings. The justices ruled that the prisons must accommodate these unusual faiths. Four years and several inmate lawsuits later, more than 15 state prisons now recruit non-inmate Odinists to, to develop policy, write scripts for rituals, and lead ceremonies behind bars. Along with this new wave of religious rights has come a raft of litigation from inmates seeking to build fire pits in their cells. From convicted hate crime perpetrators joining class action lawsuits to take 60 Odinist holiday were off 60 Odinist holidays off work. And from white I'm trying to think of a code word we could say instead of that. Um anyway, demanding the right to read literature, exhorting exhorting uh followers to wage wars of race purification. As security screened, non-racist Asatru volunteers like Owen stream into the system. They face suspicious suspicious or sorry suspicion from prison chaplains in competition from better established racist odinist groups with clout among inmates the devil's advocate asatru and odinism have had inmates adhere since the mid 1980s among believers asatru is sometimes used interchangeably interchangeably with odinism and at other times it designates an icelandic sect wait hold on okay in an icelandic sect that venerates a separate family of gods. While some prisoners have embraced a non-racial Asatru as a faith whose warriors, 
whose warrior ethos speaks to them in a hostile environment, white nationalist inmates have imported a Nordic racial paganism paganism from the racist right subculture of the early 1900s. Both types of inmates got a boost from the 2005 U.S. Supreme Court case Cutter v. Wilkinson, brought by incarcerated Asa Truers, Satanists, Wiccans, and adherents of the Aryan Nation Church who sought the right to worship in a group, wear religious medallions, and read literature from their faith. An Ohio prison had denied the request, arguing that their religions was just a front for gang activity. The inmates filed the original case in 2000, only months after President Bill Clinton signed into law a Religious Land Use and Institutionalized Person Act, which placed prison, well, which placed prisons that restrict a religious expression under heavy legal scrutiny. So the Ohio inmates' violence and racism were so objectionable, however, that in 2005, the Department of Just- Justice under President Bush which otherwise supported it, urged the court to take a different case on the same issue. Um, Let's see. The plaintiff in one suit was convicted for conspiring to bomb the school attended by the daughter of a judge presiding over a desecration, desegregation case. Wow. Um, in the that most plaintiffs in a second suit have documented affiliations with prison gangs, including the Aryan Brotherhood, KKK, the skinhead groups, and several. Okay, let's see. Ruled in favor of the inmates, noting that for more than a decade, decade, the Federal Bureau of Prisons has managed the largest correctional system in the nation under the same heightened security standard as RLUIPA without compromising prison security, public safety, or the Constitution. Okay. Fifteen states allow some form of group of Asatru or Odinist worship. Okay. So I thought it was going to go a different route with that, but... One chilling example of Odinism in a prison gone haywire is the case of Virginia of Michael Lenz. In Virginia, a Michael Lenz, a self-described high priest of Asatru. In 2000, he and five Asatru inmates met around a makeshift altar for a blot. Oh, this is what you guys were talking about, a blot, in which followers make an offering of food and drink to the gods. As Lenz would later testify, he became convinced that inmate Brent Parker was not taking the ceremony seriously and had to die to protect the honor of the gods. Lenz and another inmate, Jeffrey Remington, stabbed Parker 68 times with a makeshift knife. Lenz was executed for the murder in 2006. Remington committed unalive, unalive in, in 2004 while on death row. Um, this is Odinism, Odinism's most violent prison strain was cooked up in Colorado's Supermax cell. Um, after life for inmate David Lane, drove a getaway car for the order. So it's Aryan. Let's see if there's anything else. So what is the conclusion of why they... Uh, where does it put this? We're not looking for this. Okay, let me see the other one. The other one is this that they posted in the group. So this is the same thing. It was it was a uh, filed the Carroll County Circuit new brand of racist Odinist religions on the march. Um, they like the uh, neo paganism related to Odinism spreads among the white. Okay, so hunting Norsemen and their white Aryan folks. Yeah, Asa True leaders have opened prison ministries in at least five states. And their many jailed followers are heavily white. Um, David Lane has been writing, influencing many to adopt his racist interpretations. Uh, so another one that confessed to the murder of a man. Let's see if there's anything. Okay, so
I'm going to see if, like, what is the, what is the a result? Like, what are they trying to gain? I mean, why are, why are they filing this? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what their uh, goal is with this. What's their intention? It's interesting. Okay, I'm going to continue my uh, video. Is there anything that, honestly, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything that we should read on this. Let's see, open letter. Study practice ver variant of Odianism. Three hundred inmates have become adherents. Many are violent white. Yeah. So, like I said, there's some that are racist and then some that aren't. But it seems like me a lot of them. Looks like they are the ones that are like joining like the gangs and stuff. It seems like they are uh, violent and racist, but I'm sure there are some that like like the you know the um, learning about that stuff and and being a part of it, but they aren't. But seems like a lot are and and what he was involved what they were involved with hundred for sure Patrick Westfall I mean come on he was in the the white sup sup I'll call him sup wait there are uh some video there are some creators that have like code words for all the words that we're not allowed to say that they have like different alternate words that they use as like code words for it and I wonder if they have one for that or we can make up our own because at least studying this case, that word, we're going to have to say it a lot. I'm trying to think of what word we could use in the place of it. But anyway, okay, I'm going to continue mine. And yeah, I know, Jen, it makes no sense. 2017, he's got this post that says stop child predators. Kevin says, that look when you walk in a room and there sits Chris Hansen. And Brad says, no, this is the look. And me saying Chris Hansen is my hero. And Brad says, the top look is the look I'm giving right before I chop a chomo's nuts off. LOL. And here's that same picture. So April 21st, 2017. No, this is the look. And me saying Chris Hansen is my hero. So it's the post that I was just reading. So April 28th, 2017 in Indiana, he says, LOL. So lately I've had people asking me if I was Muslim or when I take my hat off saying I look like a, a side bomber. I think I might be trimming the beard to a goatee. Donna says, it would look great. Do it and it can grow back. And John says, same reason I did. And Tom says, never. Who am I shitting? I have to shave on Monday so I don't show up to drill with a beard tan line. LOL. Benjamin says, I get called ISIS all the time, lol, but mostly the army guys I hang out with. Chucky says, I know a lot of Asa Truer who insist on wearing a beard as a sign of their troth. I never saw that as a mandatory sign of troth to the gods. We show our troth to the gods by living and talking with them and upholding the noble virtues. I don't wear a beard mainly because I hate the feeling of grease and crumbs in it after eating my favorite delicacy, Kentucky Fried Chicken Original Recipe. And Tom says, couldn't agree more with your statement about troth. Shannon says, just grow your hair out too and dress in heavy metal shirts. Problem solved. Galen says, I get caught Amish all the time, but never Muslim. LOL. And Mila laughs and Mila says, you just have to keep it trimmed. Know how to maintain a shape to it. Or if you don't know how, then go to a barbershop or salon and ask them to shape it up. Usually that means taking in the sides a little bit and making a clean line around from ear to ear. There is no reason a beard has to look like it just came from the jungle. Take care of it. The ladies and men appreciate a well-designed and kept up beard. Brenda says, I agree. And men look more muscling. You might feel better too. New look. And Yinga says, don't do it. And Brad says... Don't worry, I'm not. I got the hole if wanted to date a woman. I would speech. So she kind of put me in my place. Good for her. My kind of woman. And then Shannon says, good deal. So he says, interesting. I draw Gibo two days in a row. And I draw this bind ruin on myself. Not realizing that it already has a meaning. Pretty cool shit happens we can do nothing about. Okay, and then when you click on it, it's 
phonetically fleece passes diphthong and its shape is similar to rune hagel eeyore indicates sea animals initially this rune may be linked with beavers animals that once existed but in the 8th century disappeared in britain and with mythical animals known in tradition obshin duevas duo ropes goy culture as the world's serpent in Nordic mythology, this creature is known under the name Jormungandr, the serpent so big that upholstered in the sea, on all sides surrounded Midgard, capable of mouse to catch its own tail. Yeah, that's the symbol of the uh, snake eating its own tail. Like, that has a lot of, uh, like, more, I would say, sinister meanings. Like, I forget, I remember studying some of that. Um, the serpent eating its own tail. But anyway, think about this. So he posted where he put his hand up and written on it said, Proud Serpent. And then this is the symbol that was made out of sticks on Abby. And then the one, not even a month after the murder, he draws on his hand. And now he has it and says that he drew it twice. And he's talking about it. And now it relates to a serpent, which isn't good. And like I said, he said he was a serpent. It's kind of weird. Let's see what else it says. At the mystical level, Eeyore embodies, similar to the dual nature, animal amphibian, capable of living both in water and on land, all the inherent duality of things, explained on the basis of the Nordic myth of the world serpent, shown in the Torah as an attempt crime through law of equilibrium in the universe, something which is not able to bring even a god, not violating the balance of power in it, and not plunging into chaos. As dangerous represented, Eeyore Force recognized essential components of life. Main content of runes Eeyore is to indicate that the attempt to delete one of the polar opposite of that originally doomed to failure. Oh yeah, and then here's where he does that. So he posts... I figured out how to do the time. I remember on the uh, live, I was like, yeah, you can't get the time. But yeah, you just put your mouse over it. So this is 8.06 a.m. when he does this symbol. And then when he draws it on his hand and posts, well, I don't know when he draws it, but he posts with it drawn on his hand, 5.37 a.m. So like over two hours later, he posts this symbol, the meaning of it. Oh, it's called a Euroboros. The Euroboros is an ancient symbol depicting a serpent or dragon eating its own tail. The Euroboros entered Western tradition via ancient, via ancient Egyptian iconography and Greek magical tradition. It was a symbol of Gnosticism and Hermeticism, and notably in alchemy. So here it says, what is the serpent eating its tail mean? A circular symbol that depicts a snake or dragon devouring its own tail and that is used especially to represent the eternal cycle of destruction and rebirth. Usually Euroboros, or less commonly Euroboros, so you can either spell it with the, the O-U or just with the U, something such as a never-ending cycle that is likened to or suggestive of the Euroboros symbol. So yes, it's all coming back to me. Now I'm remembering. So it's not really a bad thing at all. It's, uh... Very interesting way to explain, like, I remember learning about that in philosophy, too. We talked about that in philosophy. That played a role in um, our philosophy class that I took in college. Because it's like, it explains life. Well, life and death. You could go really deep with the Euroboros. So, May 5th, 2017, in Indiana, Brad says he's feeling pissed off. Okay, I have a Facebook stalker that has accused me, my son, and is now, since my story checks out, accusing my friends of killing Abigail Williams and Liberty German. My son was totally devastated and heartbroken that his girlfriend had been murdered. Besides their families, there is probably no one that wants to see their killer brought to justice more than I do. Maybe since you're pointing fingers, you are the one who did this, you sick F. My suggestion to you is that you that if you did this, you turn yourself in because I know some pretty mean folk that don't like chomos. David says, damn. Richard says, let me know, brother. I will be here in a heartbeat if someone thoughts need readjusted. Jamie says, oh, my damn. Jamie says, I just read about them getting killed. I'm praying for the families and for your son along with all their friends. That's horrible. Whoever is doing this shit is just as bad as the killer. It's not funny to use the tragedy to fool or scam people. 
My heart goes out to all who is affected by this awful tragedy. Anna says that is insane. Jeez. John says, sorry to hear about this. He must be devastated. Donna says, so your son was Abby's boyfriend, yet her mother says she had no relations with any boy. Very, very odd. So it has been said she was pregnant. Was it your son who got her pregnant? What is the stalker's name? The problem, then Brad says, the problem using not friends with any of them. And when I do narrow it down to a person, it usually, it's usually a fake account. Now that doesn't surprise me at all. People have all kinds of balls when they're sitting behind a computer screen, huh? Yes, delete and report. Let me know what you need. May 8th, 2017. Sometimes it's better to be alone. May 8th, 2017. Sometimes Odin brings you to a dark place to teach us a lesson. I was in a dark place this past weekend. I learned a serious lesson. I learned that feeling sorry for oneself doesn't help a bit. I learned that relationships don't always go the way we want them to. I learned that I need to read the Havel more and study a lot more. And Catherine says, you need more beer yoga. Donna says, me too, Brad. I'm guilty of the same thing. Brenda says, I try not to go there and it's not about marriage, a relationship or friendship. It's hard being alone and terminally ill, but could live years. I blame myself a lot. And Yinga says, all good things, my friend. May 9th, 2017, hail Tyr Tyrell, God of war, God of justice and sacrifice. Thank you for the sacrifices made and the justice served. wonder what justice served or what sacrifices. May 10th, 2017, this is awesome. The All-Father chose me for a reason. It's been a hard road because Odin's children have the most scars. So May 10th, 2013, so 10 years ago in Logansport, Indiana, says, okay, I became a true about two years ago. I'm pretty new at this. My father is a Christian minister. If I would have followed his footsteps, I'd be fourth generation minister. Why Asa true, you ask? Well, that's a long story. Let's say I had a near-death experience about 12 years ago. Father Odin appeared to me. Not Jesus, not Jehovah, Odin. He has appeared to me several times afterwards also. This is my story in rough form. So 10 years ago, he said he joined two years ago. Well, he became Asa true two years ago. So he's been one for like 12 years now, okay. And then May 10th, 2017, been thinking about this guy a lot lately. It's Vedar Norse mythology for smart people. May 11th, 2017, the picture looks like a ritual. Hail Thor, May 11th, 2017, bunch of candles and some kind of ritual. There's that sledgehammer, yeah. Oh, hell yeah, he's got a Thor frisbee. Hail the gods, May 12th, 2017. He's got one rune, it looks like an M or E, I don't know. May 12th, 2017. Hail Fricka, Freya, and Freyer. Got matchsticks, matches, candles, um, a cup, beer, that sledgehammer. May 15th, 2017. In a relationship, three months after the murder, he gets in a relationship. And Brad, he puts uh, some kiss, it, kiss faces. Bradley said, congrats to you both. Justin says, congrats. Richard said, congrats. Benjamin, up bro. Glad you're happy. Miss M Misa Misa says, congrats. Brittany says, so happy for you guys. So all happy for him. So May 17th, he says, oh yeah, happy Woden's Day, everyone. I'm excited. I get to hang out with my girl Vivian tonight. Woohoo. So I click on her. Let's see who Vivian, his girlfriend is at the time. And it's her. Yeah, Vivian. Oh, man, these two look like, like sisters, right? Oh, yeah, with your sisters. Yeah, I was going to say, man. So May 16, he says, Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Vivian Moss, my beautiful queen. Yeah, I got issues, and one of them is how bad I need you. So May 20th, 2017 in Indiana, Brad says, This is to all you trolls out there. I was at work the day that all this took place. Not that I owe any of you anything, but I'm pretty much an open book. Me or my son would never do something like this. If I figure out who you are, I will seek legal action. So keep talking shit. I mean, I'm almost leaning more towards, like, Patrick. Like, maybe Brad doesn't have anything to do with it. Maybe it's Patrick Westfall and 
the boys, or maybe it's just another group of them. I don't know. Some of his responses make me think, yeah, like he's legit, like he's doesn't have anything to do with it, but uh, maybe it's the other guys, maybe it's some other group of guys. <sighs> what do you guys think? Just hard to ignore all the evidence that Alan's defense says is supposedly in the police reports. So hopefully they are not leading us on and making like the whole freaking public think one thing and then they don't have crap and it's not even what it appears what they're making it out to be. Yes, this is very confusing. We need to sort this out. She was dating Logan Holder. He is 16. His dad's Facebook page is disturbing. Bryden is just a good friend of both the girls. He and Abby used to date at some point, but they remain good friends. He was also friends with Libby. Somebody fill me in. Who's Bryden? This is Vigilante on May 17th, 2017 at 1236 p.m. Says this makes sense concerning Bryden, his age, affiliation with both families, and the past relationship. As far as pregnancies, this needs confirmed, not just with Abby, but concerning both girls. If there is any, and it just cuts off right there. I showed him Mr. X and he told me it's not his guy. Fellow reader 111 on May 18th, 2017 at 6.45 a.m., Hello all, I'm a new commenter, but I have been reading this page frequently on updates on this case since I am a resident in northern Indiana. I wanted to ask you, Robert, if you have looked into Abby's boyfriend, Logan Holder's father. I find it very interesting, and I see you mention the occult frequently. Logan Holder's father is a pagan worshiper, Odinism, who worships the northern and Germanic gods. I don't know if you have seen his Facebook page, but this dude is a straight freak. He t takes creepy pictures and he talks about sacrifice on his page. I thought what was especially sketchy though was when you go to his page, his pictures in between late January and all of February are blocked off dates and times posted, but he also took a picture of an injured ankle around the time of the murders. Now I'm sure the police have probably looked into him, but in my own opinion, he definitely seems like a POI, person of interest. Has anyone else seen this guy's Facebook? Sorry, my spelling is bad. LOL, I am lazy. But I already pointed out the rolled ankle was January 30th. So it was actually two weeks before the murder. So that rumor's not true unless if there's something else that he hurt his ankle again, you know, after a couple weeks that I don't know of. So here's the comment to that post that Brad posted with those uh, comments that he found of people accusing him. So some of the comments under that says... Brenda says, I'd be more pissed they put your son's name out there. I hope others don't bully him or anything worse. Anyone who knows him would also know he's a good kid. Good luck with all this crap. Brad says, oh, I am. And Tommy says, I hope you find this POS, brother. Brad says, I'll figure it out for sure. Jason says, this is complete crap. Mud hole, walk dry if you catch my drift. Also, when did Odinism become satanic? The religion is older than Christianity, which in turn is before Satanism was created, morons. Donna says, all religions before Christianity are pagan religions and all have ties to Satan. Haiti says, down the hill, Bradley. Time is ticking. October 4th, 2017. It's a runes, S-R-Y, or whatever they are. October 4th, 2017. says, after tonight's adventures, hail Mani and hail Tanya Threet. For having my back in Logansport, Indiana. I always have your back. I'm your Githia. You got this. Is that a tick? So showing some blood on his hand, like a cut or something. So Brad says, LOL, no, it's not a tick. Ha ha. Melanie says, What happened? Brad says, Nothing bad. Just injured myself a little. It'll be fine. And Melanie says, Ote, love you. Brad says, Love you too, because miss you bunches. And Melody says, I miss you too. My other Brad is still at Fort Leonard Wood for the next five weeks. If you want to go with him, I think this week he has a long weekend. And Brad says, that would be fun, but I'm a little short on cash at the moment. I love to go down there this weekend. I'm proud of you guys. Keep your head up because he'll be home before you know it. And Melody says, we get the short on cash thing. We are in the same boat. If you do get time and want to go, just message him on Facebook and he will answer now. He can have his phone now. And Brad says, okay, that sounds like a plan. I'm not trying to cut short, but I have to be up at three. 
I'll talk later. I love you because night night. And then Brad says, that's my hand. Oh my God, you shot? And Brad says, no, I'm fine. Just a little scrape. October 14th, brother night, family meal, tribe matters, family matters. My hand is shaking with John, Scott Smith, and two others. This is the, the painting that Brad painted. He's in Longmont, Indiana when he posts it, February 17th, 2018. It says, well, I started back acrylic, Hale Odin. And they talk about this in the document because it looks like the, there's a letter F in blood it's red and then there's supposedly a date that's supposed to look like it says 217 i'm not sure i don't i don't see that i see it says brad holder maybe 217 they might have a better uh way to look at it i do see it say two something august 18th 2018 got brad right there here's another one august 3rd 2018 is heathen so it's got the symbolism in those two pictures that we just looked at okay so these next here are screenshots from a video that um boo you sent me so let me read these here so i'll read these to you guys so this is february 13th 2019 so i am just thinking when that law enforcement officer messaged me on december 2nd 2018 regarding brad h I have posted a pic of Brad A as his name had resurfaced on social media. Was this just a whim this cop had? I mean, BH is local. His son Logan sort of dated Abby. The law enforcement officer said when I asked him, well, wouldn't Abby recognize Brad? He responded, no, we believe they never met. Brad Holder does not appear to be involved in the drug world. However, he appears to be rather odd. I just do not know what to think anymore. I just try and concentrate on motive. What would his be? To some, Libby apparently ha was the target. Or was she? Did she take the brunt because she put up a heck of a fight? I doubt Brad Holder's DNA is in the system. He has three battery charges, re his first wife. They divorced June 2016. His new girlfriend did not last long. Hmm. I can't remember the date, but we'll check. He moved out of his parents mid-March 2017. Bought a new truck, March 1st, 2017, and new boots, March 2017. Hmm, sounds quite interesting. Who are his buddies? Dig deeper. December 16th, 2018. Hi, Sleuth. Did anyone ever keep SS of Liberty's Facebook talking to the boys, Logan Holder and Brandon Sandifer, before February 13th, 2017? As you know, their sites were cleansed. Thank you. April 16th, 2019. Last eve, I messaged Todd Click, the law officer who contacted me, re Holder, back in December, Monday, 8, 11 p.m. Hi there, are you still interested in Holder? He lost his job recently at the landfill. Thanks, Kathy. 5.59 a.m. Yes, we are still looking at Holder. We are aware he lost his job and got a divorce. 7.38 a.m. Okay, if anything worthwhile comes up, I will forward it to you. April 17th, 2018. Rumors. Remember this one? There are two men staying overnight at Ron Logan's the night of the 12th. One is B, the other was said to be B. Both have sons very close to the girls, L and B. Both dads told the boys they couldn't go on the walk with the girls. B was grounded and L couldn't find a ride. Both men knew the girls were going to be on the trail because their sons asked to go. BH is really big in the Odin cult. Just throwing these long lost memories out there for you to totally debunk. Thank you. So remember, now we all know Brad Holder's name, but this is back in uh, April 17th, 2018. They're talking about this. Got it. I'm sure it was a PW, a Vinlander. Now that you know, what are you going to do about it? So I'm not sure what this is in reference to. Almost sounds like a POI who once lived in Flora or maybe still does. Yes, right down the street from where the fire was that killed those four little girls. I believe he was also friends with B.H. Brad Holder, a Odin member. Which name by letter are you thinking of P person of interest? I think the last name began with a W. Any more info ever develop about P.W.? P I don't know who P.W. is. Got it. I'm sure it was a P.W., a Vinlander. Oh, Patrick Westfall. Yeah. Duh. Okay, so now we are going to move on to Elvis Fields. So remember, Elvis is the one. So 
Elvis is the one that described forming horns out of sticks and placing them on Abby's head. And crime scene photos confirm Elvis's statement. He says that he put them by her head because she was a little troublemaker. His sister, during a pre-exam interview for her polygraph test, actually said that. That he told her that he put horns on Abby's head because Abigail was a little troublemaker. How would she know that? The fact that the alibi that Elvis gave conflicted with the alibi that Rod Abrams gave, which included Elvis in his alibi, and they conflicted. Elvis said he was at home. Rod said they were visiting a sick friend in the hospital. Also, which is kind of interesting that I missed the first time reading through it, it says, according to Rod Abrams, Elvis was communicating with a 12-year-old girl on the internet and discussing inappropriate things. Elvis used Facebook to communicate to young girls aged 13, 14, and 15. Found at 1345 on Rod Abrams' second video marked Exhibit 101. Elvis Fields told his sister, Mary, on February 14, 2017, that he was present at the killings and that he, Elvis, now had a brother and was now part of a gang. In February 2018, Elvis had been questioned by law enforcement but denied involvement in the murder. However, after being dropped off at his trailer, following the questioning, Elvis turned around, walked back to the police car, and according to the police report, asked the state trooper if his, Elvis's spit, is found on one of the girls, but he could explain it away, would he still be in trouble? The state trooper that heard Elvis utter these words, Kevin Murphy, was not part of the Unified Command, but he immediately relayed Elvis's disturbing question to Jay Harper of the Unified Command. Elvis also admitted to a different sister, Joyce, that he had in fact spit on one of the girls. Elvis told Joyce that he, Elvis, was on a trail and a bridge with two girls that were killed and that he was going away for a long time. Elvis's sister passed a polygraph exam when asked if she were telling the truth about what Elvis had confessed to her. Johnny Messer was a recruiter for the Odinites and was also the connective tissue between the Odinites from the Delphi area, Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall, and the suspects from Rushville area, Elvis and Rod. Elvis Fields did in fact have a common connection, Johnny Messer, but Elvis lied to police, claiming he, Elvis, did not know Johnny Messer. The recruiter, Johnny Messer, admitted in his October 23rd, 2018 videotaped interview that Rod Abrams, Ned Smith, and Elvis were all interested in joining the same club that he, Messer, and Holder were involved in. Elvis Fields was a mentally infirm man. Trooper Kevin Murphy described Elvis as having a, the mental capacity of maybe a 7 or 8 year old. Elvis's Facebook mimicking of Holder's posts may show that Elvis Fields was enamored of Brad Holder and also wanted to be part of Holder's gang. Holder was known to prey on lower functioning members of society and to take advantage of them. And Elvis was a lower functioning member of society. Was Holder grooming Elvis, hoping that down the road Elvis would do Holder's bidding? Did Elvis actually do Holder's bidding? Evidence supports that Elvis did in fact do Brad Holder's bidding. An eyewitness observed a man within a few hundred yards of the Monon High Bridge where the girls were abducted. That man looked like Elvis Fields. The name of the eyewitness is Teresa Liebert. Teresa Liebert lived on the same side of the Monon High Bridge, only 560 yards from the very place where the famous Down the Hill video was taken. A paved road, County Road 625 West, ends almost in front of Teresa Liebert's home. However, that road turns into a private gravel road that continues toward the Monon High Bridge and services the home of Brad Weber. Around 8.30 a.m. on the morning of February 13, 2013, Teresa Lieber observed a man on 625 West near her house standing near mailboxes used by property owners nearby. Teresa Liebert has never observed the homeowners walk to their mailboxes because of the distance from their homes to the mailboxes. The homeowners drive their vehicles to drop off and pick up their mail. Teresa Liebert had never seen this man before. Teresa Liebert was in the passenger side of the truck being driven by her husband, Dave Liebert. The man Teresa Liebert observed was standing very close to the passenger side of the Liebert truck as they passed him. Teresa Liebert, sitting higher in the truck, had a good view of it, this man's face as she passed him and noticed that the man appeared to be startled and concerned at being seen. Teresa Liebert, in fact, turned to her husband and asked something like, what do you think he's doing? 
After passing the man and driving approximately 50 more yards to their driveway, the Lieberts exited the truck. After exiting the truck, Teresa looked in the direction of where the man had been and noticed he was gone. Teresa did not see him on the road at all. Teresa believes the man had to immediately and intentionally hide after they passed him on the road, which would explain his sudden disappearance. The only reason anyone would be walking down that dead-end road would be if they were lost or if they were going to see the Liebert family or the Weber family. Teresa also remembers the man she observed was wearing a canvas jacket that was nondescript in color but doesn't remember a hat. Later, Teresa Liebert was asked to provide a description of the man's face that she observed that morning. She did provide the description. The sketch of the man that Teresa Liebert observed that morning closely resembles Elvis Fields. Even State Trooper Purdy had to admit that the Teresa Liebert sketch and the photo of Elvis Fields resemble one another. After the girls were murdered, Elvis told his sister that he was now part of a gang and had a brother. So, I noticed Elvis has like five different Facebook accounts, but I noticed on one of his, he posted a recent post a day ago. It says, let me say something. I never had a vehicle at that time. For one, it's slandering. Two, how the can I be at that place piggyback on a turtle? How smart are some people? It's over 200 miles away. My turtle has a four barrel. It's illegal. Indiana to it's illegal Indiana to slander by the way ain't it it also I heard someone say I don't care who it is I hope it's someone I'm just doing my job slandering by illegal rights in the state of Indiana Tom Webster oh I watch him sometimes hi why does Rick Allen's defense say you told two of your sisters you were at the Delphi murders also, they said you told a police officer you spit on one of the girls at the crime scene. Do you plan to sue the defense for putting your name out there? Thanks. And Vinny says, Tom, yes, even his own sister has been to the police to give a statement. Sick, twisted, horrible excuse for a human being. And Kim said, Tom, I don't think you'll get the answers from this freak of nature. I enjoy your videos, though. And Tony says, Tom, great question. And Starlin says, man, what? And Magdalene says, Starlin with an angel face and a laughing face. And Stefflin says, Mary would have never went to the police if you didn't tell her that. And Doo Doo says, you have an uncanny resemblance to a picture I've seen. Anyone else see the resemblance? And uh, Danny says, Doo Doo, no. No one says, Doo Doo, yeah, I don't see it like at all, the resemblance. But it does resemble Brad Holder, the best in my opinion. Nolan Freeman, yeah, I think the same, Brad Holder. I don't know what Shan says. <laughs> do do says, if you scroll through his photos, he kind of resembles him. I remember reading from the memorandum that they deduced the sketches must have been two separate people. And I'm theorizing, postulating that there is a resemblance if you add a hat and decrease a few years of age. Just something that stuck out. But either way, your own admission stated you were there by your stupid ass question. Oh, can my spit get me in trouble if I spat on them? Your kin passed a polygraph. The light is coming and the shadows are receding. Elvis, your time's up. Then he says, Nolan Freeman. Yeah, I thought that too. And Bridge Guy has similar build. Nolan, it's not Holder. I did the research years ago. Holder had a massive beard on the date. Doesn't fit body either. Dates and things on pictures are not everything. I have pics from when I was 17, 18, 19, 20 that have different dates on them from being transferred and moved around over the years. Not only that, but if you look all look through all the pictures during that time, you will also see that he had both full beard and shaven. Not only that, just because the picture of the guy on the bridge looks similar doesn't mean we are even looking at the correct person on that bridge. Forget about that picture taken of the bridge guy and just look at all of it together as a whole. Everyone agrees it was not a job done alone. As well as there had to be people the girls knew involved for them to be out there with a strange man so willingly to do. I think Brad Holder looks like original sketch. Yes, the second sketch definitely resembles a younger guy who is average build, which is not Klein, nor Ron, nor Richard, nor Brad. But it does kind of resemble Brad's son, Logan more than anyone else mentioned anywhere. I can think the plan was to keep it confusing between the Snapchat of Klein's, Richard Allen being a key witness to a crime, if not also involved, but out of all the suspects, you can tell he fears for his life more than anyone involved. 
scarred to death of what he stepped into while these other guys who were also clearly involved get to run free and parade around in the same hat of the man that killed the girl fully enjoying pissing people off and has no care remorse or sympathy okay, i'm not gonna read all this it's a long one okay now we're back in elvis's thread so that one took us from a post of that doo-doo and i'm not calling him a name his name was doo-doo it was like d-e-w-d-e-d-e-w-e -E 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 or something his post his page and then i was following that thread but it just got to be too much so i'm back in elvis's because elvis does respond a few times so it's this thread's kind of interesting so here's doo-doo and that's the post that i was that i clicked on and then went in that thread okay so this is where we left off. Okay, you didn't have a vehicle. You should probably at least read the memorandum put out by the defense because you aren't making yourself look any better. It clearly states that you guys borrowed a vehicle that day. Not once have you denied what the document pertains. All you have is, I didn't have a vehicle. Really? There were multiple people involved. Someone had a vehicle. Maybe not you, but one of your brethren. Steven says, soon. Elvis says, wrong. Which one did you spit on? And Star says, Elvis, did you spit on them or not? If so, why? Can you answer just these two questions, please? Genuinely curious. So Stephen says, Natalia Bella, coward spat on Abby's corpse, would bet she was a troublemaker, in the yokel's words, via his unfortunate sister. Elvis Fields, might I suggest you act as your own counsel just for the laugh? Elvis, that's interesting because according to the documents, your sister passed a polygraph when asked if you told her you spit on one of them. And then Elvis says, he had a gun and there a bullet beside one of them. They are hidden information on him that the judge don't know how they go around making things up. You can't in the state of Indiana called slandering. I'm not at fault over something I don't know about Fox 59 News. And Tyler says, Elvis, why did you tell your sister that you put horns on Libby? Why was your spit in the area of the crime scene if you're 200 miles away? Can you spit that far? And Tyler says, Elvis, ask you a question. And Delphi says, Elvis, Rick had the gun. Was bullet left on accident or did someone put it there? And David says, Elvis, you aren't very bright, are you? See, the one thing I do feel bad is them being mean and picking on him as far as like him being slow or not being very smart or not spelling right or whatever it may be. I personally think they should just leave him alone. If they want to ask him questions, that's fine or interview him. But as far as like attacking him, I mean, everybody in here is being pretty decent, but some of them are a little pushing it a little bit. Like, don't go after his intelligence because you know, not everybody's made the same. So I do kind of feel bad for him and especially because he is slow i mean they even said it in the document he's uh they called it mental and firm where his iq is what did they say like you know between 60 and 70 i think they said or below 60 and 70 or something like that where it is going to make him a handicap in some stuff you know what i'm saying he's not equal to the average person in his mental capabilities so can you imagine even innocent people sometimes say things that incriminate themselves or do false confessions i mean can you imagine people that don't have that ability so they could basically get railroaded and they could be innocent i don't know if he's innocent or not i know there's a lot of evidence that seems to can't to have come out but remember we've only heard it from richard allen's defense so we haven't seen that confirmation of everything which i couldn't see them saying stuff and exaggerating stuff that much because they're saying it's in police reports even if it's a little bit exaggerated it's still a lot of evidence against these guys because you know what they had you know what i'm saying you can only exaggerate that stuff so much i mean it is or it isn't they either said it or didn't you know that kind of a thing so i mean there's a lot but we haven't seen it yet we haven't seen the state's response we haven't actually physically seen the stuff so for him to get up there you know maybe some smart people attacking him in a way i mean he would not stand a chance and let's say he is innocent he could still come across as really guilty and incriminate the crap out of himself and possibly an innocent man could lose his life basically go to jail forever i mean we just don't know yet but with his you know mentality he would be like the textbook example of somebody who would get railroaded into you know first of all incriminating themselves whether they're innocent or guilty because somebody could just 
have that level up to back him into a corner or get him to false confession and then get him to a, a part where it's like, well, this is your only option you have. So look, this is a good deal compared to this. And you know, somebody with his IQ and mentality would probably be like, oh shoot, I'd rather take this deal of going to 25 years of life rather than my whole life, even if the guy's innocent. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I don't know, it's dangerous. I hope everybody plays fair. I hope they show us the evidence and I hope that there isn't innocent people that are gonna go to jail for this. I mean, right now I'm thinking, you know, there's a chance that Richard Allen is innocent. Now he's been in jail this whole time, but we just don't know. Okay, let's continue. Sorry, got off on a little ramble. So back to that thread under Elvis's post. And then Mary says, can you explain the spit then? Terry says, good evening, Mr. Fields. Have you read the recent document? It stated that you told your sister about your knowledge of the murders. What are your thoughts knowing that a man is in prison right now, taking the heat, and might be innocent? He has a family. Please do the right thing and speak out. Tell your story if you know it to be true. And Terry says, LOL. Steven says, Terry, does Mr. Elvis Fields seem like a big reader to you? And Terry says, Elvis, have one of your friends read the document to you. Then you will understand why we are questioning you. And then Marva Bliss sends a gift that's we're caught in a trap. And then Kim says, Steve, well, that spiraled quickly. When I refreshed the page was a barrage of comments. I could have sworn they said that the 2019 sketch of the man with curly hair and no beard was the killer, as that was what the witness said the man looked like. And he was in his 20s and 30s. The sketch that was done a couple of days after the murders are the sketches meant to be the same person or two separate individuals. Because from what I have read, law enforcement said they wasn't looking for the man in the above sketch, and they was looking for the younger man with curly hair. And I mean, if that's the case, that doesn't look like Alan either. And Stephen says, Kim, Carter said two sketches were of the same man. Killer would be combo of both. Others, including Lesenby, said that they were two different men. Law enforcement suggested that the OBG sketch was irrelevant and man in it had been identified and eliminated. Big mess, incompetence or corruption. Kim says, Stephen, probably a bit of both going on if you ask me. It really is a mess because I read to disregard the first sketch that had been identified. So we have seen the same information. Very confusing. And Honor says, Elvis, are you an Odin Knight? If so, what is your role? Somebody posted this. Pretty sure everyone mentioned played a role. He said those eyes. Richard says, out of all the things you could have been in life, why be a white supremacist out killing it? facing children. Tyler says, hey Elvis, I was just curious why you told your sister you were there when the girls got murdered and you joined a gang. Did you think the villainers would actually let someone like yourself into their organization? Furthermore, why did you tell your sister you put horns on Abby? Last question for you, Elvis. Why would you spit at the scene of the crime? Thanks for your time. Christian says, I personally think you had a part in it, right along with Eric Holder. I think they mean Brad Holder? I don't know how true, but I've seen where the first time you admitted to your sister you did it or were at least part of it was February 14th, 2017, before the media caught wind even. Elvis, would you like to come on Delphi After Dark and clear your name? I don't try to make people look bad on my show. I let them talk. I simply ask questions to direct the conversation. I watch you on YouTube and I think this would be a good for him, to be honest. People shouldn't judge. They only have the defense side. And now, could this may have ruined his life? Darren, Rick says, Darren, I would listen to his story first, off channel. Then I could either tell what he told me to my audience or he could come on camera and do it himself. People should listen before judging anyone. Rick, that's a really a rare opportunity for Elvis to have a higher IQ and more integrity than the interviewer. And Dan says, okay, let's look at some facts here. In the way that the two bodies were arrayed there is no way that one person could have done that by themselves. More like four to six individuals who are at least so-called Odinites. Mr. Fields, Odinites are definitely not Norse pagan by any means, as actual Norse pagans believe in all of the Norse gods, not just one, not only that 
The All-Father himself did not believe in the ritual sacrifice of young girls, as it is a crime of the highest order. In fact, any sacrifice made to the gods was done willingly, and the individuals concerned were treated with honor and respect as according to their status. As for the willful murder of these two girls, there was no honor or indeed respect there. And Dan says, I'd hazard a guess that you are from the States. The wicker man is, is actually a very ancient traditional practice that predates even when the Danes and Norse come to the UK, they actually used to burn Roman soldiers and officers and wicker men to ensure victory. And Stephen says, Dan, no, you'd hazard incorrectly. And if I stated the one source was Caesar himself, why would you feel the need to specify it predated the Danes and the Norse? Never heard your Slavic theory of American settlement. Which Slavs? I know St. Brendan made it over, and the Vikings made it too, far north. Human activity on that continent has a far more complex history than is generally accepted as consensus. And Stephen says, Kim, anyone signing up for Yankee neo-pagan nonsense has no concept of history or culture. Plus, they share men and women. The quality of being absolutely un as well as ignorant. Brad Holder's videos exhibit a... Exhibit B, I transcribed some of his runic posts. We worship the old gods, yet these people outsmarted the police for six years. You didn't like school and it shows. David, some people can't control their learning disabilities. You should be ashamed for saying that. There's no reason to say something of such when people with disabilities reading or writing can see your comment and take offense. Defending a suspected murderer? You sound like the kind of dumb white premise that kills white girls. Topher, does this make sense to you? Really? What supremacist killing white kids kind of defeats the purpose of being a white supremacist, no? Wow, that was a long thread. Elvis has like probably around eight maybe Facebook accounts. I could go back and count them. But he has a lot. There's only like one or two that dates back to 2017. The other ones aren't, he had, he didn't have that early. So this one on February 5th, 2017, he posts this knife, which I thought was kind of interesting because this would be eight days before the murder. He posts a picture of a knife. October 8th, 2016. October 5th, 2016. He's got four knives up there. Sorry, March April. 30th, 2016. I, I said that date wrong. It's, it says April and I said October. <laughs> anyway. um, Oh, shoot. Okay. 16. He's got two knives by a jar. And March 18th, 2016, he's got one knife. So he's a fan of knives. And we know there was a knife used in the murder. So like I said, these are all just, we don't know. This is just, I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything. I'm just pointing out some of the, the facts and the things that I'm noticing. That's all. And Zeke's over there scratching on my door. <laughs> if you're wondering what that scratching is, it's my little doggy Zeke. Elvis posted um, on one of his accounts uh, 11 hours ago, which I don't know when this video is probably going to be up tomorrow, but so today is Saturday, so it was Friday. He posted this, it says, he says, let's get this straight, people. I have been Babatiz, Babatiz. I'm a Christian. All my life from the beginning of all this way, we're withholding information on him to the public. He is MIT to his wife and mother. Learn the facts, okay? And then he posts Holy Bible, the MacArthur Study Bible, Holy Bible, name of God, root. And then people are commenting in this one too. He says, hey Elvis, I don't doubt that you're a Christian man. It's interesting that you have 5,000 friends. And what's more interesting, they're all girls. Damn you, player. Kim says, and I bet none of them speak to him. He bringing them all to Jesus one way or another. Tyler says, Elvis, why was your spit at the scene of the crime? No spit was found at the scene. Carol says, Vinny says, and if you read the, the defense's document, you will read that it was a forced confession after threats to his wife and mother. Where, as you asking the police officer if you can get away with spitting on one of the girl's dead bodies, was that said by you as they were leaving? Explain that one. What's going on, Elvis? This is the first I've heard of this. I'm your friend, but what's this all about? And somebody says, Michael Ranzo. Oh, they send her the document. Sarah says, Elvis, please hire an attorney. They can help you with false allegations brought against you. Tanya says, can you find someone to help him make his Facebook for friends only? I've been watching this case and this crowd has done this to so many people. It's ridiculous. He needs to sue someone. Sarah says, I can walk him through it. I don't know how to reach him except for Messenger. I reached out to him on Messenger. It's horrible that people are 
what people are doing to him. The Indiana State Police asked people early on not to share photos of men because it could ruin their lives. Definitely, and this is from grown adults. Sworn affidavits are not false allegations. He's a child murderer. Elvis, just turn off your Facebook page and get an attorney. I hope people leave you alone. They have done this since the beginning of this. Go on your profile, make your account private. I agree, Tanya, this is ridiculous how people are easily persuaded. But there is a lot to back it up. That's the whole thing. They, they said these were in police reports, so there is a lot. So that's what's concerning. If it was just like them accusing without like these things that they're saying are in police reports, they're in videos of his sister saying it. Just because we're not allowed to see it, they said that they are in the reports. Unless if they're lying, but it comes down to who do you believe now? Do you believe the state, which they're showing that they could have been lying through their teeth this whole time, like law enforcement stuff, or do you believe them? I mean, I guess it just boils down to who you're going to believe, but it seems kind of un... <sighs> for them to... Okay, for one thing, for them to lay out a theory that, that you know, that's lies, but them for them to say like it's in the reports this is in this exhibit this is in this report so it ha it's there so it is hard to deny it i'm trying to be as fair as possible but it's hard because there's so much that they said are in the reports how did they all get ignored that's what's concerning how did the police re ignore all these reports and why isn't he re making a remark about the spit he keeps talking about stuff that really doesn't matter about him only having one car well or him not having a car well they never said that he had a car they never said he had a car. They never said that he took his car. So that's that's not even important. So for him to say that, it's not important. For him to say he's Christian, that's really not important either. You know, that doesn't mean that he, you could still be an Odinist and Christian, I'm, I'm guessing. And plus, you could still want to like join a gang, but still say you're a Christian and, and but want to be a part of some kind of brotherhood type thing. And you could have had a moment in your life where you kind of veered off. You know, if he's Christian now, it doesn't mean in 2017 for a moment he wanted to be a part of this uh, gang or whatever. So, I mean, I would like to hear what he has to say about the spit. Did he say that or not? Did he tell his sisters that, you know, that he put antlers on Abby or not? So the fact that they said they have recordings of his sister saying that at the pre-exam of a polygraph saying that he put horns on Abby because she was a troublemaker before anybody would even know about the scene. That is, pr just that in itself is huge evidence, but there's way more than that. So I'm trying to be fair, but dang, there's a lot. I don't even know what to think. I really don't. So I'm trying to go back and find the Barbie doll pictures. I'm not sure if he took them down. Because that's what I was going to show you next, which was kind of odd. He does have a lot of young girls. There they are. Right. He's got a lot of friends on Facebook. <laughs> I scrolled right by him and I, I missed it. I went back through like all his profiles all over after I saw you. It'll cut this because I edited this. So, but in reality, I just scrolled past him. I'm rambling, rambling my mouth over there. And then I end up having to go through all like, I swear he's like got eight to 10 accounts. I should show you. So I went through back all through every one of those through his pictures to find the Barbie ones as I just scrolled through it like when I first started looking at him. <laughs> I didn't see it until I was editing it. Edit editing it after. I'm like, oh my God, how did I miss that? <laughs> anyway. It seems like there's like a lot of young girls he's friends with, which is kind of concerning because it goes back to um that part that I read to you about was it Rod Abram saying that he was talking to like 12 to 15 year old girls. Yeah, that he was ta he talks to young girls and stuff. So that's just a lot of stuff for concerning. And I just want to hear, I want to hear his side fairly. I don't want him being attacked or anything like that. That's not fair either. But maybe have somebody help him get out what he wants to say. You know what I'm saying? He definitely probably needs some help just to make sure, you know, he doesn't say anything he doesn't mean. Yeah, no, they're still up. Okay. So. July 10th. So just this year, he that's when he posted these Barbie dolls. This year, July 10th. What is that about? I know they aren't exactly posed like any of the girls, but it's weird that he posed them at all. They're kind of like how her leg was, I guess. Okay, so his record, looking it up. I looked up his criminal record, which these miss a lot, so he could have way more, but this is just what Truth Founder find, found. I'm going to try to look into the, you know, this the counties too, but he doesn't really have much on his records, at least from what Truth Founder found. He has one unlawful possession of tobacco, minor possession of tobacco, 2018, November, and that's it. Now, Patrick Westfall. 
has more. Like I said, I know we know he even has more than this, but what Truth Founder found, they only find like some. So he has offense date 2022, invasion of privacy, violation and order issued, criminal misdemeanor. And then on 2021, he has domestic battery resulting in moderate bodily injury. And then in yeah, 2021, this is that domestic battery resulting in bodily injury. And that's all that Truth Founder found on him. And then we have Johnny Messer, which remember, Johnny Messer is the connector from Elvis to Brad Holder. He's the connection. He has, in 2014, intimidation threat is to commit a forcible felony, harassment by telegraph, mail, or other written communications, counterfeiting, definitely knowingly make, makes or utters written instruments such that it... That's a felony, the counterfeit. Unlawful possession of a firearm by a serious violent felon. So he must have some violent felonies. Um, unlawful possession of a firearm by serious violent felon. So he has one in 2018, a, a, a possession of firearm and 2015. 2010, he has criminal confinement. 2009, he has failure of occupant to use safety belt. 2008, he has invasion of privacy. And that's all for that. Truth Hunter didn't pull up anything for Brad, but which we know he does have a domestic battery, so. Hey, Patronus. Oh, I guess that's over. I thought I had more stuff. Okay. Hey, what's up? Um, actually, though, uh, what was the guy that I did pull up? Hold on a second. I found a... Hold on, give me one second. What was there? Johnny. Oh, no, I did go over Johnny Messers. It was... Rod Abrams that I didn't list out for some reason. Hold on one second. Let me see if, uh... I forget what I pulled up on Rod, if Rod had something. So, Rod is the one that supplied the, um... The alibi, remember? And it didn't even go along with the alibi that Elvis gave was different than the alibi that Rod gave. So Rod gave the alibi of them going to visit a sick friend. And Elvis said he was at home the whole day that day. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, all right, hold on. Let me see something. If Rod had a... Uh, a, a ugh, can't even talk. If he had a criminal record. I forget. Oh, yeah, he does. So he had, oh, yeah, Rod has a a pretty, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, he has a pretty, hold on a second. Well, I guess it's not, just has that one that popped out. It's, uh, I guess it's the only one. He just has one, but it's assault, hold on, assault with, oh, no, I guess. So assault with no intent to kill, violation of probation, criminal mischief, Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and then aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. But those are misdemeanors, so it must not have been that bad, I guess, if that's a misdemeanor. So yeah, I guess he doesn't have too much. Um, how is an assault... How is that only... I'm confused. That has to be a mistake. How could assault with a deadly weapon be a misdemeanor? Is that normal? aggravated assault because remember when they add aggravated to the charges doesn't that add, doesn't that mean i remember looking that up hold on it means um i forget what that means hold on when they add it to uh, a charge wait aggravated to i'll put an assault charge and see what it says i remember looking it up for a case and it was like oh okay so Oh, I guess obviously a more a serious offense. I mean, that, um, I thought there was a, a thing that they explained. Now, I guess I don't find anything why. Maybe it was just to the specific case I was uh, looking at back then where it said they added it for a specific reason. I can't, f I can't find like a common reason they add it. They add it. Criminal laws. Oh, wait. Classify. Oh, wait, hold on. They could classify is either simple or aggravated. So, 
An aggravated assault all involve intentional harm inflicted on one person by another. So it's intentional. Um, hold on. These acts can rise to the level of aggravated depending on the seriousness of the attack. And more than one-sided attacks can constitute assault. Okay. Um, yeah, huh. But I thought there was something else, but I guess not. Anyway. Um, okay, so now, now that I'm done with that, let me look into what you guys were saying really quick. Um, so let me see the emails. Let me check the emails real quick. And then... Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna do oh the court. Yes, I just remembered the court TV um thing that we were gonna look at. Yeah, I'm gonna play that the little part of the video where they play the the um thing that's supposed to represent the um the blood dropping. Now I remember when I was looking at the uh video when it came out, I don't even know, like a day or two ago, whenever um when did that get uploaded? I don't know. It was my days blend together because I didn't sleep the night before yesterday. I was up. For like two days so when i was looking at it i didn't actually have the sound on so where do they say that they got the blood dripping like picture how do they have that to know what it looks like and ak where did you get this delphi native who has ties to the defense team oh wow okay can i share this wait a second hold on it says got it from delphi Notice the bullet in between. I'm going to show you the picture in a minute, but I don't want to share your email. So let me read what, or actually, how am I going to do this? Because I want to read what you wrote. So notice the bullet in between, the sharpened point of one of the sticks on Abby. And what else? No F rune. Okay. What's the that pink thing under Abby? Oh, it's uh, it's the shoe in the phone. Um, isn't it? Remember they said the shoe, they said Libby's shoe was under her and so was and the phone was under the shoe. So I'm guessing that's supposed to uh, show that, right? And then it says, what's next to the tree Libby's touching? All right, let me, can I, I'm going to share that. That's pretty interesting. Oh, is that a, uh, maybe clothes? I thought the clothes were thrown in the, the river, but maybe it's nothing. Where did you get? You said you got this from a native who has ties to the defense team, but so they, so they had, so basically they got a picture of what the scene looked like, and then they drew it. Is that what your this is all about? Hold on, I'm not looking at the chat. Let me see. Yeah, wow, that's interesting. Here, let me share it, guys. That's very interesting, and then. We'll play that little clip on the video. Okay. So let me go here. Let me bring it up one more time. Why didn't that save right? Hold on. It didn't save right when I try to save it. So I don't have to share um your email. So I could just say, here we go. There we go. Okay. I'll just share the picture. There we go. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, it did shit. It did save. It just took a freaking five minutes or something. Okay. So here. There we go. So, okay. The, are you serious? So how did they? Wow. So you're saying they know they're friends with the defense. They saw the picture and then they made a, a R out of it. Am I, that's what happened. What the heck? So the one sharpened. Okay. So this is. Wow. Okay, so you have the bullet right here. You have, I'm pretty sure that's a, a Libby shoe with the phone under that they talked about, I'm guessing. Um, you have the antlers. So one of the six is sharpened, which leads you to believe again that you know, that they brought stuff from home. Now, what stick were, you know, when they were talking about the one stick looked like it was a uh, salt, like that somebody sawed it. What one are they talking about there? That's not this one, right? Because what I'm saying is that means there's two sticks that looks like they're brought from home for sure, maybe. One that was cut clean and then one that was carved. And then you said there's no F in the tree, but wonder if it's, 
supposedly because it would be you have to ask your friend. You said it was it a friend of yours? You have to ask if they saw the F on the tree or what they made out of that. And then you were talking about in your email when you said, what is this, right? Is that what you're asking? This it looks like a piece of clothing or something? I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm trying to think of... I'll have to read again the um, scene when they describe it. Did they describe any of the clothes? I know they, they found the clothes like... Didn't they find him in the water? Didn't he put him... The person put him in the water? Um, oh, but, 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 Paul, here's the thing, though. Would the bridge guy even know that she had the video of him for him to be like, oh, let's frame this this other person by keeping the, the, the phone so they'll have the video of that whoever the guy, the bridge guy is. I mean, do you think they would even have known? I mean, I know they could have went through her phone and looked, but... I don't know. I'm just thinking, would they would they have for sure and they'd have known that um Libby was even recording? Because it looked like she's being pretty conspicuous. Like she wasn't really, you know, making it like known. That's why it wasn't, you know, the angle and stuff. It looked like she was trying to hide that she was doing it. Um, so I just wonder if they even knew is what I'm thinking. But I guess that's an interesting way to look at it though, because Let's say, let's say it is that. Let's say that they know that the bridge guy is the fall guy that they wanted to get in trouble. And they did, did know that she had a video of him. That'd be interesting. But I'm almost thinking that would be, I don't know if I believe that. I think it was just an overlook that they didn't, they screwed up. Um, I think, I don't know, but you would think that they were so particular about all this other stuff. But what I'm thinking is that when they move their bodies, they just didn't even realize they moved it over the shoe in the phone but that that would be something because if they if it is true that Libby's closed it or the Libby's closed the at they put on Abby didn't have one drop of blood on it then that would mean they were so meticulous in making sure the scene was how they wanted it that how could they miss a freaking shoe in a phone but you know think about um uh Idaho 4 Think about how meticulous that crime scene was as far as like no DNA, but they made one mistake, left the freaking knife, you know, or the sheath, sorry, the sheath. So it's like sometimes they just make a mistake because people are imperfect, you know, but I don't know. It's just interesting. So many questions. This even, instead of like answering questions, this late, this actually raises way more questions now than I've, I had before. Okay. You said, look at Abby. What do we, okay. Let me see. What about Abby? Look at Abby. God, it creeps me out. Yeah. That, wait a minute. See the hands? That is kind of creepy how her hands are up. And it's almost like, oh, man. It's almost like the hands are, um, the arms are like almost holding that stick there too. But yeah, it's like, what is the heck? Are they like how they posed them? What the heck? Is there, is there some kind of meaning? Somebody's cheering again, all saying. Do you hear that? Do you hear it? So, I was saying, did somebody score again? Um. Anyway, so, yeah, that's crazy. Or, wait, 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 I have a question. Did this person uh, do this art based on the document? Or did they actually see a picture? Is what I want to know. Oh, yeah. No, I know, AK. I was just saying to see it like that. Um, like, where they're actually, like, it almost looks like, you know, they're actually on her face, like, in a way more than I thought as far as, like, how, to, I don't know how to explain it, but, like, how the, the way that they're facing, like, her face, you know what I'm saying? That the, They're, like, the inside are right on her face. But, no, I know that they described it like that, but... So do you think that this person saw it or they just are going by the description is what I want to know. If you know, oh, you have no idea, huh? Because that would be, I mean, that would be important to know because then we would know if it's based upon the documents, then we would know that they were accurate in describing it, which we would hope. But I know there are a lot of people are doubting like all, like most, you know, some people, 
are doubting something. Some people are just doubting all of it. So it just would be confirmed that at least, you know, they did, they did describe the scene. Right. So I wish, I mean, I wish I knew. I, I mean, I would think it'd be stupid for them not to because the judge and they're going to see, they see, they're going to be able to see if they did it. So if they're lying, then it would just start off really bad for the, the his lawyers, you know? Oh, okay, AK. Thanks for sharing this, though. Um, The video was edited in audio. Apparently, they were more than voice only. No, I know, Paul. Yeah, it was definitely edited. And then they even chunked. They did uh, guys down the hill. I mean, it was in, like, two different parts. It wasn't, like, that's not, like, where he said it and then guys down the hill. So we don't even know if they were even, like, when he the person says guys and then down the hill, if it was even close together you know what i'm saying and then like the part where we all thought for years that it was a gun clicking thing and then they uh you know they ended up verifying it was you know but they didn't say until the whole arrest we didn't find out until you know they arrested richard but this whole time like that you know we had different people going through the sounds and different creators were really going through it and you know not all of them came to the same conclusion but a lot of them said that they thought it was a gun you know like cocking of the gun that they were trying to alter so you know nobody knew about the gun or whatever so anyway um okay so what did you say wound ak hold on wolfag no it's not there yeah the f's not there and i have a question so when court tv did that which we're gonna watch that little clip where they did the blood splatter with the f do you guys know what well, maybe it'll say it on there did they say they actually saw the pictures and how they were able to see them or no they had more than wait hold on that's why i say it's attackers who filmed bridge guy they had more time than we know wait that's why i oh i see what you're saying well then why yeah but then the attack oh yeah i guess that i'm just saying they would have to be the attackers would be like i don't know that's i don't know if that's the case um wait 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 so you're saying well we know hold on paul though we know that the girls voices were in that though because you're not saying like after like they had more than enough time that the, after they killed him that they went and filmed just some random guy to frame him or are you saying like when they were still i don't know when are you saying because supposedly they cut out the parts where the girls right I, that's what i heard but i guess we don't know but wasn't it not wasn't it said that the, the girls voices were in it in the audio which they didn't share with us but they that you could hear them or is that not true because if not then that would be interesting dude i didn't even think that route that they could have possibly just took a freaking video of a random guy and it could have been richard because we know richard was there but in under richard's account he would have been gone he said he was there at like 12 or 12 30 and he would have been gone by like what what they or wait, I forget what time he went there, but I think they said he would have been gone by like 1.30, right? Or according to that person that saw the cars that they mixed up or that they that they say that Liggett like altered or whatever. I don't know. But either way, I mean, maybe that that's crazy because what that is crazy to think about that. What if that was Richard, not the audio, but just the video part? And then they framed him. I don't know. It's a lot to think about. But bottom line is, is I just don't, I, I just don't believe this. At least I don't believe it's just one guy. Could Richard be involved? Yes. Could he be the only one involved? That's just hard to believe. And even before all that, I was having trouble believing it. That he was able to contain both girls. And everything crossing the the water and um and now staging the scene and just do all of that and I mean I know it doesn't take long to like 
to stab somebody or, you know, I know it doesn't, but it's just the staging. And I always just thought that there was more than one person. Definitely not professional time. What time did they get dropped off? It was from someone who either saw or was described the scene. It is very specific. Yeah, supposedly 1.30, but I don't know. That's what that a document said. They had more time than we know. Yeah, I always thought, like, that is too quick. Okay, so let me play that little clip of um, the court TV thing. Hold on, I have it up. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, said I haven't so I haven't watched it with sound on yet. Oh, why did that? I don't know why that took that off, but oh well, I'm gonna switch screens anyway. All right, give me one second. All right, let's see. Oh shoot, I better end this. So I forgot that. Okay, let's watch this real quick though. I just brought their page up. Okay. And this image on the tree for a very long time and very different characterizations than what's in this memorandum. Sources close to the investigation have provided me with drawings of what they say those images look like, the, the arrangement of those sticks. So let's start with the one of Abby. And it shows three sticks. Now, we have not placed her body here because... This is how it was provided to me. We don't know exactly what the positioning on top of her was like, but this is supposed to be a representation of what the image looked like, the way the sticks were formed. Um, now let's put up the image from Libby. And there's five sticks involved here by my count. And you can look at these and decide if they look like something to you or look like they're randomly placed. Uh, I have spoken to many investigators who were on the scene at the time who say the assumption was they were randomly placed. They did not see a pattern. They didn't see intentionality there. The other interesting thing about these sticks, they did not collect them when they collected evidence from the crime scene. Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down. Oh, yeah. The sticks are placed on the bodies <gasps> yes. of the two what victims the here. And they're not collected as evidence? They were not collected as evidence until several weeks later, conceivably when this Odinism stuff started to arise within the investigation, and they went back to try to collect those sticks. Now, the other thing we have an image of is what was depicted on the tree. And it's described in this memorandum as being the letter F, a rune uh, painted in blood. Blood, right? That this was is, who, tested according to the memo. It's Libby's blood, okay. according to That's the memo. That's what the defense is saying. Yes. I have not heard that part of it from my sources, but I was given a rendering of what the blood on the tree or whatever the substance on the tree appeared to be. And that's this, what we're looking at right now. This is more accurate. Um, now, several of the investigators told me they thought that it was a perhaps partial handprint of the person who committed the crime, leaned up against the tree, and that's how it was placed there. Now let's put it back up. Let's put that back up. This is significant. This is important. Now, the defense is saying this is is the letter F. Yes. Now, we also have a second image where we have played. But wait a minute. If the if the police are saying they think it's a partial handprint, how does a handprint make sense either? Because a handprint wouldn't be drops. It would be like a smear, like smudges. So, how? I mean, are we sure it looked like that? Because how would they even get a handprint out of that? Because how could you get? No, I don't know. That's weird that they would have even said a handprint. Because it wouldn't even be like that texture, would it? All right, let's finish watching. Placed that rune, the F image, over this. And you can decide for yourself if it looks like the exact same image or not. Um, again, many investigators thought that it was a handprint or something that was just done during the commission of the crime and not intentionally placed there. But just like the sticks, Vinny, this was not exactly. taken as evidence. The tree was not cut yeah. down. Aaron the bark was not removed. 
It was left at the scene, photographed, swabbed. Everything was photographed, though, right? Photographed, the scene had to be photographed, photographed at a minimum. At a photographed. Minimum. But you would think... Yeah. At least the bark, from, from what I've heard, at least the bark should have been taken, if not that chunk of the tree. Well, if they're saying it's Libby's blood, then someone would have to take in a sample of the blood, right? Yes. You would think? Okay. According to the memo, they say the DNA testing shows that it is her blood. This is... You know, what, what to make of this, right? It, it seems like there's more to it. There's a reason you're putting the sticks there. You're not, I mean, they're put there purposely, whether they mean something, whether they are these secret codes, and some Odinistic type of, of, of meaning is really the question, it right? It was characterized to me as being perhaps an abandoned effort to cover the bodies. Okay, I get that. All right, stay where you are. Joining us now in Delphi, Indiana, Podcaster Gray Hughes uh, from Gray Hughes Invest. No, thank you. Okay. Um. Wow, that's something else, man. Um. Man, I don't even know. I'm so I can't even believe they didn't take the sticks till after. Because how many people? I mean. People could have been like curious that were our locals and there could have been so many people going around that area or was it was still when it was like, was it roped off as a crime scene or was, because if not, you had so many locals that were in, involved, you know, in the case and stuff. So there could have been so much crap, like people just going and how do they know those? I don't know. I don't know. This is just crazy. I can't believe they didn't take them. Okay. So yeah, the letter F that, that could just be, you know, happening from when it happened but i have a question though because they didn't they say they were killed at a different like a different location so if that really was because i heard um people explain well maybe maybe that was just like you know when it happened her blood you know squirted out and it and it wasn't done intentionally and it just hit the tree but weren't they killed in a different location i mean i know it wasn't it was near there but would it have been close enough that if that is how it got there and it wasn't intentional that it would have been able to reach that tree or was it intentional? Did they have something where they, you know, how you, know, you do the rituals or whatever, where you, they could have splattered it with something? You know what I'm saying? I would like to know. I'm trying to think how they worded it. How far were they killed compared to where they were laying? If it would be close enough where it would have just happened. Or like I said, if they had to intentionally put the blood there. Because that would be important to know. Right? Okay, so let me see. The defense, wait, hold on. The defense is claiming no blood. They were saving it for later use. Wait, who, saving it for later use. Wait, what? What do you mean, AK? I know, like, where they were laying, that they, they were killed in a different spot. I, th I feel like I remember hearing that when it all happened. I feel like it was out that they, that they were moved because there wasn't a lot of blood at the scene or something like that, or, like, where they were. But I'm saying... I don't know what you mean. They they were saving it for later use. So they did save some of the blood. Is that what you're saying? Like one, one of those people, whoever's involved, they think saved the blood. So they have it. Oh, Teresa, I should have added undecided. Shoot. I'm sorry. No, it definitely could be a blood splatter, but that's what I'm saying. If they were if they were in a different location, were they still close enough? All right, let me bring up that uh, picture that you, uh, again, because you said look at Libby's neck. Hold on. Um. Oh, yeah. They, they do uh, show that. Wow. Is there something specific? Uh, that you want me to look at about it or no? Did I miss anything else that I should be looking at? No, I think the sketch from someone who either saw. Well, let me see. Oh, I'm behind in comments. Hold on one second. Let me see. There's no rituals on the right. It makes no sense. The right has ro rolling, the left because of all the rituals. Yeah. Oh, what I used to hear 
yeah the bullets in the middle what i what i would always hear though it wasn't fully decapitated but it was so cut so deep that it almost was i never heard it was like fully or anything ak it was just like she was cut pretty deep that's what i heard so that i mean that represents it pretty good um so yeah the other, like i said the other thing that bothers me is the main thing that links um which I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna get Al or Richard to this crime is the bullet. And like I said, they say in the documents that there's no pictures of the bullet outside the dirt where you could see the size and you could see the details of it. So that's concerning because what if they did go when they got a warrant, got like a real bullet from his gun and were able to then now they have it because you know what I'm saying? You know, people that um uh God, I can't even think of the word now. Uh, oh, my lordy. Yeah. My brain is fried a little bit from being on the computer for so many hours. Um, Stage, not stage. Um, My God, I can't even think of the word when a cop will do, like, put something that's not a part of the crime scene and put it there. <laughs> Why can't I think of the freak planted? Yeah, planted is a good word. But I'm actually thinking of a different word that's not planted. But anyway, um, so planted, yeah. So the, it would be easy to do after they go and they get the real one. So that's that's kind of concerning to me too. Um, let me see exactly what they say again. I want to want to see something. Bullet. Let's see how they uh let's see bridge guy. Where we got. Many people call Bridge Guy was found on this phone. Additionally, allegedly found between the two girls buried was under the leaves in a dirt. So it was buried under the leaves in dirt and was a single bullet. Actually, it looks you could read it better without that. Okay. The defense has provided two photos of the shoe in the cell phone found under Libby's legs. And marked them as exhibit 2122. Provided three three photos of the bullet. Found in the ground between Abby and Libby. Mark these photos. Blah, blah, blah. Um, it should be noted that as uh, as of the date of this memo, the defense has no photographs of the bullet allegedly found between the girls after it was removed from the ground. No photo or video, for example, shows the bullet as it was being pulled out of the ground. No photo or video of the bullet immediately after it was pulled from the ground. No photo or video of all sides of the bullet immediately after it was pulled from the ground. No photo of the bullet next to a measuring device to show its length. No photos that show what the bullet looked like once it was pulled out of the ground. Could provide proof that it, it is the same bullet that ended up in the evidence. An evidence locker room. Shockingly, in his deposition, Sheriff Liggett admitted that he also has not seen any photos of the purported bullet taken once the bullet was pulled from the ground. So what the heck? In other words, the only photos that the defense has found in the discovery it has received are the bullets still buried in the ground. They don't, it says, if the photos of the bullet after it was removed, the ground even exist. Wow. The, the, the state has not returned those important photographs. Um... Or the defense has missed these photos. So they do say that or they missed them in these uh, in the discovery. Either way, the defense has asked the prosecutor to, to please locate these photos. So hopefully they'll be able to locate them. Hopefully they do have them, but I'm guessing they don't. Um, let's let's do something real quick. Let's oh, no, let's finish wa watching that court TV or didn't know we already watched it. That's right. Oh, my God, because it was. Uh, Whatchamacallit was on there, and I'm not. Yeah, I'm not down for that. Not the way it was treated. Um, okay, so let's look at the side notes. If we missed anything else, like the footnotes or whatever you call them at the bottom of the pages, just to make sure. So, um, affidavit, no, just want to make sure. No. Should make sure that we see all the little notes at the bottom. What do you call those footnotes? 
So the defense counsel is not saying that Westfield guards were involved in the murders, only that they were likely involved in threatening, intimidating, and mentally abusing Richard Allen. Yeah, and I didn't get that they were saying they were involved either. Um, oh, let's see this. What does this say? It says, although the state police superintendent, Doug Carter, pulled the plug and kicked the FBI off the Delphi murder case around 2021, over some conflicts, according to Jerry Holman, interestingly, interestingly, Tony Liggett, who was deposed before Holman, claimed under oath that Doug Carter was not involved in making decisions for the case. Furthermore, he, Liggett, claimed to be unaware that the FBI was even kicked out, let alone that any agency had actually kicked out the FBI from investigating Delphi. It is quite odd that the salient topic of Doug Carter kicking the FBI off of the Delphi case would never have been discussed between Liggett and Holman, who were working so closely with one another in the Unified Command. If that can be believed, it would be quite perplexing. Merriam-Webster defines a rune as any of the characters of an, any of several alphabets used by the Germanic peoples from about the 3rd, or 13th, 3rd to 13th centuries. Many runes look like the letter F, including a rune called Ansus, which, among other things, stands for Odin. Okay. Did you guys read all these notes in this? Is there anything else interesting in a... I'm glad that we were able to see that one, though, because that one, that one about um, the hypothetical of what Richard... Uh, said okay let's see vinlander is a word interchangeable with those who practice odinism as state trooper pretty stated in his deposition all members of vinlanders are also odinists basically the vinlanders are a white s group consisting of odinists brad holder patrick westfall johnny messer were all affiliated with the vinlander group Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend Taylor also confirmed that all Vinlanders were all Odinists and that Johnny Messer, Brad, and Patrick were all members of Vinlander. Okay. I just want to make sure that there's nothing else that we need to know that we're hidden kind of in. And I'm trying to, as I'm doing that, I'm trying to think if what else, if there's anything else I missed telling you guys. So this also, this is kind of interesting. It says Sergeant Jones was not present at this visit. So let's see what visit they're talking about. Oh, did I show? Yeah, I already showed you the, the Sergeant Robinson stuff. Oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to get you guys. Sherry, are you still here? Because can you please try to email me again about, um, I, I really want to look in for tomorrow to the um, Elvis's sister you said that died. And then the the one investigator that you said that died. Could somebody send me some stuff on that? I really want to look into that because that's interesting if this is the one I'm talking about that Richard never spoke those words as far as um, him saying they made him say he killed them. He that They made him tell his wife that he killed the girls that they said that that was just like a example. They never he never said that. So. It's just a point that the Westfield guards have made the privacy needed for Richard to have that type of private convo with his attorneys very difficult. Perhaps not worth the risk if you are Richard. Um, let's see what this says. This says, this decision has been painfully and emotionally difficult for Rick's defense team. As defense counsel recognized that while the defense took the necessary time to review the discovery to establish the Odinus link, both to the murders and to the Westville Correctional Facility, defense counsel was also aware that Rick would remain in his hellhole at Westville subject to the cruelty of Sergeant Jones and Robinson, and perhaps other Odinite corrections officers. This was especially painful at the June 15th hearing to transport Rick to Cass County, as defense counsel knew at the time of the link's between the murders and Odinism in Westville. Unfortunately, defense counsel needed additional time to fully understand and to verify the facts before leveling such accusations. This is the reason that the, the defense tactically decided to keep its knowledge to itself rather than reveal that knowledge in an open court at the hearing. 
unified command and the prosecution's hiding the exculpatory evidence is even more angering because difficult strategic decisions could have been avoided had McClellan offered the exculpatory document sooner. Perhaps then Rick would have filed for speedy trial or would have been removed from Westville as the defense would have been able to more fully inform the court about the facts. Hmm. Yeah, let me make this smaller so I could go through this better. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, this actually... Cool, let's see. So it says the stick configuration. So let me see which one they're talking about. Uh, the one that's... The, uh, like lab, like Libby, those involved in the murder had placed three branches in a very specific pattern on top of Abby. The pattern looks similar to an asterisk consisting of three branches all joined in the middle. At least one of the tree branches appears to have been cleanly cut by the instrument, like an electric uh, saw. So here is what the note for 17. So on the one on Abby, they're saying this stick configuration. Let me make it bigger real quick is spot-on resemblance for the rune called Hegel. This rune is used to depict the word Hale. Therefore, the combination of the Hegel rune found on Abbey and the Inzus rune found on the tree, when combined, when combined, would proclaim Hale Odin. The sediment Hale Odin was one of the many Easter eggs Brad Holder left behind on his Facebook page on multiple posts. The defense team speculates that because of the lack of blood visible in the crime scene photos, especially concerning Abby, that the murders may have saved the blood to be used in future rituals. Oh, that's what you were talking about. Okay, see, I haven't read all these side notes yet. This is merely a theory, admittedly not supported by any facts currently in possession of the defense, but a theory that would certainly explain the lack of expected blood at the crime scene. The F resembles a, a rune called Anzus, which stands for Odin. Again, when paired with Hegel rune found on Abbey, the combination would proclaim Hail Odin. This F symbol was the same F symbol found in many of Brad Holder's Facebook pages, which will be attached, including Holder's creepy self-drawn illustration in which a red rune, a red F rune was found at the base of a tree where a man appeared to be sacrificed on a tree. Okay. But I don't know. Yeah. So that F... Do we know for sure that um, Court TV, for sure, they had a girl, so their source had a source that saw them. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what this says. This is talking about the bullet. Here we go. On September 8th, 2023, the defense did receive photographs of the bullet at the forensic lab where it was tested. However, the still the defense has not received photos of the bullet from the crime scene of a crime. Wait, from the crime scene of crime scene technicians pulling out the bullet from the ground or placing it into an evidence bag as a standard practice, especially in murder cases. So it says Jerry Holman testified in his deposition that investigators estimated the time of death as occurring somewhere between 2.30 and 3.30. Okay, so 2.30 and 3.30, so that would be, yeah, makes sense. Um, what is this, the oh, water geological survey depths? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I remember they were talking about the slow death thing. So it says, um, find attached and marked as Exhibit 27, Liggett's autopsy notes. The defense has not yet deposed the pathologist to determine what the phrase slow death means in terms of timing, whether it is five minutes, 25 minutes, or 55 minutes or more. Yeah, that's true. I wonder. Um. Yeah, I was always wondering about the two bra thing. So it says Abby was wearing two bras. The first bra on top of Abby's skin. But under the second bra. Was a, tra wait, was a traditional lo looking black bra. The second bra was found on top of the black bra and under the pink shirt. 
Oh, so the second brawl was what the defense called a gray sports bra. I was just wondering because I was like, wait, did they put uh, Libby's on her? Because she had Libby's clothes, but no, it doesn't sound like it. Okay. You know how hard and long it would take to put clothes on a a dead body? I'm sorry. I mean, that's... Uh, I don't I feel like for one person to do that. All right, let's see. That doesn't... And it's not that uh, post by Patrick that we looked at, the picture. The videotape by Brad Horace. Yeah, we already saw that. Yeah, so clothing from the girls was found in Deer Creek. Um, yeah, we already looked at that. Got that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah, because th that's why they're talking about here how um, Asa True, see, I didn't get to read some of this last pages, how Asa True, oh, this is in 46. I must have skipped over this. So it's talking about Asa True leaders have opened prison ministries in at least five states recently, and that many jailed followers are heavily white, a leading prison terrorist david lane has been yeah writing they, yeah that's what why okay or maybe i did read some of that on the live i don't remember now the man's hands are not similar to the way abby had been posed oh they're talking about when they're uh comparing the painting okay all right. Clothing report. All right. Sorry, guys. I just I just want to go through all. I just want to make sure that there's no other notes that we're not miss, like knowing, like miss uh learning something. Let's see. In the labeled report, Patrick described to law enforcement. Oh, wait, let's see. Um, that Asatru was a warrior type, warrior type religion with many gods, including Odin and Thor. This report is marked Exhibit 39. Just like Holder's videotaped interview as of the date of the filing of this memorandum, the prosecutor still has not turned over the Westfall videotaped interview. The defense only has a narrative that allegedly memorializes Westfall's interview. Um, the defense has requested both Holder and Westfall's videotape interviews. Yeah, that'd be interesting to watch those. Let's see. Um, yeah, this is much quicker zoomed out. Okay. Um, Let's see. So this is it says um, Purdy discusses how he viewed this image on Holder's Facebook. Purdy deposition. Purdy talks about the mimicked murder scene just as one piece of a puzzle because the image had been on Holder's Facebook for as long as four to five years, four or five years. It somewhat depressed the level of Winner's interest in this photograph. Huh. Okay. Hold on. Let's see what this says. In the most recent dump, the defense believes that some evidence may exist in which law enforcement attempted to verify whether Holder even went to the gym. Due to the desire to file the Franks motion and memorandum, the defense has not had an opportunity to review that evidence if it exists. The defense can't be sure what was asked of Holder at either 
his February 17th interview or his September 4th, 2023 interviews, as law enforcement have failed to provide that to the defense. At least as the time of the filing of this memorandum, or at least at this time, although on September 11, 23, the prosecution informed the defense that yet another round of additional evidence is available for pickup. The defense should be picking the new discovery on September 18th. Perhaps these, perhaps these videos will be found in the latest round of discovery, over nine months after the defense entered their appearance. Elvis's videotaped 10-18-18 interview at the 1520 mark. The state of Indiana finally provided this videotaped interview to defense on September 8th. Okay. Um, says the defense will be providing the context for these statements, which is, I'm sure it's going to be, hold on, 90, which would be, hold on a second, 90, um, all about the Abby, about, um, telling him telling sister, his sister, that Abby was a troublemaker. So she, he put those horns on her. So it's saying that the defense will be providing the context for these statements, including photographs from the crime scene that support Elvis's statement. On October 24th, Elvis told his sister, Joyce, that I am in trouble. I am going away for a long time. I was on the, that trail and that bridge with those girls when they were murdered. There were two other people there with me when it happened. Oh, wait, I missed that part. Was that in the body of it? So he's saying there was two other people. See, I would think that there was more. So that would only be three people altogether. Huh. So anyway, he's saying, unless of Joyce, maybe she's not remembering. And you know what I'm saying? Who knows? Um, or maybe two other. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to think if he could have two others. That'd be if it was him. Because they're saying that it could. Okay, so they're laying out Elvis, Brad, Patrick, and didn't they? They're thinking, oh, one of them could have just been waiting in the car, maybe. So maybe he's talking about actually being there. I could see maybe three of the guys actually there at the bridge in that area actually doing it, and one person like waiting in the car or the lookout, or, you know, I don't know. If this is the allegedly, you know what I'm saying? This is just like a hypothetical here because we don't know. And I'm, you know, I'm until I, till the trial and we see all this stuff for ourselves. Like, I mean, I don't think we're ever going to know. Hopefully then we'll know, but we still might not know because sometimes you people have trials and, and you're still like even more confused after you see everything. So actually after we see everything, we still might not, we still might not be sure on what happened. But anyway, so he's saying two other people are there with me when that happened i spit on one of the girls after they were killed hmm wow if holder was at work the day the deputy showed up to vet holder's alibi it would have been a great time to interview holder and those around him to better determine if holder was at work monday Attachment um says features Messer's photograph says that Messer was on home detention for January 2018 meth arrest. This document okay, Johnny's ex-girlfriend told investigators that Johnny attempted to recruit others all the time. Um which defense received in discovery and appears to be a document prepared for a PowerPoint. Interview of Brandon Mansfield. Brad Holder posted one of the photos mimicked and recreated by Elvis. A cross formed out of sticks on the ground found also found in Exhibit 62. Although the side-by-side -side photos are not dated, this solo photo is found providing the date Holder posted. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that one. So he has, oh, actually, those, hold on, you guys. People that know about this whole Odinism, before you leave, hold on, let me finish just going through these few more pages. Before you leave, I want to ask you if um, 
because I didn't include this in my video. If some of these, um, like a, the like pendants or whatever that Elvis has, if those have anything to do with Odinism, because I just want to like try to see his claim that oh he's Christian and he's you know he doesn't have any history with that. I'm just I'm just curious what these pendants mean and if it does date back to anything Odinism. Um, here let me get that now because I I I I, I really want to know that real quick. Because he just did a um, that post that I read. Those two posts were, I mean, the ones where he was talking about it, those are just from the last couple of days. So that post where he says he's Christian, that was just from yesterday. Okay, hold on. Oh, thanks, John. I'm sorry. I feel like it might be annoying people in chat. This sounds like a lot of gossip to me. I wish I was on it. But did, we, did you read the this document, Jonathan? I feel like read it and then let's talk. Because I, I thought you said you really weren't familiar with this case. All of us have been, most of us here probably have been studying this case for seven years. We've been led down so many different rabbit holes and everything. So if you are new to the case, I don't think, I feel like you, maybe you should at least read the documents before you make up your mind on that. Okay, so maybe get a little bit familiar with it because there's a lot to it. Um. Shoot, I'm trying to think where I where I have the hold on. Where I have the um those last ones. Give me one minute. I think it's in this video. Okay. Why is it here? Well, let me turn the volume down on this. You guys hear that? Man, whoever's playing today, they're having a big party. It is Ohio State. Is that what you guys are saying? Because they're partying it up at my neighbor. You could hear them. They're going crazy. Sounds like there's like a bunch of... Look, they're screaming again. What just... Did something just happen? 30 months. Thank you, Aussie True Crime. Oh, hi, beautiful Zab. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. I would just go to the Facebook account and just bring it up now to show you. But he has like seriously like so many different accounts. I don't remember which one it was in. But he has these pendants that I was trying to um here. Let me just I'll go through that. I'm uh, I'm trying to think which one who, who is in here that is very familiar with this. Maybe you could give me your email and I could send it to you and then you could tell me if it means anything. Cause did I screenshot it? Hold on, hold on. I don't, yeah. It's just going to take me too long to go through all his things, but dang it. That'd be important because it would be like if he's lying about him being involved with anything else. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it wouldn't be for sure, but it would be interesting if they did have something to do with like Odinism and then he's claiming, oh, I'm Christian, like he has nothing to do with it. And he's posting like, signs that are and though oh another thing i was wondering is did you guys see like those metal it looks like it's probably like parts to something i'm wondering if he's posting those trying to make like seeing runes in them that's what i was thinking when i was looking at them i mean it might not mean anything but it almost looks like they're like he's making trying to make like runes out of like those metal i'll show you let me see i'm just gonna try to find it because it's gonna drive me nuts and i want to know the answer if it's anything to do with it. He's got like at least two, maybe more than two. Um like pendant type things that look like they're some kind of I don't know really what it is. Some kind of something like maybe a religious thing or I'm just gonna go through like three of his of his and if oh wait a minute hold on guys Hmm, hold on. It's like 
No, he doesn't say anything. All right, let me try this one. It's like a black screen, and it's like sounds like traffic. Oh, there's the Barbie. Oh, he posts. Oh, yeah, he posts those July. Don't and mostly I feel is a distraction and part of the cover up. Well, yeah. It could, yeah, the cover. Oh, I could agree. The cover up, but cover up for what though? What are they covering up? You know, what are they trying to cover up? Is what? What do you think? So you're agreeing that it's probably not what they're claiming. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. That, I, that like I said, I don't know who who did it, but it just isn't going to be what. It doesn't seem like it is what they're saying. Like it's just Richard and. He just has no, absolutely no motive. I mean, it makes no sense. What's his freaking motive? I mean, I still don't know what are they going to say. What are What is the um, state saying his motive is? Does anybody know? Here, let me just share what I'm watching real quick. So this is from his, you're not going to be able to hear the sound. But I'll, if he does talk, I'll share it a different way. But he's not talking in this. He's just filming. I'm trying to find that pendant, like I said, and I'm finding videos that I didn't see going through all his stuff. Um, so he has a lot of um, like posts where it looks like he's at. Now that doesn't look like uh, where the uh, by the bridge, right? But it looks like there's water, and it looks like it could possibly be that location i'm not saying this one specifically but it's i'm not familiar enough with the area though to know the difference of seeing like something that kind of looks like it and something that really is gonna be it but okay so that didn't have any sound it was just the sound of nature um like where is that at could that be that area i don't know That's what I want to know if his sister died. Because, I mean, this is, where is it? She was just there commenting right here. But, oh, no, he she must still be alive. Look, look, people, back off and leave my brother alone. Okay, enough is enough. I thought you guys said, so you're saying Mary's the one that died. So Joyce is the one that said, hold on, they named Joyce as saying, which one is the one that said, um, uh, I don't know. They specifically named Joy. Here, well, let's see what she says. Watch. I'll put Joyce in. So what page? we got to 78 for the footnotes, so I can go back and check later. But let me see which one. I forget what Joyce said. One sister said one thing, and then, okay. Elvis's sister Joyce was interviewed by law enforcement on two previous occasions. Joyce had denied that Elvis had made incriminating statements to her. However, in this third interview... Joyce re reluctantly recounted to Ferency and Murphy that Elvis had made to her in the fall of 2017. According to Joyce, sometime in the fall, Elvis moved in with her, Joyce, following the death of her boyfriend. Joyce recounted the following statements Elvis made to her in the kitchen October 2017, at a time when they were living together under the same roof. I am in a lot of trouble. I'm going away for a long time. I was on that trail and that bridge with those girls when they were murdered. There were two other people there with me and it when it happened. I spit on one of the girls after the, oh, what we just read after one of they were killed. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what is that all about? I mean, I know it says she reluctantly recounted, but you don't, I don't think she would make up something like saying her brother did that if it wasn't true you would get you would think she'd be more reluctant because she doesn't want to get him in trouble dang um says although elvis reassured murphy that he elvis would be able to explain the spit it is unknown at this point if elvis has provided any explanation because he lied and said he didn't know johnny messer even though johnny said he 
not only knew Elvis, but Elvis was interested in joining Messer and Brad's Vinlander crew. So it does, it says, unfortunately, this spit comment made by Elvis to Murphy was not recorded. So how do they know about that? That So they talked to Murphy. Did Murphy admit it? But Elvis did admit at a later interview that he somewhat remembered this comment concerning the spit. Oh, the spit. Oh, not the one with Joy, sorry. So the spit comment. Well, we know it wasn't recorded. They said it was. He was just outside the car, right? I was picturing it where they just got an interview with him, right? And he, they were dropping him off, I think. And he said that. Or maybe he was still in the car. I don't know. Okay. Um, concerning the spit, Elvis's second interview, June 20, 2018, at the 1440 mark, where he said he somewhat remembered that comment. Unredacted supplement number 542, Joyce interview marked as exhibit 64. Elvis unequivocally denied knowing the recruiter, Johnny Messer. However, in October, interview Johnny tells a different story and that John um Johnny states that Elvis lived with his Johnny's uncle Billy Messer. Johnny further stated in the interview that he would take firewood to his uncle's home during the winter that Elvis was living with Billy. Most importantly, Johnny mentions Elvis's boss um described father figure Ned Smith and Elvis's roommate Rod Abrams all were interested in joining Messrs. Vinlander Club. It says the importance of Elvis lying to police about knowing Johnny cannot be understated. Elvis had to know that if Elvis was connected to Johnny, then he and Elvis would eventually be connected to Brad. It should again be noted that it is interesting that Ned pursued an attorney for Elvis and that Ned wanted to sit in on Elvis's interview. Okay, so Okay, let's see. Um Talking about how Elvis's phone was not used for nine hours um, on that day, and it was stayed at his house. But Rod stated that Elvis had taken his phone to Muncie when he gave him the alibi that they visited a friend that was sick that day. But Elvis said he stayed home. His phone was at home, but yet Rod is saying, oh yeah, he took his phone with him to Muncie. Um, talking about how it's unlikely that he would not touch his phone for nine hours, so he purposely left it at home. Um, okay, so trying to think, think of what else we could look up from this. To oh, we are looking at the interview. Let's see. Hold on, let's see if there's any other notes. I know, I, I don't know that pendant. I'm probably going to have to. Oh, wait, yeah, let's just go back to this real quick. Let's see what she says. So Joyce says, that's what, <laughs> I mean, I have so much going on. I want to find that pendant, but now I'm interested to see what else, if Joyce answers any questions in the comments. Let's see if they ask her anything. Um, okay, so see, Joyce, you don't need to unfriend me because your payment, I'm not forcing you to do anything. Why did you send me a picture of Libby and Abby? So Joyce is saying somebody must have sent her a picture of them. And then some Michelle says, Why are you unfriend me? If you don't mind me asking, which sister did he tell he killed the girls to? Everybody has their own opinions, but we want truths. Says, have you read this uh, recent document? It stated that your brother told you what he did, and he was that he was there. What are your thoughts, knowing that a man in prison right now, taking the heat, might be innocent, 
He has a family. Please do the right thing. So, I mean, did he or did he not tell you? There'll probably be subpoenas to testify. You're the one that snitched on him. That's the right thing to do. Your brother told you he was at the crime scene. I don't think he's smart enough to figure out how to kill anyone, though. So the Vinlanders probably just used him. The courts will probably go light on him as long as he agrees to testify. You did the right thing. And Joyce responds, and she says, Look, back off, okay? I'm done dealing with this crap, okay? I'm 63 years old and not in good health, so please just leave me alone. So... Yeah, I really carry my phone out of the house. Okay, so interesting. Wait, the sign. Um, but this is interesting because instead of her, well, she might. I haven't went through all the, the things, but you would think if this isn't true, you would think her first freaking response is they're lying. That's not true. I never said that. I'm sorry, if if she didn't say that, if she did not say that her brother was a freaking murderer, basically, or was there during a murder, if she did not say that, there's no way that she would just say back off and she wouldn't just at least defend herself and say that. Now, I could see if somebody just wanted to ignore it and not say anything, but she is saying stuff. She's trying to get him to leave her alone. She's trying to you know, say stuff. So why wouldn't the first thing she says? No, I didn't say that. It's a lie. Unless she knows that they have taped interviews. She knows it's going to be on the record. So that just, this just shows me that she did say it. But like I said, let's see. Let's see if she ends up saying that. Uh, not like that. Just, yeah, just make sure you believe me. Message me on Messenger. I have something to show you. Hello, beautiful. I love your post. You seem like a nice woman. I'm trying to send you a request, but it's not going through. Decided to drop a comment. Please send me requests so we could be friends. I don't know. I just think that they, she would say that. So, I, dude, I think that she said that. What is this? I've never played that game. Why am I on there? You must just do that when you're on a page. Um, I don't like that. That's freaky. They put your picture right on there as you scroll. I don't like that. Uh, so Mary's the one that died, you guys? Because Joyce is alive still. Well, but so Teresa, though, do you really, but you think that they're making up everything? I know that they're trying to do their job, but you don't think that Joyce said that and, and Elvis said that? So why would she say that? Why would Elvis tell her that? And why would she say that? Like I said, I don't condone like people attacking. No, not at all. I would love to interview him and ask him questions. But as far as like attacking him, no. I've no, I would never do that. And I don't no, I'm not I don't want that's not what I'm saying. Um, but I just like to look into things and it's just interesting to see if. See if we can figure this out and if there's any anything that like hints at like hints at anything that this could be true or um I feel like from her not for her not like saying I didn't say it, I feel like at least it's probably true that they said that. Now, why did they say that? Maybe I mean people do sometimes say they they uh they basically confessed to murder that they didn't do. That's happened. So it could have just been like him trying to look cool or something. So, you know, but I do believe he must have said that for her not to even have came out and answered. And, you know, she's reading because she's responded. Come on. She would be like, no. Right? How would Elvis know? I know. That's what I'm saying. I know lawyers lie, Teresa. But we're talking about the stuff that's like um on record. That they couldn't lie about. That's the concerning stuff. So like I said. It does seem like Elvis must have said that. Could there have been another reason. And he isn't. He just said that. I mean possibly. But it, I'm thinking he did. With how she just responded. And how he never denied that. When they kept asking him. He would not deny it. So let me see if I could find the dang pendants now real quick. 
Let's see if there's any uh I like to know what this is. I found it in a creek nature walk. Isn't it a log? Or not? Doesn't it kind of look like a log? Somebody says Deer Creek. Deer Creek. This Cuban cigar. Oh, is that small? It looks really big in that. I can't tell how big it is because you have to compare it to something. It's not compared to anything. Um, I don't know, guys. I'm so confused. I'm really confused. You know, like I said, I'm what? Dude, my. My freaking computers. Okay. Wolfpack, I could not get your comment off the screen. It was froze. Um, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to send it. Somebody emailed me that knows a lot about, like, maybe the um, symbols and, and stuff. And then when I find the pendant, I could send it. And you could tell me if it does have anything to do with Odinism. Because then that would show that he's kind of lying because he says he's basically almost claiming he doesn't have anything to do with it. He's Christian. But if he would have, if he's like posting pendants of it, it would show some kind of association with it, right? Um, oh, look, this is her eight weeks ago. My brother doesn't live in the country. You just like to pick on city people. It's been years since we live in the country. I'm 63 years old. And my brother Elvis is 52 old, 52 years old. He used to live with me until I told him his, told his friend, wait, told his friend Rod, it must be Rod Abrams, had to go. So my little brother decided to move out him and his friend to become homeless. My brother lives in the woods, but his friend Rod left him after my brother bought him a new cell phone and put minutes on it, so Rod called his other friend to come and get him to take him back to Connorsville. So now my brother lives all alone in the woods. I don't feel sorry for him. He made his choice to become homeless. So this is eight weeks ago, it looks like. And Elvis says, let me straighten you out, sister. No, it all... I have found a woman. I'm leaving. Thank you. Joy says, Elvis, who are you kidding? You can't straighten out this old bird. Hell, you can't straighten your own, your own life. Oh, and then this is four days ago. They're coming at him. You know what? Tell us when, when your brother admitted to you what he did. And they send a little part of the article, an article. But let me see what people are saying up here. Wait. Let's see. You need to stop making fun of city people. They are just as good as you are. Just because you was raised in the country doesn't mean you're better than Elvis. Or better than anyone else. Elvis Fields. So keep your mouth shut about city people. God doesn't like it when you're being ugly to others. Everything you say or do wrong, God writes and down in the book of life. Just remember that little brother. And remember you had a good home to live in. But you, oh, she's, she's actually talking to Elvis. At first I thought she was just, the sentences were worded re weird. But no, she's like talking about him. Uh, it says, um, you had a good home to live in, but you chose to become homeless. Now one made you leave, you choose to be with Rod, and look how he treated you. So remember what comes around goes around. You bought him a new phone and put minutes on it, and he called his friend to come and get him to take him back to Connorsville. He left you in the woods all by yourself. So like I said, what goes around comes around. Somebody says, Patricia is a fraud. What do you mean? Thank you, Kimberly. She asked for your cash app. Okay, thank you for telling me. Does the trailer still smell like a basement? Mind your own business. What? I live in city my entire life. Everybody deserves a lifestyle they enjoy. Hope you enjoy your country life. 
And that's what, oh, that's what she said. My brother doesn't live in the country. just like to pick on city people. It's been years since we live in the country. Okay, so then we read the rest. Okay, well. Huh. Oh, here's not. Here's another one she responded. So this is from July when he posted. Some Elvis is, er, wait. Joyce does a cat. Joyce says, you're welcome, Bubby. Elvis says, Joyce, stop. And Joyce says, why? I'm not doing anything wrong. Huh. I made this silver out of a fork. Joyce says, that's my brother. He made that ring favorite. So I'm saying he has so many accounts that I wasn't able to go through all of them. So I haven't even seen this stuff. Here's the ones that don't, they're just like, there's nothing on them. Just like the sound of outside. Yeah, somebody says, I listened to the entire post. I didn't hear anything. And Elvis says, yes. He says, name calling. This post is dark. And then Elvis says, name calling. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is tight. Oh, I like, yeah, I like camping. <laughs> so Joyce says, that's my brother. He ran away from home all because he couldn't have his way. He was living with me. My name is Joyce Moffat. I'm his sister. And <laughs> she's. She posts the thing. Of, why is that so funny right now? She posts the thing. Can you guys see it? It's a guy running really fast. I can't take it. Oh my god. I think he does want. Hi Ryan. I think he does. Want, I think she does want him to move back in. Sounds like she's like mad because he left. She wants him back. Um. No, I didn't go to CrimeCon. This would have been a bad year for me to go. I feel like I'm not necessarily, yeah, very, yeah. No, I didn't. Um. Okay, no, that's not. I just want to see if she, oh, here we go. <laughs> she makes me laugh for some reason. So, <laughs> this post is of lawnmowers. Somebody says, keep up the good work. Thank you. That's my brother, always playing with lawnmowers. <laughs> and then this Gary guy talks this is four days ago tell us what you told the cops your brother said tell the world you spoke of God you know he writes down all th all wrongs don't you keeping info that can give little girls justice is wrong you'll have to answer for him mm, she didn't respond on that post here's the Barbie doll one Let's see if she responds on this. Oh, so we know he's like camping in the tent when he posts this. But he does say it's a... this who, who remember this doll Christmas? I guess only a few were made before 1990s. Almost done with the trailer. Okay. I want some more from Joyce. I don't know. She makes me laugh. Is there any more? Nope. I guess. She, oh, here we go. Here we go. Old Pepsi and Coke bottle. Let's see. <laughs> thank you, dear love. Thank you. Thank you. Joyce shows a picture of like the real Coke and Dr. Pepper. And he said, she says, I'm Elvis's sister. These are the real ones that's never been opened. Those are mine. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, here's a, have you ever seen a coyote this skinny? I guess it might be way over there. I don't really see much. Um, he must be sick. Why is he starving? I coyotes killed two of my cats. They're very smart. Yeah, so she's definitely sick. Maybe call and get it checked out or whatever. Where can I find a real woman to today that knows how to cook and sew with a needle? It's like a little boy afraid to come a real man and work a job. New generation. They call the skills and knowledge. Stick into my old past. Let me make this bigger so you guys can see. All right. Oh, that's real too big. Okay. Left of about a four long foot long water moccasin. There, it's headed to look left of the snake. Okay. 
Here, let's see. No. <laughs> I don't know why I want to see more of what if Joy says anymore. So I wonder when he moved out. So maybe like now. Oh, here we are. No, that's the same one we looked at. If that's why we won't see her now because he's living it's when he's living with her still. Whoa, look at that coat. Well, now I know I think Bridge Guy's coat was a little bit lighter. It's like lighter blue, but it kind of looks like it in a way. My buddy stopped in Brookville today. He went fishing. I went fossil hunting way at the top of the hill. Laid his old, oh, it's his old filthy coat through it in back of the truck. He got and washed it. Okay. I don't know, guys. All right. I don't know if I, are you guys bored with this? It was fun while it lasted. Thanks, Mother Nature. Anyway, um, I don't think we're going to get any more of Joyce because it's probably... Heck, DM me privately, babe. Are these still available? Huh. Anyway, well, that was interesting. Oh, was that a turtle? Oh, he was talking about the turtle. I couldn't understand what he was saying about it in that post he did the other day where he's talking about not having a car. He mentioned a turtle. I was so confused, but I don't know. 600 years old. All right. I should end this. I was kind of trying to be done by nine, and I just kept going. Um, I just wanted to see if if there was anything more interested in the side notes, but oh wait, when Kathy was asked what length of her, oh, let's see this, huh? Find attached Doug Carter's April 26th press conference in which Betsy Blair's sketch 2 is unveiled to the public. It's marked as 109. The fact that Sarah Carbaugh's sketch had become second, secondary to the investigation is confusing considering Liggett's and Holman's claim that sketch 1 and 2 are the same person. Find attached videotape interview with Richard that will provide an image of Richard Allen. Find attached transcript of the statement of Richard Allen's wife, Kathy. When Kathy was asked what length Richard's hair would have been in 2017, Kathy said Richard has always had short hair. In fact, when asked for further description how her husband has always worn her his hair, Kathy said he shaved it, explaining that he had always shaved since being in the National Guard. It says, um, Richard Allen's October 13th, 2022 interview. Richard does not realize that he's being interrogated as a suspect until much later in the interview. And then it says, Richard tells Liggett and prosecutor investigator Mullins from the prosecutor's office that he had arrived around noon at the 10 hour mark or whatever. He says he arrived around noon. Oh, that's that. We read that already. Okay. Oh, wait. Are you in here? Because I'm live. I can have you really confused, but intrigued. She would read this and let me. 
Wait, what true crime? Did you just call? I can have you all really confused by true. Wait, what are you saying now? Sorry, I've not looked at the um <laughs> the um uh, chat. I've been looking at my screen. I don't have the chat up on my uh, main screen. What's going on? Am I missing something in chat? Hold on. Do you have a channel? Up till 2 a.m. with your chat. Whoever did this, we need the right people. I'm confused what, is he, what you guys are talking about. Um, I was trying to uh, have this done by what time 9 30 or started true crime that's why i started so early are you live right now though hold on let me just i just wanted to finish this but i have, I have no idea what you guys are talking about or why hold on a second okay yeah i don't think there's anything else if i find anything else i'll let you know let, let me go oh there you are <laughs> Uh, let me go to ch uh, chat real quick and see what you guys are talking about. Sorry, I didn't know you were, you were going to pop up right there. I hope I didn't. I don't think you care that it's your Facebook. Okay, what is happening? I, no, I know true crime. I wanted to. What are you doing tomorrow? I was hoping we would, we could talk. I ha I wanted to look into some things that people were bringing up, and I was hoping you would know. I keep saying like, hopefully tomorrow we could. Um, talk about it i told people to email me some of the stuff about how elvis's sister died and how um there's a few things that i wanted to talk to you about that but i am so behind in chat now i don't even know what okay you used to have a great cook with your sister wait what who are you talking to joyce you used to have a great cook with your sister why is everybody dodging all the national hold on i can discuss case because i am so interested in nine people places like no so i can have all really confused intrigue i talk to talk about all this today all day i never say the same thing <laughs> i truly believe you <laughs> never really um sorry i was not look i'm just now catching up with chat i got like into the uh <laughs> Elvis and his sister. Why was that cracking me up? I want, I want more for some reason. I don't know why she was making me laugh. Um. Oh, thanks, Sean. Oh, the cutest girl. You're silly. No, but thank you. Um. True crime. Hold on. I'm trying to catch up with your saying. You asked them if you were bored, and I said they would never find make their minds bend. And Click is the only one who has responded. To it. Now Click is the only one who has responded to the claims. Wait. You asked them if they were bored, and I said. They wouldn't ever find things to make their mind. Wait, I, they wouldn't ever find things to make their minds bend. This case is this case is great. Yeah, which Elvis? Teresa, it's true crime. Elvis Fields. Why? What? What Elvis are you talking about? Um. Reread Amber Holder's story for the peeps on page 56. Okay. But true crime, you never answered me. What can you want to do something tomorrow? I'm still confused what I missed. Because what you you were calling me. And I thought maybe you just didn't know I was alive. And then I just saw that you were in here. So am I like, am I missing something? I'm still a little bit confused. But you said 56? Hold on. Let me know. We could set up something tomorrow. I'm about ready to end this. Like I said, I was trying to end this by 9 or like 9.15 because I thought I wanted to come to see you. But um, I'm trying to find this gosh dang darn pendant I freaking can't find. Do you hear that? All saying, are you here? <laughs> Did they score? Ohio State must have scored. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
That's crazy. I don't think True Crime investigates. Where'd he go now? Oh, you won? <laughs> okay, do you guys hear that? <laughs> Well, yeah, let me know, uh, True Crime. Sorry I couldn't answer because I'm on this live. Um, like I said, I thought you, maybe you just didn't know I was live and you were trying to call. Um, but, okay, so you want me to read this? Oh, yeah, and then I'll wait to see if he responds. What was, so wait, what was, what was going on now? Did I miss something? In chat, guys, when we reached him in youth football. Okay, so you want me to read this? Hold on, let me add this. Dude, my freaking computers. This computer just keeps freezing out. There we go. Um, This right here. Actually, it was in that pre-recorded I read, but no, now it's not even coming up. I guess this is freaking time for me. To, oh, there it is. I should probably get going, though. Okay, we're, this right here. Who told me to read this? Was that you, AK, or this part right here where she said that Brad spoke of Patrick one time when he was intoxicated and said that he and Patrick got into a fight and they no longer speak to each other. He told her that he and Westfall were in the woods near a river conducting a ritual. One of them said or did something that the other did not agree with, and they no longer talk to each other. She said the river was near Patrick's house. Note, Brad has a Facebook post with him and Patrick together. Is that what you're talking about? I'm probably not going to read all of this because I think I read it in that pre-recorded that I played. Um, but it's basically, yeah, that's not, it's got to be that because you said the thing that Amber said. Okay. Um, they're going to look at it, but it's a TV. Oh, okay. Yeah, AK, I've been having a fun chat with you um, about everything. So yeah, true crime. I definitely want, because you had a new statement from the cop who looked into Odinism, he claims rituals didn't happen. Oh, that's what, see, I knew I missed something. Wait, where? Wait, wait, I'm game for anything. I'll have to let you know what a couple people were talking about. Um, that Do you know anything? Well, we'll talk about behind the scenes, and then I'll ask you if like, we could talk about it, because I'm sure what I learned today from some of the chat, you probably already know, and I didn't, I don't know the details. It's about, um, like the side, the more the side that you you were talking about, like the corruption and like law enforcement angle, which I haven't got into at really as far as on this video too much. But um, you said I had the I had the new statement from the cop who looked okay. Where hold on, let me see. Where's the new statement? Statement. So now what are you thinking, dude? This is just. But of course, I'm not surprised. Oh, you're saying the cop who looked into it. I'm game for anything. I was calling. Okay, dude, hold on a second. I thought you were saying like a, another cop. Okay, ritual. Or was it released? Dang. Hold on. Is it, did, it, did it come out or where did you get it? Is it like... Uh, they're reviewing it. Someone emailed. Oh, someone emailed it to me. Okay. Sorry, I've been trying to check my. Yeah, it's probably one of those things where I'm not going to get the email. Why am I not getting any of my freaking email? Oh yeah, here we go. Thank you. Wow, you. I haven't looked in chat forever. So that was like a half hour ago. You emailed that to me. Okay, cool. So I got Jeremiah. You said about the pendants. So yes, when I find those, I'll send you screenshots. Um, I got somebody said. It's the statement. I haven't clicked on it yet, but let me click on it. So dang, that kind of makes me mad. That was a half hour ago. And I'm over here rambling and I didn't see it. Okay, so let's see. St t Todd, click statement. Oh, it was from the murder sheets. How does the murder sheets get everything like before it's even public i feel like oh it's under hold on this is what you email me to link to this so this is under 
Are you? Is that what they just replied? Oh no! Cl oh, Todd clicks on the Frank's memoranda. Okay. So it says right here, it says, statement from Todd Click. There are two things I would like to clear up immediately. Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy were not Rushville cops. Detective Ferency was a detective from the Terry Hunt Hot Police Department that was assigned to the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. Detective Murphy was an Indiana State Police detective that was also assigned to the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. So the FBI was associated with the investigation until at least July 2021. Secondly, no one in law enforcement believes Abby and Libby were killed in a ritual sacrifice. That is the defense twisting facts for sensationalism. You could quote me on those two items. So who is this is click? So um so the FBI was associated with the investigation until possibly Abby and Libby were ritual. So hold on, I'm trying to think of everybody that the uh, defense listed. So, Ferency and Murphy, I remember a click. Oh, sorry, I'm reading these to myself. I should just read them out loud since I'm reading it. So it says, thanks for posting this. I don't think you're being nitpicky. It's just an unsatisfying statement. I don't think it's surprising that he doesn't believe the murder of a ritualistic sacrifice. The thing about the two officers not being Rushville cops might be important or not. Either way, I don't think anyone can expect him to release any meaningful statements to the, to the press since the court hasn't even started soaring thing. Yeah, so does the FBI, so it says even the FBI doesn't believe it? I don't know. The FBI was associated till, since up till 2021. Spoiler alert, but it's well known locally that Click was recently recruited by the, oh lord, another rabbit hole, recruited by the Odins? Where does that say that? He has even been spotted at several of the stick parties they throw in the woods? What? Word is he was promised a high-level position within the Odin sect if he flip-flops the, on the report hero. I don't know, guys. Now I think we need proof, jurist, D, jurist Dr. Pepper. You can't just say that. Where did you hear it? I know I'm talking to myself because this person's not in my chat, but like, where did this, like, what? Where did that come from? I just want to see what uh, some of the people are saying about it. So this is just setting up a straw man. One doesn't have to take from the defense document a full belief in the murders being a ritual call to agree that the document does achieve its intended purpose, namely making the case that Odinus or White's Avenue and alternate suspects should have been more thoroughly investigated and should have been mentioned by law enforcement. Which would be great, but obviously they violate the gag order, so it's just a statement being discussed. It says, I think, in the oh, he is the one. I was trying to think which one is Click. He is the one that, wait a minute, isn't he the one that did the, made the letter? I think in view of the apparent facts that he hired an attorney to help craft a letter and sent it by certified mail means he feels or felt at one point there was something wrong with the case. Click letter, click affidavit, and click certified mail receipt to prosecutor are, by the way, by the, is that, is that, the first three items listed in the exhibits page, we will have to wait, it seems to find out exactly what his issue with the case was, I guess. Yeah, so then why, uh, the, nah, it doesn't make any sense. Why would he make sure that. 
he gets that letter. Yeah, something's still not making sense for him to be the one that came out. What? Respond to the crazy. Well, no, I think true crime. Where did you get yours? It's from. Are you talking about because it's from they're quoting from this, right? Isn't that so? Wait, where did Mur? I don't want to click on this because uh, you know it's their podcast, but they don't. So where did they get? Did they have Todd click on? Have you guys listened to this? True, I'm certain. That, so do you? Do you have more than that? True crime, because you said you were going to show you what what, I, what you had. Was it from this here, from Todd, from um, Murder Sheet, or do you have a longer statement? Yeah, that, that this. Do you know anything about this, too? I have to write that down. I want to talk about that um, tomorrow, if you can. Greg Ferency being murdered. I think it was. Is that right? So if this is this huge cover-up, it wouldn't be that weird somebody lying. But anyway, the cops are extremely capable of lying. Yeah. Oh, so you listen to the podcast? Okay. So I'm not going to play that here, but I guess that's what I, I took that as. He quoted, they were quoting from what was said on the, yeah, statement from Todd, what was said on the podcast. Okay, well, I don't even know what to make out of it. Him out of all people. That that makes no sense because he made this big thing about, I don't know, something doesn't seem right up to this. So let's talk about this tomorrow, Anthony. I got to go. Oh, I got to eat something and drink some water. And um, I can't even believe I'm on this long. Thought, dang it. I was only going to be on a couple. No, it's fine. But holy crap, time just goes by. Um, How's your string to keep off? Yeah. I mixed alternate, yeah, I think. I don't, this is just fishy. It's making my head hurt. <laughs> like, man, maybe I should have just, uh, I know what I'm saying. I should go party with them. Like, I don't even know which neighbors it is. Um, oh, I know. I figured. <laughs> That's why I'm not playing it. They just, they just, it just seems like they would be. Yeah, somebody that I, I don't, I never heard anything, but I just, sometimes you could just tell what types are going to not want to share. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, yeah, guys. Dang, I'm like now just like everything that we just went through and then just seeing that, it like, I am, I thought I couldn't even be. I'm <laughs> more confused, but what else did he say, Anthony? Oh, why do I keep doing that? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. I don't even know. This makes no freaking sense. This is making me think we're never gonna freaking get. No, uh, we're not gonna ever know for sure what happened. This is ridiculous. We're never gonna get to the bottom of it. Are we? What do you think, Anthony? I'm I'm actually anxious now to talk to you about all this. I'm like, especially now that that came out. So yeah, I think it's better tomorrow. We get to let's just like absorb this, think about it, and then I want to. I'll uh, message you a couple of things that I wanted to bring up that I learned today, and see what if you know anything about it, and we could discuss them tomorrow, and then you could discuss that angle because, yeah, I don't know. The whole corruption stuff, man. I remember Matt getting into that. And it was just like, holy crap. Like, even like corruption going on that's maybe like indirectly kind of related to this in a way. Because it's like big in Delphi. You know what I'm saying? So like it does somehow associated with it and stuff. I was just like, wow. I remember going down that like for months when Matt was sharing stuff, like looking into stuff. Um, and then I was like, oh my God, my head is hurting. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, Wolfpack Click is the one that came out. 
he was the one that went on that podcast and I guess said that. So that's the thing. I mean, either he could be threatened, he could be intimidated, he could be like threatened in a way that he has to say that. I don't know. So Anthony, you listened to it. Did it sound like he was being sincere? Like, did it sound, I know it's probably, did he even show his face or it was just audio? I'm going to, I'm going to listen to it. Um, I think I'm going to, I've been taking my speaker into the shower with me. <laughs> Cause it's like, I can't even, I feel like I don't even want to waste any time in the shower. Um, as far as like, I have so some, like for the last, like, maybe like two months I've been taking it <laughs> into the shower. So like, I'll like make a playlist. <laughs> so I think I'm going to listen to that when I take a shower. Um, and like I said, it might be hard, you know, it's, it's better to be able to see somebody. And I think that it's just audio, right. But just to kind of hear, you know, if you think like, what's your first instinct? Do you think he's being legit? Yeah. Well, AK, let me read that again. Well, how the, hold on. Now you got me wanting to read that again, his exact words. Let's see. Well, the statement, but like I said, we're going to have to, uh, oh, dang, it's not going to let me. My one comp my one uh thing is so froze. I'll have to here, I'll have to do this. Hold on. Go like this and then hurry up and my other screen's froze. It won't let me add it. Okay. Um let's see how he said it again. Like I said, I want to actually listen to, it, but it says there are two things I would like to clear up immediately. Detective Ferency and Detective Murphy were not Rushville cops, which okay. Not a Big deal. Uh, I just want to see the second part. Um, it says, No one in law enforcement believes Abby and Libby were killed in a re ritual sacrifice. That is the defense twisting facts for sensationalism. You can quote me on those two things. I don't know. No, it does say that. It says believes that they were uh killed. Why does that wording seem odd? Like it's almost like you, the way that they're worded is very I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm just so like leery of anything now that's coming out of any of the law enforcement officers about this case. Now everything I hear, I'm like so Oh, what is the word? I can't even think of the right word, but it's just like, I'm like, hum, wait a minute. Is that, what do they mean? Or why do they say it like that? Or they're not, <laughs> I'm going to just be questioning any of them, but because it's like no one in law enforcement believes it. Um, And they say it killed in a ritual sacrifice. So Call me. So hold on. Let me think though. That's exactly what it is. Damage control. Alan says. I'm sitting here like WTF. Yeah. Questioning everything. Yeah. Dark sea. Called it. Well, John, we, you can't just be like one person and then it's like, oh, yep, that's the answer. I mean, there's so much different things going on here. Like, you know, the whole thing is, is like you can't like that there was you can't trust. There's so much corruption that it's like hard to trust them. So. B.H. and his son are three Masons. I don't know, guys. I have to go, though. I don't even know what to say. I'm, like, just still kind of in shock that it, it Click said that. It doesn't... It's just not making sense for some reason. Like, something doesn't seem right. What's fair use, Alan? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. People... <laughs> it doesn't matter. People... Are you talking about the... um To use, like, the podcast? They could still strike you, and then you have to freaking fight it. It's a pain, and then if they you appeal it and then they don't back down, then they could take you to court, and then you're gonna have to go to court, which you know it's worth it's worth the fight as far as if 
you really want to use it and you know what I'm saying and you use it but like right now it's not going to be worth it because we get the gist what they said and I'm just everybody else just go watch it and then we could discuss it a little bit tomorrow um well yeah we'll discuss it a lot tomorrow if you want some people go watch it it's just sometimes it's not worth the fight you know and sometimes it is but I just hate how I feel like in the community, it's like we should share. Like, I don't, I always let people use my stuff. It's like, it should be like a, in it together, like share, share the stuff to help us all, you know, help how everybody help each other. That's why, you know, I respect Anthony, you so much. Like you're, you're very, um, like a team player, which you should be, you know, but, and I'm not saying they're not, I don't know, but like, I don't know. Sometimes you just get that feeling that you're like, ah, so I don't want to risk it. So I'm not, don't not say anything bad about them. Cause I don't even know anything about them, but sometimes you just get a feeling about something. And sometimes you don't. And sometimes it's like, ah, I don't think they'd be cool with it. And then I usually stay away from those ones. And it's just sometimes not worth it. And then sometimes I guess wrong and I think people would be cool. And then I, you know, and then that's when it's like, no, if you use it in fair use, it's worth the fight. Like I would, I would go all the way to court. It's just, I don't know. To me, I'd rather just watch this one on my own and not take the chance. But um, anyway, all right, guys, I can't really see your uh, comments. I could see some of them, but this the screen that I look at them all, it's frozen. So they're just kind of like spotting. So I'll see like a couple and then it'll skip to the next one, but I can't scroll down them. So if you guys are saying things that it's important, I'm sorry, my computer, I need to, you know what sucks though? That's my other computer. So the computer that I have that glitch that doesn't let me, that why I was learning Streamlabs because Streamyard doesn't let me share my audio with it. That's the one that's frozen right now is a different one. So I might need two new computers. Oh, I don't even want to think about it. Anyway, um, trashy with my channel being so slow now. Can't afford two computers, let alone one. Or I can't afford one computer, let alone two. Um. Anyway. Um. I know I am giving myself a break. I'm just if I'm missing some chat, I'm just saying I'm. It's just I'm only able to see like, like five of them, and then it skips to, like a next thing. It won't let me scroll. Anyway. All right. I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm gonna. I'll be in front of the camera. I know I've been doing audio the last couple, but. I just wanted to play that video I did, so I figured I didn't need to be, but I wasn't expecting to be on this long. Because I swear, True Crime, I wanted to be off for yours, but it, it looks like you're, you didn't do yours, so now I don't feel bad. But that's why I ended up starting before, because I was going to do it tomorrow, but then I was wanted to have, I wanted to go have you on tomorrow. So I'm like, let me just do this one real quick, try to get this one done before yours. So then tomorrow we could hopefully do the other angle. Um, but yeah, um, what was I gonna say? I don't know. All right. You did wait. Oh dang, shoot. When then? Maybe I got your times mixed up. I thought it was like at 9 30. Well, I'm sorry. Dang, I swear my intentions. That's why I went on early. And that's why some of the stuff it was like <laughs> I wasn't even fully done editing mine so like i i uploaded it prematurely because i you could see how some of the stuff i didn't edit out and then the last stuff that with those pendants and stuff oh you got i don't know i'm not trying to make you feel bad at all i'm just trying <laughs> i hope that doesn't come across like i'm doing that all i'm saying is i was trying to be um what's the word um uh i can't even think of the word but i really wanted to see your guys's and i didn't want to go on at the same time but i don't know what happened anyway all right um he was killed outside the fbi building i watched silly southern tea you guys all right oh i read are you talking about the uh i read it out too are you talking about the uh documents i read it out a couple of days ago too i skipped a few pages here and there well more than a few but some of the stuff that wasn't as, or you might be talking about something else. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Um, Yeah, I can't even scroll down to, dang it. I want to see what you guys are saying. 
five. Okay, I see that five stream. Good. Uh, four days. When will you be able to do it? The law message you. All right, I'm going to go, guys. I'm going to go take a shower and listen to this. So you guys listen to this podcast so we could talk about it a little bit tomorrow and see what you guys think about it. Because I'm interested to see what else he says. Does he say a bunch more? Um. All right. It's hard to say, but why do I, I sometimes I have trouble like ending my stream. All right, I better end it. All right, let's see if this computer will let me. There we go. Okay, now this one I can see the comments. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Kaylee. Kaylee, Carly. All right, bye, guys. Have fun. Tomorrow, I don't know what time. I'm seeing what time. Oh, tomorrow you're not going to be late. It, but I got to present the view. You are not going to be here. Okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Wait, what? We'll be hearing some reply. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what time is better for you? I was, I was thinking maybe like late afternoon or early evening but are you available then i don't know can't believe my grandma did not come up at all because i thought for sure this was like good i'll be playing this video so if i need to like if she has like some issues during my live, but she, she didn't bought like nothing. She was fine. So it's it's very it's like a blessing when I could go all night and she's not coming up here worried about something or crying or oh she cries really easily and like worries. See I'm a warrior. Oh my gosh. She like so like it's to a point where it's like a so much that it's like annoying. <laughs> and not to be mean, but it's like annoying. It's like oh my God. So Oh, no, it's not like everything's fine. Oh, Lori. Hi, serendipity. But yeah, dude, not one. She hasn't, and nothing. <laughs> nothing. My mom had to go to a wedding. And so the wedding was really weird. It was like earlier today she went. And then in between, it was, they had like, because my mom doesn't drink. So they had like the reception and then like, Five hours later was the dinner. <laughs> so she came home in between um, and then went back. But I guess like from after the reception all the way to the dinner, it was like just drinking and stuff. Usually it's opposite. Usually it's like the wedding and then the dinner and then the drinking. <laughs> so I don't know. At least ones that I've been. Yeah, dementia is what she has. But it was funny before I was telling you guys how she was like, she was like, um, yeah, go check out True Crime Investigate. Sorry, I put that up and I realized, is that even your, you know how true, um, Mods, will you put his link? I don't even know when it does like the emojis. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Funny tiny lines up for her. Oh yeah. Johnny. Johnny. Um oh wait, hold on. But anyway, I was talking about how she with the, the freaking um oh wait, I wanted to tell you another funny thing. So my mom I like to tell you some funny stories like when your grandma does stuff funny. Wait, what did she say? Hot buttered. Wait, hold on. This was just today, and then I have another one about the dog food. So today she goes. Uh, was it hot butter? Warm butter. Well, uh, well I got to think of exactly what she said when the... Something like warm butter. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we have these cordless phones because we have a landline. And um, so, like, when the phone gets close to uh, dying, it'll say uh, battery dead or battery dead or something. It says it. It's so annoying, though. And she said something like... <laughs> I think it was like hot butter or warm butter. I have no idea. Me and my mom just cracked up. So she goes, 
hear the phone saying hot butter, hot butter. And she dead serious. She's like, here, you know, it needs to be on the charger. And I'm like, oh, hot butter. Like, okay. And I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. I was like, hot butter or warm butter. And she's like, warm butter, warm butter. <laughs> I was like, not even, like it was like normal that that meant that the phone needed charge. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, it's funny. It really is. You know, we're not trying to be mean, but it's just, <laughs> you got to laugh at some of the stuff. And then my mom has, the, we uh, have these toppers for Zeke's food that you put on top of the food because Zeke is just such a picky eater. So, but sometimes in order for him to like start eating, you have to like feed it by hand and then to show him that he likes it. Well, she, uh, my mom hands them to Zeke. Or hands it to Zeke. My grandma's like, here, give these to Zeke. Handful of them. She puts them in her hand. My mom puts her in, in grandma's hand. And my grandma just sticks them all in her mouth. <laughs> just sticks them all in her mouth. And <laughs> starts chewing. <laughs> my grandma's like, ew, these are gross. My mom's like, mom, those are for the dog. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh, they're home. All right. So you could hear my mom getting home. All right, I'm gonna go. Um, that's why Zeke needed a barker. Wait, what? True crime? To a story I did regarding the murder sheet, Richard Allen, and the concern for unreliable forensic evidence regarding the toll mark analysis. Why am I not understanding what you're saying? Unreliable forensic evidence regarding the toll mark analysis? When did you send it to me? Is that what you... S that one wasn't it, was it? The one that earlier about the AI? I don't know. It's been a long day. I Hold on, let me... Are you saying you just did? Or are you talking about earlier? I don't think I've seen it yet. Or maybe I missed it when you sent it before. Ooh, I got a lot of texts. Dang, who is everybody? I know. All right, I better go. But I don't know, Anthony, I'm not sure what you're, t if it was earlier or when I was alive. Um, the powder. Wait, what powder, Alisane? What are you saying? Are you talking about uh, the toppers? No, it wasn't. It wasn't powder, if that's what you're asking. And they're like these little, like chunks. Why did they have powder ones? Is that what you're even referring to when you said the powder? Sorry, I'm just doing my little wind down where we just talk about funny stuff for a minute. <laughs> get us back, you know, get you kind of. It helps actually, kind of getting a good like uh you know out of the hole <laughs> but uh yeah yeah let me guess the second you sign off is when i walk in my door <laughs> is that waking me oh okay i'm just reading the same comments over Alrighty, alrighty. I am gonna go. I keep saying that, but why are you guys forcing me to stay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. Let me see. Wait, do I have my Facebook up? Or do I... Hold on. Oh wait. Hold on a sec. Is this like? Oh, here, this is the one. I'm going to have to watch this, uh, Anthony. Because I think I might agree with you, and I, I want to see what you're... Hold on, I'll share that. So you're talking... So you just sent it to me. Okay, now that makes... At least I'm just seeing it now. Okay, let me send it. Okay. This is what the thing he's talking about. Yeah, I might actually... Now I'm debating if I want to watch listen to that that you're that one is probably more the visuals that i should for is talking about for the shower to listen to it i should probably do the podcast in the shower and then i'll watch that in bed 
All right, I'm gonna go. Thanks, uh, John, for the super chat. Um, probiotic powder stuff. Oh no, it's not. It's just these toppers that we're hoping like that can get him interested in the food. But he's just, oh, it's a chore to get him to eat. We have to like cook chicken. You gotta switch it up because he gets tired. But we're trying to mix it with food, so we, you know, so we like chicken, rice, mix it up, beef. Then he gets tired of it, and just trying to like mix things so he doesn't get tired of it. The toppers we've tried like mixing up other food. It's like he'll like it, and then he gets tired. He's like a human. He doesn't want to eat the same food. No, no, uh, I'm not going to play it here. I sent the link so people go watch it. I'm talking about in the shower. <laughs> True crime. I'm talking about oh, but I know you're nice. Yeah, you're cool. Like you, you, you share. So that's awesome. But, um, I was debating whether I'll probably watch yours where I could actually watch it and then listen to the other one in the shower. Um, all right. I got rough greens. Okay. Is your dog trouble eating too? I know. Oh, you do eat the same thing. So, oh, you're so, hey. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> but like people, you know how it's like, if you eat the same thing every day, a lot of people maybe get tired of it. So it's like, I'm like, you're a freaking human, like Zeke. Like, you know, dogs normally even like, get, they love their food. And even though it's the same every day, they, a lot of them just love it. But like Zeke, Oh, I, dude, I have like a third cup of coffee left. I never finished. But Zeke, yeah, he gets tired of it. And he'll even get tired of like fresh chicken. And then if it's a day old, so we'll, sometimes, you know, we'll get ahead of it and make a couple pieces of chicken, put it in the fridge for the next day. A lot of the times if it's a day old, he doesn't want to eat it. He wants fresh chicken, fresh beef. He is so freaking spoiled. But sometimes, like, he'll, then sometimes we don't know what to feed him. It's like he's not eating the chicken. What, I mean, what do we give him? So sometimes he'll go days without even eating his dinner. Well, of course, you know, he'll at least eat some treats, but like he won't eat his dinner. We'll try to, you know, and then like eggs. Sometimes he loves eggs because you're a lot, they're actually eggs. Um, they said it's like good for dogs or a lot to eat it. So sometimes he'll love eggs and sometimes he'll just walk away. He'll like run from you. Like if he doesn't want it, he'll like run. It's like Zeke eat it. Like a little baby, a little freaking spoiled boy. He just runs away and then we chase him and he runs. <laughs> uh, well, no, it is Jonathan. It is. The thing is, is remember, this is just new stuff. This stuff, the, the defense just came out. It's just all new stuff. This case has been crazy. They just, it took them how many years, what, seven years to arrest somebody? And they had all these like, oh, is it this guy? I mean, no, you're right. It is because there's a lot of cover up. There's a lot of crap going on. So you're right. We all think that too, Jonathan. You're not, of course, we're not saying that it's like all clean. Oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, there's a lot of it. Of course. That's what makes this case just like crazy. Um, nope, peanut butter. No. He rarely likes the peanut butter. Most of the time, he doesn't want the peanut butter. It's the only dog that doesn't love peanut butter. Rarely eats it. Oh. Oh, there were things. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony. Oh, my God. See, I can't. Oh, well, I need to end this. This is hard sometimes. I think because I don't really. You guys are like the only people I talk to all day, basically. Well. I have my family, but, like, I don't have any really friends around here. To... So when I start talking, I feel like I don't want to stop. Okay, so the results are, did the new documents make you think differently about the, the about who killed the girls? 64% said yes, 36 said no. Okay. All right, I'm going to go. I really am now. Oh, hey, Patronus. Okay. Wait, what did she do again? Oh, thanks, Soul. You're always doing that. Thank you. Oh, wow. True crime. You were... Yeah, how awesome. You were gifted. I'm sure you know, but how cool is that? Right? Am I reading that right? That's awesome. Because you can't pick, right, Soul? It's just random? That's sweet. All right. I'll get a hold of you, Anthony. Bye, guys.